something for the new, something for everybody in between. We leave nothing untouched. We are Spoon 107.5 FM. From the top of Wologisi to the beaches of Maryland, we cover Liberia like nobody else does. This is Spoon 107.5 FM.
Uganda Sport TV. Uganda Sport Radio, Tuto Sport. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tuto Sport. You want to get a news update, Tuto Sport. Yeah, Rastafara. Kili Bamba, Kili Bamba, Kili Bamba. Kili Bamba, Kili Bamba, Kili Bamba. What I want? Yes, my new battery. Yes, my new battery. Alright, so a pleasant, pleasant night to you, wherever it is uh, you're listening to us from, all across Liberia, whether it's in Grangida, whether it's in Nimba, Lofa, Bong, Cape Mount, Margibi, Maryland, River G, Sino, Grand Cru, and the rest of the counties making up Liberia, including Montserrat here. We love to say you welcome. It's a pleasant night. Last night we did have some rain. Um, whether or not the rainy season has come early, well, who can tell? The impacts of um, climate change, global warming, whatever it is, or better still, God thought that, and He, in His right wisdom, you know, thought that we needed the the rain, especially for the heat waves that we've been faced with in this country. It was a well, you know, welcoming rain that fell last night. But whatever the case is, we love to welcome you. To those of you watching us um, via YouTube or on Spoon TV, better still, Fabric or Super TV, whichever means you're using to watch us all around the world, we love to say good afternoon, good morning, pleasant evening to you. Pleasant night if it's nighttime at where you are. Well, the reason I started the show by laughing and beaming with smiles, <laughs> if you get to see the dashboard, you know, if you get to see behind the, the scene, you know, if you can see, you know, the BTS, whatever they call it. Dog, let me just call it that way. You can see Bastish. Yeah? Then you know why I was just laughing when I came to the people when I say, oh, that one let you down win a lot of and all kind of stuff. I know. <laughs> this is the reason. <laughs> Simon, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing with you. The one more knock a red cocoa. Yes, sir. The more red I got on here today. I got to see. I'm in my office. I got. To, I'm only here with you for maybe another maybe five minutes or so. Um, because I'm teaching today, and I okay. usually like to start the show with you and just to be here to. Wish you guys the best of luck on the show. So yes, I'm. I'm. This is how I'm going to class today. I did that. Yes. Yeah. Are well, you yeah. pausing the class like you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know. Um. I gotta tell you this. This funny joke. 
So I've been here for what, 19 years, part-time a year. Um, so 20 years. And this is the first time that I have a class that is equally black and white. Mm. Six, maybe six uh, black and six white students. Most of the time it's been majority white, like no black at all. And so, you know, the blacks in America, one thing they don't joke with is their appearance to how they look. Mm. So you're right, when I walk in the class, you be like, Dr. Richardson, look at her bag. Look at her sunglasses. Oh, look at her shoes. Look at the color. So they, they love, you know, the African Americans mostly. They love their parents. So, so yes, you're right. There's a shoe, shoe, shoe that goes on. I try not to listen to it too much. But you look splendid. Uh, Thank that, you. That's a fact. You know. Thank you. Give it all to you. If we're marking school now, I will give you ten or ten. Somebody said I should keep two for later, but ten or oh, ten. You're not, you know, you're not giving me the same school that you told me, Calasco, Gear, Josh, we are. No, I want our twenty or twenty. <laughs> I don't know, uh, uh, 20 over 20. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, goodness. But yes. a lot happening in the country. Since you're only hanging with me for a short while, mm -hmm. uh, we want to begin the show by saying congratulations to the Liberian track and field team. Yes. You know, they won, the male team won bronze at the 13th All African Games in Ghana. And the female team, you know, did win silver. So the male team placed third. You know, in the four in the four by four relay, mm -hmm. and um, the female team won the second place, but they didn't make it to the podium. You know, awesome. Um, they've made, yes, they've made us you proud. You gotta congratulate the mother of one of the team members. She's the it's lead publicist. Here. If you if you're looking for any publication about the the all African game with the librarian team involved. Just go to Glennie's page. <laughs> you see yes. everything. <laughs> yes, this is awesome. I'm so proud of the team. Uh, this is good news for Liberia. It helps yeah. us a lot. I'm really happy, and I'm glad you mentioned it on this you know, big platform here, Diamond. Yeah, so these these are the athletes, and I'm going to read out their names to tell them congratulations. Mm -hmm. And thank them for making us proud. Yes. We are a proud They're nation. Beautiful. You know, Um most often than not, we now well represented, and even if we are, we do not get to make podium positions. We do not get to, you know, get on the on the podium to be given medals. Uh, but these guys have done so much for us. The four by one hundred team, we love to say congratulations to you all. Mm -hmm. um, Glennie is particularly proud. So mm -hmm. these are the athletes making us proud there in Accra, Ghana. Um, we have for the male team, Emmanuel Matadi. He mm -hmm. participated in the Olympics for Liberia, so he's well known. Um, Joseph Fambule, mm -hmm. that's Glendis. Um, Jabez, um, jo Jabez Reeves, Glendis, right? Yes, that's a Reeves. Yeah, that's yeah. Jabez, Jabez, Jabez Reeves is mm -hmm. Glendis. And then John Sherman. So to Emmanuel Matadi, Joseph Fambule, mm -hmm. Jabez Reeves, and John mm -hmm. Sherman representing the male track and field team for Liberia. Congratulations yes. on placing third and winning bronze. We are mm -hmm. proud of you. Um, Ebony Morrison, that's the female team. Beautiful. Ebony Morrison, beautiful. Destiny Smith Barnett, mm -hmm. Shanna Collins, yes. and May McCall. She said thank you all as well for placing second and making us proud there in Accra, Ghana. You Who said good things can come out of Liberia? Good <laughs> things do come out of Liberia when they do, they come in full packages. Yes. What we want now is the Liberian government, the youth and sports ministry, mm -hmm. and everybody concerned, including. Um, private institutions in the country, mm -hmm. you know, corporate institutions, they should mm -hmm. look to awarding this team, bringing them home. You know, yes. what I've been told is bulk of the team is from the U.S., you know, that we need to bring them home yes. and tell them, tell them thank you yes. for flying our good flight. dinner so for them. Uh, we've not paid question. towards their trainings. Mm -hmm. We've not contributed towards their, 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 their sporting sojourn. We've done nothing, absolutely. They've chosen to represent us. Yes, they will get their own personal accolades. It's going to go to their records and all of that. It will help them professionally. But they had other options if they ought to have chosen. Mm -hmm. Now that they've decided to make us proud, we too should bring them home and honor them. And let that serve okay. as an example too for talents back home. You Amen. know, one thing that I was just saying before I turn it over to you, we need to pay attention to grooming our, our athletes in Liberia. It's a serious thing in Ghana, Nigeria, and other countries. They have inter high school competitions. Yes. It's, it's very robust. You people do it on your side as well. Mm -hmm. It's very robust. Mm -hmm. It's from those competitions that the schools will go against each other in a district. From a district, they yes. go to a regional level, 
from a regional level to go to a national level. So this helps to breed a new core, core of athletes. Absolutely. You know, you get to see them, you get to nurture them, you get to spark us, um, you know, scout their talents, mm -hmm. and you groom them. Mm -hmm. Whenever these things are happening, most often in our Liberia's now, we just participate one or two, but we do not go to compete. But mm -hmm. this time around, we win in medals. Yes. And that's something I'm proud of. Yes. No time when I spoil it to Ned because they're playing 10 o'clock. You'll see your friend. <laughs> you start playing who? You're playing Djibouti. Oh, tonight where? Djibouti in Djibouti. Oh, okay. It's the preliminary qualifiers. Yeah, so go playing, ahead. Let's pray for Lone Star. No, we're not praying for our friend and when it did better. <laughs> yeah, I'm praying, I'm praying. <laughs> you know, yeah, see, your friend. Why you gotta bring Lone Star into the team? Yeah, to I, team now, the I was celebrating now. You come out hot, pounding for Lone Star. Why are you scared for? That's you know? scared. Today I was, I was I was on campus and then people were going through the team listing. And then, um, you know, guys were having a conversation mm -hmm. and they were like, oh, Tommy Sango not playing. You know, Tommy Sango is, uh, he's been a long serving, you know, goalkeeper for Liberia, but he had a couple of bad performances during the last round of matches, you know, and Liberians have really, really, really been going at him, you mm -hmm. know, but he's been training, but according to the information, he's got some injury, whether that proper injury or, <laughs> you know, that just, you know, to cover up, but people were happy that, you know, got injured. I wish him speedy recovery, though, if it's a genuine injury. Mm -hmm. That's the reason he's been pulled out. Or it's just a tactical thing that the coach doesn't want to raise any kind of alarm. But the fact that people were celebrating that he's not playing, we hope the replacement is going to do well for us. Hmm. By the end of the day, we want we try to saw the people country who came by our bags. Y'all do something. Y'all make us proud. I say, my heart just pounding. I thought that Richardson. What are you happening for? Hey, the other, I won't stick with the good news. So I will stick with the news from Ghana. The the you know the athletes from Ghana, the track and field team. One one no start do that only I will worry about them. But before I go, I want to give a shout out to Charlene L I B Manaj. She is yeah. a avid viewer of Spoon. She follows Spoon everywhere, and today is her birthday. So. Uh, Charlene L.I.B. Minaj, her name is Charlene L.I.B. Minaj. If you're listening, I'm not going to be here, but I want to wish you a happy, happy birthday. I hope that you enjoy your day and make it great. Um, I also you, wanna... you, you just, you just rushing to go now. There was something I wanted you to at least weigh in for, yeah, for tell two me. minutes. Just two minutes. Mm -hmm. I know you have to rush. You guys are big on time. So let me just rush it quickly by you. Mm -hmm. This thing called shoulder surfing. You know shoulder surfing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's 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 unethical to the extent, but people people tend to do it a lot. Um, where you're playing on your phone or you're typing on your phone, and then somebody is you know sitting behind you Spine. somewhere, and they're so glued to whatever you you're doing on your phone as they if they see that you. more screen you're sharing. Mm -hmm. You know, how rude is that for you? And if somebody does it to you and you notice that, how do you approach such a person? Because for me, I'll tell you that. Look, stop looking at my phone. We don't have the same phone. Why are you looking at my phone? Don't do that. I'll tell you straight up. It's bad. It's rude. Don't do that. It is rude. But what about, what about you? You know, shoulder surfing. Why do people get so engaged in doing that? It's rude. It is, people just want to know other people's business, Diamond. Um, there are people may may don't have no personal sense of boundary, you know, knowing that what your space is, that will include your phone. Some people don't have good uh, social media or a good digital device etiquette they don't know it they don't they're not used to it so this is stuff that we gotta i'm glad you're talking about it that you gotta tell people you know a person's phone is the extension of there there's a lot of private information that we keep on this phone you know that when someone is looking on their phone you don't have to be nosy picking and you know want to see what they're doing and stuff like that so it's very private that's why the phone got password for you know, if they didn't need, to, it wasn't prior, they won't, they won't put password or they won't ask you to put password or you won't put password on it. So, yes, it is it is decent. It's, a, it's, it's not proper etiquette. Social, it's not proper social etiquette. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Doc. I know you got to rush. Yeah, I got to go. I have, to, uh, I'm teaching two classes tonight. One is an easy kind of a class. It's my practicum. So when we send students out in the field to do counseling, they have to come back. 
and tell us the challenges. So I have two students presenting two cases to me. And then the class and myself will give them feedback. We'll tell them the strengths and weaknesses in the presentation. And then my next class is my favorite class. And I, because I'm going to be talking about how to counsel or work with immigrants into the United States or anywhere for that matter, using cultural competence. In fact, as you saw in our chart room, Diamond, somebody who did ask me what cultural competence is. It's basically tailoring your your uh, interventions, your the way that you approach people, the way that you work with people to the needs of that person, the unique needs of that person, as well as the overall culture of the country. So if I know that people in Kipma, Ike Sawali, they like to fish, when I go to Kipma, I should acknowledge the cultural practice. I should acknowledge, acknowledge that Kipma consists of both the Muslim people and Christian people. So I should acknowledge both culture of those persons. I shouldn't just, you know, isolate them and forget and only come with my colonized culture. So that's kind of what cultural competency is, especially when immigrants come to this country, we're asking therapists to be aware that immigrants may be present their mental health illness differently. A lot of times you don't know, we, we present it as psychosomatic complaints, like my head hurting me, my heart hurting me, you know, my arm, my shoulder hurt me, all of the things that maybe that depression, that bipolar, that, you know, uh, trauma you're dealing with. So we kind of, we, so I'm teaching mm. the next generation of psychologists to how to work with immigrants into this country. That's my subject for tonight. All right, on that note, I will say goodbye to you guys and we'll talk to you later. Okay, you have a great show. I'll be paying attention during my break. Okay, Doc, yeah. have a good class. Have a, a great one there. All right, so um, to Charlene L.I.B. Minaj, happy birthday to you and happy birthday to every other person celebrating their birthday today. Um, this is the nation's biggest talk show. This is the Spoon Talk. The rest of the panelists are definitely going to join on. A lot of things happening in the country will bring you some of the trending issues as well. Um, but Adam Abwaka Sharif is watching us um, from YouTube, um, all the way there in New Crew Town Point Four to be precise. Um, Adama is watching us from there. Clarence Benson is watching us from Hamilton, Ontario, um, there in Canada. Hope you're doing great. Uh, Rosalyn Golowulu is also following from California, USA. Uh, Serena A.M. Doki is watching tonight, as well as uh, Masolin Masafambule, if I got your name right, is also watching tonight. Uh, Joan Squain, hope you're doing great. Also following, Joya Brown is watching tonight um, via YouTube. Moses Colley is following us from Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, Sami, 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 let me get your full name. Sami is Sami um, Duma is watching us from the United Kingdom. Augustine Soko is following. Uh, Yuma Commander is also watching, as well as uh, Deacon T. Davis. Yeah. Uh, Pawan Emmanuel Alfred is following us from SKD Boulevard. E. Otello David III is also watching us um, tonight. Valerie S. Johnson is watching us from the U.S. No. Abby Sayon is following us from Minnesota. Kendrick. Elizabeth W. Tutman is also watching Ariza G. King. He says a pleasant morning uh, from his end. <laughs> Different time zones all around the world. You want to uh, Kelly Yabo. Uh, Jonah Koko is watching us from um, Yaputokana. <laughs> I'm playing Nina play. <laughs> and he says, it's, okay, that's the name. Okay, his name is uh, Yaputo. Pa. Okay, okay, Yaputo pa is watching us from Canada. All right, all right, okay. Um, Philip Bala is also watching us. Uh, uh, who else again? Uh, Julius Banto. <laughs> Is watching us from Massachusetts. That's nice. Uh, Moses Momolu is also watching. The Nobel Fambula is watching us from St. Paul, Minnesota. Laurel Nya is also watching us. Well, a lot of folks following from all across the world. So a lot happening in the country as we began the show by saying congratulations to the 4x100 team. The At least they're representing Liberia, the track and field team, at the 13th All-African Game in Ghana. They've, they've done us well. The men placed third in the final, winning bronze. The females, the ladies, placed second, um, winning silver medal for Liberia, thereby putting us on the podium, making our flag to fly high. And we 
are grateful and tell them congratulations as well. The Lone Star of Liberia plays tonight at 10 p.m. We'll be going against Djibouti in Djibouti. And we wish our country all of the best, our players all of the best. This is the first um, official game under the new coach. So Coach Mario himself is looking to start off with a winning streak. Well, whether or not that game will be on um, national broadcasters or on st satellite TVs or channels that we have in Liberia, you have to be following up on that. 10 p.m. tonight, the Lone Star will be going against Djibouti. We wish them all of the best. Well, on today in, um, in training issues happening across the country, the President, His Excellency, uh, President Joseph Yuman Bwaka Sr., presided over his first National Security Council meeting. And as, you, as the name says, National Security Council meeting, everything in there is secret. You know, um, they swear an oath of secrecy. Uh, do not go out and tell what you've been briefed about, what you've been told in that National Security meeting, Security Council meeting. It was presided over by the president. We were just there for the opening and everything else was discussed behind closed doors. But Justice Minister Councillor Oswald, you know, Twe, after the meeting, you know, briefed the press and said, Key issues of concerns were discussed in that meeting, amongst them what happened in Kinjor, plus other things as well. So um, that was carried out earlier this morning at the executive mansion, that as far as we can can say. Okay. So, you know, let me bring on Mr. Dwalu. I see him in the background, you know, after his safari and not speaking, you know, ironically or figuratively. It was actually a safari. <laughs> you are. Where's that value? How you doing, G? I don't know. Yeah. You can play with Lion. I don't know. <laughs> you... <laughs> I play with Lion. Look at him, man. Y'all only talking about. My people, y'all welcome. Y'all welcome to the show, yeah? Today will be an exciting show today. We got Damo here. He's all dressed up in white. Um, I don't know for what reason. You know, I heard white signifies purity. I don't know how pure is Damo. In Liberia, uh, what are you? Uh, one minute, Mr. Okay, so I think you're down. If you guys can hear me, man, let me just make sure I'm not speaking to myself here to make sure I'm being heard. And that other person was on earlier to make sure I'm being heard. So actually, I'm being heard. So what Dama is doing now, let me recognize some people that are coming onto the show. I uh, haven't recognized my people in a very long time. See, Bindu Masakwe, Elizabeth W. Tuckman, how you doing, Madame? Myers Mondubu, how you doing, Patience? Maya Dongan, how are you? David Mayborn Zuba, Mr. Zuba, how you doing? Bomi King, Kona Gotor, how you doing, Kona? We're going on my everything. I see over here, I see Educative Zone, Mr. Zone, welcome to the show. EOY from YouTube. How are you, madam? How are you doing? I see Gay Floor M. Mao. How are you doing? I see Clarence Benson. Mr. Benson, welcome to the show. I see Mustafa Daikete Kaba. How are you? In uh, Kekula, Mr. Kekula, welcome to the show. I see Prince Yelagon. Mr. Yelagon, my olive son, Aaron Butler. Mr. Butler, Dempster uh, Greer. Mr. Greer, how are you doing? Pearl Campbell. I see Alfred Brown. Hang Sintama, David Akowala, how are you doing, sir? Armstrong B. Binda, how are you doing? I see Mia Mayama, I see Byron G. Taylor Jr., Mr. Taylor, welcome to the show. I see Jimmy Hughes, Lois Mafala, uh, A.R. Freeman, Linda Thomas, Madam Thomas, how are you? Smith Dawia, uh, welcome to the show, Victoria Coquette, how are you doing? I see Christian Destin for greatness. Uh, my sister, Tene Cooper, Rufus Dennis, Alice Pema. Uh, over here, I see Napoleon Nayu, Lady Burr Holder, Madam Holder, how are you? Sylvester Yanten, welcome to the show. Jerry Fomba, Mr. Fomba, Seba Brunel, Melvin Tia, Welcome to the show, Mr. Tia. I see Toka, Christine, Patricia Sia, Rachel Herman. How are you doing, Madam? Washington Jala, welcome to the show. Abel and Yinswa. I see Hawkin Reeves G, Jonah Yegele. I see Snati Cooper. Mr. Cooper, welcome to the show. Michael Curry. How are you doing, Joseph David Yawa? 
as he talk uh christine james agree i think i said your name already stacy scott madam how are you doing loretta marshall uh kokolo that went by very fast momo silly how are you uh nehemiah yama kamada Melvin Bree Sando, everybody, man, welcome to the show. Let's come and talk Liberia. The conversation is great today. We've read through the budget a little bit more than usual. Stanton came a little early, so my lamentations will be suspended because he always interrupts from the office. But all of a sudden, man, welcome to the show. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. No, how, my you doing, uh, how, yeah. how you doing, Mr. Duarte? Go no problem. So I'll actually do it in two minutes because I want, as soon as you can mute for me, I will appreciate it, sir. And I want to say this, there is something that we do in Liberia. We will adopt something from America, but it's always something that benefits the higher echelon of the people in the country. The issue of salary across this country, we want the good things from America, but we do not trickle that good thing down to our people. This is not how you adopt something from a foreign country. Look, if you're bringing something into Liberia, it has to benefit the larger population. The massive salaries across the country does not benefit the larger population. You cannot tell me my salary is spending. I remember back in the day, I'm going to hit the, the, the current pro temp for a second. She said, well, the salary is not enough. We need more people. I mean, more money because so many people come to our houses to beg us. Liberian citizens should not be begging their officials for money. They should be rioting for their jobs because they are entitled to a job. Liberian citizen, I want you to listen to me. You are entitled to a job because Article 8 of the Liberian Constitution says so. You are entitled. If you do not have a job, you guys can get together and actually sue the government and demand that you have a job in Liberia. If you don't have a job, you cannot take care of your family. If you don't have a job, your family cannot stay together. Your woman is not going to respect you. Your children are not going to care about you. This is why the framers of our constitution understood this. They realized that if you don't have a job or the government does not create an economically viable condition in that country where you can get a job, you can petition your government and demand that you have a job. We adopt things, we bring them to the country, and we pay people ridiculous sum of money while our people live in object poverty. Poverty should not be accepted in Liberia as rich of a country that we are. We are continuing to make decisions that is harming the vast majority, north of 95% of our people. This should not be acceptable. If you're living anywhere in the globe and you're a Liberian citizen and you are complacent and you are not talking about this issue, you are not doing the right thing for posterity. Look, something scares me every day. I come on this show not because I want to be here. I come on the show because I want posterity to recognize that I did my part to make Liberia right. We all have a responsibility. Before I give it over to the guys, I want to say this. How will you leave Liberia for your children? Do you ask yourselves that question? How are we going to leave Liberia for our children? Better or worse off? Or are we doing everything to make sure Liberia is left better for our children than we inherited our location? I believe we are not doing this. We are all complacent. Everybody cares about himself. Everybody wants to take this ridiculous sum of money. 99% of the current government officials in government, this is not just his administration, every other administration, 99% of them cannot earn what they are earning in government outside of government. Let me repeat. 99% of legislators, 99% of the higher echelon of the executive team of the Republic of Liberia cannot earn what they are currently earning in government, cannot even earn 50% of what they are earning in government outside the government. Why pay them above that? When you ask that question, you're not asking for people salaries to be reduced. You are asking for equitability in our system so we can all live together live together if you want to serve in government make your money in the private sector come to government for legacy this is my issue my issue here is we have to create jobs and creating jobs mean for the vast majority of our people once again man, you're welcome to the show let's talk liberia mr weatherspoon yes i'm a i'm not an audible i'm not good right thank you uh bone breakout junior can you hear me Yes, sir. See you again. Yeah, you Good. properly. There is a little bit of echo. Yeah, but I'm managing it. You know, whenever I come in this office, it's kind of too big, so we got to put other stuff in place to reduce the echo. Rembrandt, I'm sorry if I say a daughter name wrong. Apologies, it was not intended. 
So, Mr. Dwarlu, thank you. Yes, sir. You know, thank you for that. Uh, you, a lot of people are worried about you. Uh, when you appear on the show, people are concerned because you're a straight shooter. You don't no. shake a coat. No. You know, you are not doing it because to you really don't you really don't care. You just worry about that beer. That's and, it. And I'm and I'm getting that feeling, Dwalu. That yeah. I'm concerned about that beer. I'm, I'm worried about that beer. I'm worried about where we are. The the imposition can say they put out the best budget. The opposition can say no, you did it. Is it better than some of the twelve budget? Brahma Kamara, a friend of brother, I think he did extremely well this time around. But we we are pleased to announce that also we'll be bringing in the data of budget, the data of the economy, the man that have gone through this thing as fast as he can because he was coming on spoon talk, Dr. Rudolf Bopler. Uh, we want to bring him on because, you know, Samuel P. Jackson, say what you want to say, man. He knows something about budget. Yes. Seriously, give it to him. In all his life, 70 years in this life, he know a lot about the budget. Let's talk about asset do from the other side. He worked within the banking sector. He know what's going on. Now we're going to bring our uh, 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 ally coming in, in a, a very high-headed, crazy dude. But he can speak to the budget in a very special way. And all, everybody input matter right now, Dwalu. So I like what you're saying. It's important for Liberians to come together to discuss the budget. Is it good? Is it better? Will it help our country? Let's go through the agency. Let's go through the ministry. Let's talk about the different area in which we think George will fill the people. And then let's see how with this, is this budget a stable asset? Do I, let's do our thing first before we bring in, you know, Dr. Rudolph, because he's trying to balance himself. Yeah. And all of, is, is this budget, it's it just a budget, because I heard my sister Jackie saying yesterday, do I, after I left, like, is this just a stable asset to take off all of the water, and, you know, take us all of the drainage. And, you know, what 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 Joe what 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 10,000 budgets. I'm not exaggerating. I'm literally been through a lot of budgets. And this is this is something right down my alley. I will say this. You know, people say, oh, thank the president because reductions were made in certain areas. I see those reductions. And there was increment made to places like health and education. This is great. Um, but listen, don't let, you got to stop something that people don't understand this. If Damo tells me he can run the studio and Damo gets paid to run the studio and Damo does run the studio, Dama is not doing anything significant. We are not here to celebrate our officials for the little things they do. We are here to celebrate them when they transform the lives of our people. Formulating the budget from the executive is expected of the presidency. Look, we have to set a very hard bar for what we expect from our officials. What, what, so, so let me hold you down. Let me yeah. draw our last three minutes. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, let, let me draw our last three minutes. Let me yeah. hold you. What was your expectation? And let me finish though. And this is why we, we will make the other guys to be jealous that will come on the show early. What's your expectation, Duado? The government owner Joseph Yema Bwaka, the finance minister Bwana Kamara, the only thing they were trying to do to stabilize, to bring back life, to take us all of the way we were on a George Manor we are. Isn't this a good thing? It, the direction that the budget is turning is good. Okay, I love the direction, but it's not significant. Now you will say the money is not sufficient. I, for one, if I drew up that budget, there will be money for the right places. Now, I understand people will say, oh, uh, but Dwalu, you know, they're taking lippy lippy. There's no time for lippy lippy. We are 200 years old, literally. Yeah, for some people, oh, we're 178, yeah, almost 200 years. So let me say this to you, Stanton. Because Honorable Boyka, the president, spoke about agriculture so aggressively, I expected nothing less than $20, $30 million to go towards agriculture. So I'm disappointed on the agricultural front. That's number one. Number two, Honorable Bwaka understands that 
on the issue of jobs in the country. He knows the unemployment rate in the country. There was absolutely nothing in the budget for job creation. Nothing of any kind. I've not seen it yet. I've gone through the 90% of the budget. I've not seen it. There was no nothing for, 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 for job creation in the country. So what are we going to say to the young people, the young men and women in the country? How are we going to create jobs? What are the authority so, 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 Duado, Duado, you expected the budget to be job-creating budget? Job-creating budget? Have it focused on infrastructure and agriculture. Now, I, I, I'm i happy a little bit on the health front. The health budget increased to about 75 million. Education, education, education went, went up. up. It went up. It went up a little bit, which is very good. I think it went up about five million. Correct. Right. So, to one hundred and five million or one hundred and two million, just about there. So that is not bad. Well, the government is not private. But I don't want us to dig deeper into it because we're getting people like you coming on the show, and that would be our big conversation for tonight. Yeah. So but my thing, one thing to you, Duaru, mm -hmm. the argument for Unity Party, mm -hmm. we're trying to give back life. Mm -hmm. We are in the ICU. Mm -hmm. We cannot do anything. Our main objective right now mm -hmm. to bring back life. Mm -hmm. This person is dying. Mm -hmm. They get into that fifth line. Mm -hmm. When you hear the thing, there is no up and down on 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 the on the tele machine no more. It just goes up. Oh, the person is dying. There is no more life. And Bama Kamara. And Jose Human Buaka and the entire rescue team say, you know what? We got to infuse life. You cannot do CPR no more. It's not helping. You use your machine to, 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 to shock. No way it's not helping. We got to farm life some way, some way. Donald, don't you think? Talk to me about the 2025 budget. Where in this government will have to be in this thing for 11, 12 months? Talk to me then. You will have a good argument. No, do you up. believe that? Do you believe that a budget that mm -hmm. have the fingerprint of George Manor we are, with all the past of eighty three million dollars taking all of that, should be a budget right now that should be that aggressive? You want to sink the government, Dwalu? Well, you 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 said three things, and I want to respond to them. You said, well, if the government is trying to 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 reset or recalibrate, uh, reset the government. They have to dig themselves out of the gutter first before they can formulate a budget that truly delivers to the people. So in that case, I'll ask the question, oh, guys, uh, y'all you have to understand something. The discussing of the budget is not a job of any individual. This is our country. We have to discuss it. You don't have to like what we say, but you have to understand this has to be discussed. Stanton, let's, 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 let's understand something. If you want to resuscitate the government, why are you still paying almost $300 million towards salary? Is that a resuscitation budget? Why aren't you putting the money where the, the government is truly going to be resuscitated, such as infrastructure, such as uh, the, 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 the agricultural sector, such as uh, expansion of the private sector? And so now I'll give it to you. Somebody said, well, the government is not private. That is not true. What do you understand how government works? The government is... You ask a very hard question, brother. This is what you do for Levy. I do something else for Levy. I'm going to bring in the Dr. Rudolph Brockley. I'm yes. going to bring in the people that will answer your question. Liberians and Yero folks, we want to say thank you for joining us. Share the program. We are on support. Uh, Dama, I don't know why we are not on support. Can you check it out? Uh, we are on Fabric. We are on Spoon. And, you know, we're on the YouTube. And I want to say to every one of you, please, just go on your Facebook and share this because I want you to hear from, I have never met Dr. Brooklyn. I really don't know him. And I hope he can give his best today because Simon Jackson said, well, he's coming with his own spin. So we have Andrew Mama in studio. We're going to have a wonderful program. Josh Lobo will be joining us. We're going to be joined by Ava Toba, Ase Do. We're going to bring in all the best, Jackie McKay, Fatima, uh, Glenny Genius, and everybody else, because you know what? This is ever. Welcome to the show, the Honorable Larry P. Young Kwa. We want to say thank you for joining us. If you want to come and talk about the agricultural budget, uh, Honorable Young Kwa, you can come. You can send the link. This is Spoon Talk. It's for everybody. We want us to go big. Before we do that, uh, I'm going to bring in the guys real quick, but uh, we have to just, on the side back, I want to play something from DeLong where he spoke about LDC. We are receiving uh, information. I want you guys to listen to this. We will talk about it down the line. I was surprised, Mr. Dwight. The president appointed somebody to LDC. 
give that person the letter. The person who went to LDC and money our captain refused to accept the person. This is like the fourth time people are saying that, Dwaru. I stand to be corrected, though, but I have to say this today. The president made an appointment, gave the individual the appointment letter, Honorable Dwaru. Gave them. When the man went to LDC, central office, money captain, refused to accept. Well, what's going on? I have to foster. I, I, I want you to just wait. We got to talk about this budget. But why would President Joseph Yeman Buaka appointment, like they did to NASCO, right, Dwaru? We saw that to RIE. The same thing to National Road Fund. Mm -hmm. People saying, no, don't come. We'll not take you. Isn't that a disrespect to the president? Do I, before I bring anybody on, just take a quick 30 second on this one. And I'm going to send you the information on this, what I'm telling you about the God is appointed. He had his letter in his hand. He went there two days ago. And Bonnie cut them saying, no, because of X, Y, and Z, you can't take him yet. Stanton, look, uh, for me, I don't know the details regarding that, but I will say this. Um, people feel that when they run a, a governmental entity, an organization, a ministry, uh, uh, they, they believe it's the pressure of them. They can do whatever they want. That's how they feel. That's how it's been run. Anybody who speaks in that in agency, they, they, they kind of make sure they twelve that person. They do all kind of things to them. So I don't know what's going on. And then again, it's up to the president. Um, because if somebody, if, I, if I'm president and I send somebody somewhere, <laughs> I don't know who are going to go stay there and say they're not doing it. Well, 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 well. I, we, we, no, we know you. We know, we know your uncle. So, so oh, hold oh, on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's bring in Andrew Obama. Uh, let's bring in Andrew Barman. Andrew Barman, thank you for joining us. It's always good to have you. Uh, again, Dwalu and myself moderate this show. Uh, we want to give you nothing but the best. Uh, but welcome to the show, Andrew Barman. Thank you. Good evening to you and good evening to the Liberian people around the world. It's good to be back. I came back last night, but we had technical problems. And so I couldn't come on the show. I turned around and went back home. So I miss you guys. Yeah, Auntie Mama, you're looking real pretty today. I'm Thank glad you. that you're my aunt. Good to see you. Thank How's you. your sister? Is she trying? She doing better? She had, she stayed at JFK. Okay. But we're running all the different tests and everything. But I She's couldn't different. even go to see her today because I had couples, couple of meetings, so I couldn't see her today. So by tomorrow morning, first thing, I'll be going there. Our prayers, and we hope that God, go with heal her, and you know, we trust in the Lord. I draw my home. Yeah, she's in the studio. Yeah, I just realized that. I'm home. <laughs> oh, Dwalu. Uh, yeah, I forgot to speak to you. I miss you. Oh, man. I know. I come in now. Look for you. Sorry, eat your home. Please do. I will welcome you wholeheartedly. Thank you, ma'am. So, only Dwalu, you're welcome. I went to the library. You didn't welcome me. You're my nephew. Now. Yeah. You're my nephew. So, the horse belong to you. They fool yeah. everything. I'll create for you. What I do, Mama. Dwalu, I'm telling you. Should I tell the people that you 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 own that place? Which I want to get it all of the way before I say recovery come after you. Which place? <laughs> <laughs> I own a place. Hey. All my property I have. All my property that I have. I got it genuinely. No, no, no. I, I don't want I say recovery to come. I don't want say recovery to come after you. Well, then they come. My properties are genuine, genuine, genuine. Everybody know that in Liberia. No, 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 no. I work so, for my money. No, no, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. Yes, you my run a big business. Mine. But yes. yeah, but but they say some of them belong to Samora, that you? Do <laughs> so my son? No, 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 no. My son, my son. No, I, no, 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 no. Listen. <laughs> Like, I'm I don't know. Know a boy in the eighties, uh, in the eighties, in the nineties when I came home. You know, folks. Let me let me say this to all of you. I can joke with my <laughs> auntie. Yeah, you have to yourself for that. You have to yourself for that. Let me let's welcome for the first time that uh, uh that uh, Rudolph uh Bobla. It's good to have you. Thank you for joining us on tonight. Uh, the discussion will be on the budget, but again, I just don't want to bring you in as a guest. I want to bring you in as a guest panelist that we can be more interactive because when the rest of the crew join us, it will be fire. 
and I don't want to tie you down, but welcome to Spoon Talk. It's good to have you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Witherspoon, and thank you for the good work. Thank you for the good work you're doing um, to educate, to inspire, and to inform um, Liberian people wherever they are. So um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dwalu, for this great perspective. Jamama, always, you know, insightful. Thanks to the whole network for all the good things you do. And hopefully I can add my little voice um, and help to elevate the conversation. Because, you know, we have to keep having these conversations because they can lead to action um, that can help change our nation. It's time for better. And Liberia, I think, deserves better sooner. So we're not just waiting. You know, people say all the time, well, you know, time will tell. Time, well, time is neutral and doesn't change anything. It is people's activity in time that does. So we will keep working and we will keep hoping and we will keep challenging the status quo and we'll keep believing that our tomorrow will be better than our yesterday. And I think Spoon Network is a huge part of the transformation that we hope to see. So keep doing what you do. Thank you for having me on tonight. Thank you very much. Before I turn it over to Duaru, who will co moderate with me tonight, um, would, would, I rather don't know you. Can you please help us to know you better? Let give you the chance to introduce yourself to some of us that really don't know you. Well, you should know, man. I'm the guy who you owe a hundred bucks. You didn't pay me yet, so <laughs> I, I, I'll collect right. that. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I think, don't say, don't say I said you can't me. I mean, that's a good one. No, 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 no. Okay, you know what? I don't want to even ask again. We'll skip that because you're ready to start trying. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Debt, debt forgiveness is part of the deal. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm Rudolph Berkeley, um, a Liberian for humble beginnings, you know, uh, born and raised here, uh, fled the war by the grace of God. Um, you know, started my, my academic uh, pursuit uh, in higher ed at Cottington, uh, graduated from, from LU like my friend Glendy, who just came on and, um, you know, went to law school. I always just wanted to be a corporate lawyer, make a lot of money, help people. Well, the wall claim, and like, you know, we say here, like, we're everything chakla. So um, I relocated to Baltimore and started again um, as an urban educator. And I worked there, had privilege to go to some really good schools on scholarship. I didn't have the money, um, like Johns Hopkins and Howard. Um, and, and I continue to, to work. Uh, most of my work, quite frankly, have been in areas of economic empowerment, leadership development. I've had the privilege to travel the world, um, six continents to be exact. Um, I've been able to, to, to train a lot of persons in uh, leadership development, economic empowerment. And now I'm home. Um, you know, I had the privilege to design and develop um, the doctoral program which just launched at Cuttington which is a pretty historic feat because that's the first uh, doctoral program in Liberia's history. So um, I had the privilege to, to, to lead that effort. And then I came home um, to serve as the vice president for the graduate school where we host all of our graduate programs um, in Congo Town at our Congo Town office, including the doctoral program. Um, so yeah, so I'm home, I'm, I'm in a the theater. Before I came to the theater, I tried to look back, lean back and give back. And, um, you know, been doing a lot of things here, you know, economic empowerment seminars, the Economic Empowerment Institute. Now we have the Impact Institute right there across from Baptist Seminary. We're serving underprivileged, underserved communities. We're serving children in, uh, I think, a uh, first class after school enrichment program. And it's all free to the community. So we find different ways to give back. You know what? We all doing different things. The confluence of all of them, I think, will help our country be better. So I'm hopeful. That Thank you very much, Dr. Bopla. Thank you. Uh, just for the record, uh, I do not owe Dr. Bopla. Uh, he owed me hundred dollars. I just remember this guy very well. <laughs> I got it here, like you and I. I got it. <laughs> I, just, I just remember him very well. But but we want to say welcome again. It's good to have you, Glenny. Welcome to the show, man. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank uh, you. George Lobo, welcome. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, our first discussion would be the budget. Whichever way we want to spend the budget, the Liberian people want to hear from us. We we'll discuss all the issue. The president today have his national security uh, 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 meeting today. The very first one, we'll go into it. 
uh, a lot of stuff is trending within the government and the legislature. We'll talk about that. But the focus point on the trending issue is the national budget 2024. Mr. Duado, take it yeah. away. The first thing I want to welcome my brother Lobo, my man, the brother Mini Man. Welcome to the show. And before you, I even go you. into the budget, uh, with my whatever I'm discouraged about the budget, there are some real positives in the budget. And I want to highlight those positives so we can also incorporate it in whatever we are saying. So the Minister of State, uh, Ministry of State before how well allocated $20 million on President Weir. It was reduced to $9 million on President Boakai. On uh, the office of the president, we have $4.4 million on President Weir. It was reduced to $2.2 million on President Boakai. The vice president office have $4 million. It was reduced to $2 million. The legislature has $67 million on President Weir. It was reduced to $38 million on President Boakai. Um, we had the Senate pro temporary. Um, budget was four million. It was reduced to one point two million. The speaker budget was two point two million on President Weir. It was reduced to one point six million. And the deputy speaker was one million on President Weir. It was reduced to half of that, five five hundred and fifteen thousand. Now there were certain uh, increases that I want to highlight. These these are very important. This is what I love about the budget. Education budget was increased from ninety eight million to one hundred and five million. This is a big positive for me. Let's build more high school and technical colleges across the country and address some issues. LU went from 30 million on the previous administration. It was actually increased to 32 million on the current budget. Agriculture, I'm very disappointed in this, but it's a little positive and I believe we can do more. I know somebody mentioned, say, listen, Liberia has a lot of good work well internationally. Whatever the international community gives Liberia is a plus. We have to carry our own law. So on President, we have a 4 million for agriculture. Uh, it was up to five million. President Boyka spoke about agriculture very intently. I expect her more in this area, and especially in the health sector, for sixty-four million, it was increased to seventy-five million. So this is a big deal for the budget, and I just want to highlight that. Stanton, thank you very much, Mr. Duaru. It's always uh, let's hear your takeaway if you have gone through the budget and Jamama. We're going to give enough time to Dr. Boblet to talk to the library folks on that his takeaway, the pluses and minuses of the budget. Let's hear from you, Angie Mama. We'll go to Glendy and we'll come to Josh Lobo. Angie Mama, the budget. Yeah, um, <clears throat> looking at the numbers that Dwalu just called, I think um, the president and um, the, the minister of budget, uh, Tanem Bronson, and the minister of finance, I think they did a great job because first of all, we don't have the kind of money that we would like to operate with at this moment. At this point in time, we are trying to get us funds to make sure that the country can run on even a better budget than this. But so we cannot just increase the budget and there is no money. So I think reducing the budget in certain places was necessary to do so at the moment. When we get money, when we start raising money, then we increase the budget but for now i think they did a great job especially when it comes to education where they increased the money to 108 million and when it comes to agriculture from 64 million to 75 million i think i think it is it's, it's a good reduction in uh like um like the vp and pro tem or all this thing i think it was a good 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 estimation that it made so we'll operate on that for now and then later on, we can increase our budget. So you like the budget, holistically? I love the budget. I love the budget. You love it. Um, Don't yes. I forget to ask you the same question. I mean, give the budget from zero to nine. To where are you? I'll give it a four. You give it a four? Okay. Yeah. We'll come to know why four. Lenny? Hello, everybody. Hello, Dr. Bruffler. How are you? Welcome. Um, I, I know I know we're on a specific topic, but I cannot come on here and not congratulate congratulate the, the track and field team of Liberia. Today, Liberia is back on the map in the 400 relays, also in the 200. Um, the boys, the, the young men won the bronze medal for Liberia and the young women won a silver medal. So Liberia is number two. And number three, and that's an exciting thing. I was able to watch it. So I want to say congratulations to the team and, and, and to all of these young people. Some almost 90% of them have never been to Liberia. They decided to run for our country because of either their parents 
or, or we're from Liberia. And, and so we want to say that's that's nationalism for me. And I want to congratulate and thank all of them. I am an extremely proud mother. I have a new name. I am Glendy Jane Junions, African champ ma, Liberian <laughs> champ ma, American champ ma. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the budget. Um, I think the budget, um, I think I said this before, I'm not an economist, but I think um, now that we, we, I was able to go through it and, and, and then also read some of the, see some of the numbers that Twalu and, and Jemima spoke of, I think it was, that this is like a real strategic reallocation of funds. Take it from here where you think there's so much allocation here, let's put a little bit here and so that was strategically done so based on what we're seeing i think the budget for me looks good and i think it is important that they didn't do it exorbitantly so yes. because you don't know where the fundings are you don't know how you're going to get this money so whatever we have based on what we have we can say let's take it from here and take it from there and i want to also denounce the fact that some people were saying oh this is a cut and paste i don't think it's a cut and paste budget I think I think what they've done was strategic. So I would I would give this budget. I'm not an economist. I would give it a seven because I think they did a good job on the allocation so far. Some areas didn't get as much, but for me, I think it's a seven. And again, while you gave your score, we'll come back to you for you to tell the librarian people your takeaway. You gave them the budget seven. Uh, I really want to hear from. The argument between Sam Jackson and Dr. Bopler, then I would really create a budget. You know, some of us really don't know this budget thing. We just know that the person will take pay with this amount and you will run with it. What will be given? How it come in? Revenue generation. We shouldn't bluff. If you don't know, you don't know. And I like what Glenny and Jimama say. We don't know, but we're seeing the numbers. We think it's looking good. All right. Prince Maxwell, welcome to the show. Um, let's bring in Josh Lobo. Josh Lobo, your mini to talk to us uh, about this budget before we go to Dr. Booklet. So, so first and foremost, let me say good afternoon to the listening audience and if my fellow librarians and fellow panelists, Dr. Booklet, welcome. It's a privilege to have you on the same panel here. So, overall, for me, I think it's a good thing. Uh, this budget is a beautiful, beautiful start. Uh, one thing this budget has demonstrated is that precautionary measures were taken. Having learned a lesson from the past government where there were consistent budget shortfalls. Uh, people said the budget is not ambitious enough. We didn't want to present an $800 million budget with $200 million budget shortfall. Uh, so as a result of that, what we try to do, uh, the World Bank has always asked Liberia to, to set a realistic budget once we look at our core revenue. We don't want to set a budget of $900 million that will be funded by social loans and here and there. We, it is true that there were areas of opportunities that can be identified in terms of revenue generation. Overall, stand on what this budget has demonstrated to the Liberian people is that President Boaka once again has come true on his promise to the Liberian people, that his core fundamentals of governance will be on the basis of fiscal discipline, where the issue of cutting wasteful spending from the budget will be a priority. And I think based on the numbers that Dualu read today, that has been demonstrated. Uh, to see the Ministry of State come from a $20 million budget uh, to $9 million, to see the office of the president from 4.4 4 .4 to $2.2 million. So I think for me, Stanton overall is a very good thing, uh, especially to see increment in the area of health, uh, education. Not only that, Dualu on the issue of uh, the universal library also got an increase in particular. Another thing I, another thing I wanted to also highlight in this budget is that uh, we saw that 100 and some $23 million is paid to debt servicing for money that we have borrowed. Think about it. Yet them pundits, renegades of the former regime, cannot tell you capital investment worth 500 million out of one point some more billion they increase the debt by. So I think this 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 is a burden we have to carry. Government Thank you. Is the table with being responsible. So for me, I think it's a wonderful job. It's a great Thank budget, you. one that is realistic. And I want to say, Stanton, for me, I grade this budget. It well, we'll come back. We'll come back to the argument. Thank you very much. Eight point five for now. Eight point five. Eight point five. Yes. Thank you very much. We're going to go to Prince Maxwell. We'll give three minutes to Dr. Bopland, three minutes to Sam Jackson. Uncle Sam, welcome to the show. 
Uh, all right, we know the rest of the guys will be John Bell three. Prince Miles, will I give you a minute, 30 seconds? Then we'll go to Dr. Popla for his three minutes and Uncle Sam for his three minutes. Prince? Yeah, yesterday, yesterday we sat down here and we went over the budget. Uh, what I realized yesterday, after we left the show yesterday, I realized that I play into uh, Sam, Sam Jackson's narrative. Sam Jackson understood that there's information gap in the budget because people have not gone through to articulate the budget uh, appropriately. Mm -hmm. So they play on language a lot yesterday. Unfortunately, he caught me off guard. But today, you can see that the, the table is turned, the narrative shifted. I think I think, it, I think the budget is a the, 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 the minister and the president and the minister cabinet have tried to uh, seek a performance-based budget, basically. I don't have to go over the issue of reductions in the budget and you know allocations here and, and the, the reshift in the budget. I think the budget itself is clear in what it tends to, to, to address. The question I asked uh, uh, Sam Jackson in our chat room here, and it was simple. I said the economy, the, the, the economy of Liberia is, is, is better. Uh, yesterday, the fundamental question when I asked, with the 2024 budget submitted, what does it seek to address year on year? Which group of people is the budget going to benefit? What sectoral side of the budget is leaning towards that is heavy? And articulate what part of the budget has, that seriously addresses SDGs. All of these fundamental things that I just made mention of, the budget addresses those fundamental questions. Uh, yesterday, Sam, Sam Jackson was on the preface, the preface, the preface, the preface. Unfortunately, when I went through that Mr. Jackson, the previous blew all your argument out of the water. Your, arg your, your argument is not sustainable because you are, your argument is on supply side, not on the demand side. The budget seeks to address the demand side, not the supply side. Unfortunately, you found a gap to make an argument in yesterday, which was not to me, honestly, it's not sincere. So for me right now, the budget is okay. It's balanced. It's creating a narrative is creating a path, is creating an environment that we start to work with. Thank you very much. So, for, folks, uh, please, I, I, I know this is big. We cannot finish it today. With your pen and paper in hand, you will bring down your question, and the argument will be made very clear, and Liberians will, will, will decide tonight or even in the future as to where we stand with the first budget of this UP government. That talk, Bopla, you have your three minutes, the budget. It is yours, sir. Thank you. So um, I, I think the budget um, presents a hopeful sign um, of the direction of this president and this administration. You know, we all know that the budget is a fiscal tool, and it says a lot about what the leaders intend to do and how they intend to do it. So the fact that we see these big cuts in what ordinarily we'll consider from an economic perspective, non-productive sectors, like you give one office a whole lot of money and you get the non-productive sectors. That's a good sign. That's, that's bold that the president and this group would do that. I will caution all of us though. You know, it's one thing to make projections. It's another thing when it comes to execution, our historic challenge has been the lack of discipline. So the dollars a portion for one thing goes there. Uh, and because we still have a centralized system, it is easy for uh, Mr. A or Big Shot B to go and take money from places they shouldn't. So now that we have a portion, now that we have projected that if we raise $1, we we'll spend here. We need to have the discipline to be able to do that. The other thing I would say is there have been, you know, things happening on the global scene. One of them was just uh, inflation, right? Inflation seems to be dropping globally. That's great. But we need to make sure that we are part of that global decline in inflation. How do we do that? we have to make sure that in our national economy that prices are falling so that people's dollar value is rising. Yes. 
And if prices are falling, dollar value is rising, then people purchasing power is greater. And when people purchasing power is greater, then they are digging themselves over this place of extreme poverty that the World Bank and uh, Front Page Africa reported about recently. So it is so important for this administration to pay attention to what causes what we call cost push inflation. The people who do business here, we have to make sure that we don't make it so costly for them to do business because they're business people. They're not Red Cross people. They will pass on that cost to the consumer. For example, if you still run the port the way you do, with all this paperwork and all this bureaucracy that make it so easy for them to just uh, squeeze people and do all these corrupt things, then it will be hard because by the time you get that container out, you calculate all the monies you spend. And guess who's going to pay? The consumer. So what cost $20 yesterday will cost $30 tomorrow. What just happened? The ordinary Yakbaru and Mapu just got poorer for the same commodity. So the government have to really pay attention. Certain places you have to keep an eye on. The port is one of those places. The Commerce Ministry, we have to be on top of stuff because we keep getting squeezed here. It's going to be hard to dig out of poverty. I'll give you an example. So I purchased four wheelbarrows on Saturday, and they said it was $50. I said to the man, or a year ago, I purchased these same wheelbarrows, and they were $25. He said, well, you know, prices gone up. Wow. Prices double in 12 months. That's not healthy for us here in Liberia. So I'm hopeful. I like what they're doing with the budget. But from projection to execution, we have to hold our government accountable, hold their feet to the fire, and keep asking questions. Stay engaged with the process. Otherwise, this thing will slip out of control, and we'll be back in the same place. We can't afford that. Again, uh, I appreciate the fact that you respected your time and you make your point. Thank you very much. A lot of folks will definitely follow the program tonight because I think it will be more informative less argument and we'll stick to the issue. We're gonna bring Uncle Sam Jackson, talk to us, welcome again, Uncle Sam. Okay, great, well, uh, Dr. Brooklet, uh, uh, George Lobo, MT, Chimama, Glendy, everybody, how you guys doing? Uh, do you have a dog, how everybody doing? Okay, look, I'm just gonna read for the Liberian people the preface of this budget so there can be no ambiguity about this thing. And the reason I'm going to read it is that the whole rescue train was prefaced on Liberia being on a fiscal cliff and Liberia being on the precipice of a disaster. That, that was the whole premise of the rescue train. Economic distress, okay, a depression on the horizon. And any, any, any uh, first year economic student knows the definition of recession is a contraction in the economy for two consecutive quarters. But in your own, in your own preface of the, of the thing, this, this, this is what you said. Liberia's economy. I'm reading it so the Liberian people can hear you. This is, those are your words. This is the Joe Boyka administration. Their words. Praising the WIA administration for economic expansion in 2022 and 2023. Your words. So there was no precipice. You, you, Mr. Mr. Jackson, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Jackson, can you screenshot it? Mr. Jackson, can you screenshot it? I will read it. I will read it. No, no, I will no, read it. No, I'm not saying, I will read Mr. Jackson, it. I have to read it. Then you can listen. So can you just I listen? Have to read it. I have to Mr. Jackson, Mr. Jackson, I'm not stopping you from reading it. Okay. I'm saying, can you please screenshot it that I can flag it on the screen as well? I'm not stopping you from reading it, though. No, no, no. I want to read it. I will read okay. it so my Mary there so they can hear it. Because okay, go read. ahead, read. Okay, go ahead, read. Okay, I go will ahead, take read. my three minutes to read it. Yes, Do your thing, yes. Sir. And you're not going to stop me from reading it. Okay. So, okay. And I got three minutes, so give me the opportunity. Go the ahead. Words of the Joseph Boyka government, Minister of Finance. This is the preface to their budget. This is what they said to the Liberian, pe to the Liberian people. Liberia's economy expanded to 4.8% in 2022. 
Despite widespread global contractions from the war in Ukraine, high global inflation, and subdued demand in advanced economies, the expansion was largely driven by mining, agriculture, services, and manufacturing. When compared to growth estimates in 2021, growth declined modestly by 22 percentage points in 2022. Growth is expected to decline to 4.6% in 2023, reflecting increased global uncertainties, commodity price shock, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is not an economy on a precipice. This is not an economy on a precipice. This is all I'm going to tell our Iran people. So the fallacy, the false narrative, okay, the malarkey, the baloney that was spewed in the election is clearly contradicted in their own preface. So you cannot say this economy, this, the ship was going downhill when you are pointing in your own preface that there was the economy was improving. Consequently, what you basically did in this budget, you shifted expenditure. That's all you did. Wherever you cut from, right? You put it someplace, but it's mostly in personnel costs and what? Goods and services. Because the bottom line of a budget is fiscal space. And fiscal space it's only 7.8%, 51.89. So you can talk, you can bring seven people from the Unity Party, the, the law, George Lobo, the Dr. Brooklyn, the Angie Mama, and every one of them. You're not going to convince me. Maybe you can convince people, you know, <laughs> but since I'm not I'm talking to my Mary now, you can't convince them because this is not a rescue budget. This is a minimalist, gradualist thing, like Madame Salif and like George Weir. The reason why the Human Development Index today stands at 0.487 is because of the gradualist and minimalist approach to economic development. The rescue train was supposed to be a radical approach to government. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Okay? To take us into planning. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. And again, thank you for respecting the three minutes. Sorry, guys, before we go to Duaru, let's welcome Asido. Asido, we'll come back to you. Mr. Dr. Bopla, you want to say something to Mr. Yes, yeah, so I, I just want to clarify. So you mine the data a little more and you get the real story behind the data. So Mr. Jackson is talking about expansion. Let's see what drove those expansion. I didn't talk. I didn't talk. Era. I didn't talk. Um, it's the budget. It's, it's the budget. Hold on. Let me start the day. No, 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 Thank you. We we'll give you time. We'll respond to him, but let, allow him to speak, please. Please. Thank Go you, ahead, Stanton. Dr. Thank you, Stanton. And just for the record, um, when other people are speaking, I will always be quiet and listen so I can learn. And I expect the same thing from other people when I'm speaking. So let's mind the data, okay? Because the expansion was because of agriculture, services, and manufacturing. Services. The Liberians in the diaspora that pump in millions of dollars daily to their family and their friends and they find different creative ways to provide services for pay. That's one. Two, when you talk about manufacturing, mm -hmm. look at the expansion that's mm -hmm. taking place in terms of construction. So that particular manufacturing includes steroids, it includes um, bricks and all those things. So again, it is Liberians overseas that are driving well, that. I'm not going to be lectured by this one. Please, please, I will leave. The, this is a lecture. You and I, I don't want to be lectured. But you cannot, but that's not hard to have Mr. Oh, Dr. Bubla. Dr. Bubla, wait one minute. Uncle Sam, you will have your time to speak. Everybody entitled to the time. You can do this, Uncle Sam. Dr. Bubla, wait one minute, I beg you. I beg you, wait one minute. 
Uh, you you mute yourself. On mute. Go ahead. Say me. what you're saying. Uh, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam. Maybe we have a few seconds delay. Uh, Uncle Sam. Yes, well, well, Uncle Sam, hold on. It would be important because we are here to learn. We are speaking to Liberia home and abroad. Not only Liberian that's sitting on the show. I would beg you. If you have no, no Uncle Sam, don't interrupt yes, me now. If uh, Uncle Sam, wait. If you have to reply, you'll be given equal time to reply to Dr. Brooklyn. But you cannot interrupt him, sir. Please. I beg you, please. Dr. Brooklyn, please. And we'll give you extra two minutes. Then we'll give okay. Uncle Sam the time to reply. Then we'll move on to the rest of the team. So you go ahead, Dr. Brooklyn. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I just want to insert, you know, if you want a monologue, stay home, talk by yourself. If you want a dialogue, then you have to be respectful of other people when they're talking. When you talk, I listen. When I'm talking, I expect you to listen. Do not interrupt me, please. So let's get to let's get to the facts, the economic facts of the matter. So if we're looking at um, um, mining, no, well, let's skip mining. When you're looking at manufacturing, when you look at uh, services, even agriculture, even agriculture, we see more and more Liberians getting into um, um, uh, rubber production. People are pumping their money into their families and they're going into agriculture, small scale, you know, farm to market stuff. So when the confluence of all of those things help to drive the growth. So I just want us to be clear. It was not a function of some spectacular fiscal and monetary policy that got us here. That's all I want to say. In less than two minutes. Uncle Sam, we'll give you the last shot for you to re 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 yeah. respond to yeah. Dr. Boplex. Yeah. Then we'll yeah. move yeah. on. You said he was going to ask me. You said he was going to ask me a question. He made a speech. I read from your own budget preface. I was not mining any data. You're using wrong words here. I was nobody mining data, and nobody needs to tell me the origin of GDP based upon your own preface. So what is it we're trying to say? Explain to me what you're trying to say to the people that can't, that can't to contradict your own preface in your own budget. This is tautology. And I'm not disrespecting you, but you are putting a, 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 a pretense to erudition on the budget that you may not even understand what was said in the budget. If you understood what was said in the budget, you would know that the budget preface praises the performance of the CDC government in the first paragraph. That's what I'm reading. So what is that to say? Accept it and move forward. That's it. So you should have told Burma Kamara and Tanya Bronson, don't put it in your budget. But praise CDC, but they did. It's part of the historical record now. They praise us, we did well. 4.6% growth rate, 4.8% based upon the origin in mining and services. Then you say services because of the money that we send from America, that services there. This services industry is hotels, restaurants, dry cleaners. They're not, they're not money we send from, from abroad to be service account. Of. Okay. I don't know your background. Okay. I don't okay. want to disrespect okay. you. But do okay. not. Okay, thank you very much, Uncle Sam. Thank you. Thank you for being very, very kind. We will go back to Dr. Bopla, but let's hear from Acido, Mr. Duaru, Andrew Mama, Granny JJ, Prince Maxwell, mm -hmm. and Mr. Lobo. Then we will go back to Dr. Bopla. I think he will write his response and respond to you appropriately. Acido, welcome to the show. You got your yeah. one minute, 30 seconds. Sure. Is, that, is it to ask question or to... Sorry, I it's a budget. You're opening on the budget. You want to ask question to anyone? Go ahead. It's your time. Use it wisely. Oh, no. I thought Dr. Brooklyn was on the show as a guest. That's what I was talking about. No, he's a guest panelist, but he can take question. You can ask him if you want. Yeah. So, I mean, yesterday we talked a lot about it. I mean, um, to that, you know, the, uh, um, the semblance of a very confused government uh, had shown it face today by contradicting statements from the minister, the minister of information, who said, "President, we are requested to the EPS, and then the EPS very ill and uh, childish press statement plays out today, ill written, run on sentences, 
talking about, oh, no, 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 he didn't request for a boy, it is automatic, so we can do it, we can do it. But that the problem, my understanding is that you are a guest panelist talking about the budget. I'm not sure if I should ask you on that, but uh, if you are, did you go through the budget? Did you manage to go through the budget? Just yes or no? Say that again. I'm sorry, I didn't. I don't understand you, uh, Mister Do. Did you go through the budget? Like before I ask you, I want to know if you are abreast. Did, did you go through the budget? Yes, I have. Uh, what, 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 what was the um, expenditure you saw in the budget? What was the per capita expenditure? Did you manage to see that? What was the? I, I say you are skipping. You are skipping. So talk into the into your microphone please oh okay no I, I just wanted to be sure because i don't want to you know waste my time discussing i don't want to be sure that you went through and i was asking what was the per capita expenditure of the budget what did you see what was the you're talking about the amount you can put in percentage if you want the amount the percentage doesn't matter whatever just i don't I, be sure i don't ask a question when you did not go through the budget that would be a waste yeah. of my time so so just to be clear, so I I, I have not memorized um, um, figures, oh, so. percentages. I have read the budget, um, and I've tried to gauge the trend because the budget oh, gives God. direction. The budget gives direction to where we're going. And and if, before you came on, I said that um, the budget, you know, the projections are good. They they're encouraging, but from projection to execution, that's where we have to pay attention. So that's where the oh, difference okay. will be made. So, so let, let me let me just make a statement. I will, I will advise go back to the budget and try to look at it again so that maybe tomorrow we can have more discussion. But uh, let me say a few things. Today, I listened to a concussion white man with a certain series voice talking about some more budget in Liberia. Imagine that all of the 5.5 million people in Liberia can talk about a rescue budget. They had to go to some white man from somewhere pay him 138,000 United States dollars to come and talk about budget they increase, budget they decrease. But let me say something. You know, uh, unfortunately, we we have eyes now. God help us with learn ABC. Uh, I wanted to say to the rescue people, there is something, a trash going all around. Say, oh, the president office reduced his budget. And the pastor, let me say, President Barker's hands-on budget has increased by about $1 million. More than one, one million. And again, since you know the guest uh, panelists did not go through tomorrow, I hope he comes. All of that cookie cookie deal things not going to surface in Liberia. We have a budget that they said before the budget, we have heard the government overstaffed from the past government. Oh, 300 ghost names here, 400 ghost names here, 500 ghost names here. One who have thought that the salary cost in the budget will, will decrease. But the salary cost in the budget increased. Despite of all of the ghost names that they say they found, only press will buy a thinking who know that we are in for a trouble. So if you Thank have. You, of... Anyways, okay. Thank you, Isaac. We'll, we'll come back to you. Thank you very much. Mr. Duaru, you heard Dr. Bobla, Uncle Sam, yeah. I say, including the ghost name, forget about the EPS now to the president. We passed that now. Let's stick with the budget. I agree. Talk to us. Yeah, and Liberian people, I had to listen. There was no white man explaining the budget. Somebody did an AI voice to explain the budget to the lay Liberian who doesn't have the time to read. It was not a white man. This was an AI voice that anybody can do. So they just took the notes out of the budget, and the AI voice was reading the budget. So maybe my brother will have to go back there. But I love what Dr. Proper said about discipline. Can I, can I please interrupt you? Because that is trending on social media. Can you say this again very slowly because Thank it will be, be this in general to our own brother here that we gave so much respect for for him to run with that uh, uh, a story and say that's a white man so can you please repeat what you said mr Dwalu? the people there they the make more voice and what at the end of the video they just put the number then they made the make more voice so you can read it and i when people talking to you anybody can make that make more voice that is there yeah. but say the little bit of my team i'm begging you um and Dr. Prophet says something, and I, and, I, and I hope we continue to do this. The, the budget is in the right direction, although I'm not entirely satisfied with the budget, but it's towards the right direction. Now, I, for one, don't believe the leap is sufficient enough, and I'll go there. But he talked about 
the discipline in the allocations of the budget. So if we are giving my brother George Lobo $10,000 in the budget, let's stick to that discipline. Let Mr. Lobo get the $10,000 allocated in that budget so he or she can deliver the services that is required for that location. That's something we have to push. We have to be very disciplined. Now, our brother Sam Jackson talked about the purchasing power in Liberia. I, for one, don't really believe the purchasing power has increased in any fashion, any shape or form, because if you look at the per capita income in that country, it's been stuck between $500 to $650 per annum. So it's not increased substantially. Now, and I went back to Dr. Broker, he did say, look, the prices in the country are rising so fast to the point where it's diminishing the monetary value of anybody currency that they hold in the country. So if I got $10 and I wait three days, that $10 and that $8 is happening so fast, something has to get done. So the budget process has some part of mitigate that. And I want to close with this. Look, every time we talk about the extractive industry in Liberia and we allocate that to expansionary policy in our government, this is not true. At no point over the last 60 years, if you read Liberia's history as it relates to the economic extractive industry of Liberia, it has not substantially helped the country. Yes, Metal Steel can come to the country and tell you, say, well, we are investing $2 billion in Liberia. Has that truly trickled down to our people? No, it has not. It has not. Look, I firmly believe what I would have loved to see in the budget center, you asked me when I gave the budget of four. Honorable Buaka spoke heavily about agriculture. The truest way to truly transform this economy is what we can really control ourselves. We do not control the extractive side heavily, but agriculture we could have controlled. So allocating five million from four to five million, it seems like uh you know people are all happy about it. Oh, I, I wanted to see 30 million dollars to our agriculture. Let's get some tractors into the country and put thousands of men to work. That's where the budget will truly matter. Let's put these men and women to work. And I hope the next budget actually focuses on putting our people to work. Thank you so much, Stanton. Thank you, Mr. Duaro. Angie Mama, you heard the back and forth, Dr. Bobla, Simon Jackson, asked to forget about that AI recording. CDC trying, but they, they will not make it there. So, Angie Mama? Well, Stanton, the AI recording should be clear to Ma'am Benu sitting in the market. Ma'am Benu don't understand AI, Mama. So we got to break it down to them. Because CDC cannot come on the stage and say that we got white men to come to our country like they don't have any educated person here to explain the budget. I want to speak to the people in the market. Thank Nobody you. brought white men here, man, they knew. Man, go. They think they got the internet. You can tell any person voice that Mickey more. Any other thing they can find the internet, they can just put your voice on it. They can sign the white man, they can sign the Indian man. They can Thank sign you. the anybody. So no government to talk back and government bring no white man to explain anything. Don't listen to 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 Acido. Now the budget. But let us correct this. Acido, the one that did that, by the way. Okay. Now I said Acido. Yeah, he did it. Acido yeah. did that recording. I said well, Acido, the one who brought that news, that fake yeah. news. Look at their own word and you see only fake news, fake information to our people. So I want to say to the Liberian people, Joseph Baka. Is here to make a difference. I got time for that type of time, Uncle Sam talking here. And they could do better. The people are going to vote for them. They are going to vote for them today. This budget. The budget. Can you imagine? And the people, I'm speaking to you. They had a high budget. They want to reach one million people. High budget. What did they do? They increased the president or, 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 or they increased the president budget in the office. To so many millions, they went the speaker office, the potent office. So Joseph Baka came. He said, "Look, my people didn't have suffered so long. I am not yet to do the city CDC people did. So the budget what I'm going to do, I will cut down the places that doesn't need this kind of money. I will take him put it to education. I will take him put it to agriculture. The places that he needed to increase, increase it. The places that what making them first, like young people." Because the budget, where well, they should have increased it, like the CDC people in the house, the place should have increased the budget, they lower it. So every party, they went all across and lower the budget. So we're not going to come and bring, or uh, 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 let's say we bring a budget of one billion, or we bring a budget of so many millions, and then we can't afford it. Every day we go back, budget recast, budget recast, budget recast. We're not here for that. The president, Joseph Yuma Baka, is here to make a difference. 
where Thank it's you. not necessary or people have suffered too long, you will cut it down. That's what we take. We're not going to bring fake budget here. So the only moment you want to Thank you very much, thank you, Mama. Don't listen to us at Thank you very much. We'll, we'll pass that to Bopla and go to Glendy. So I don't have a question, but I would be very uh, remiss. Um, I hate to put Dr. Bobla on the spot, but because I know you and I know you from childhood, I would like for you to give a summary of your educational background to us and to those who are listening, please. But he did it. You didn't hear him? I didn't hear because people came late. Sam Jassin said he don't know his education. People came late. They don't know. I think it's important because I don't think we want to take away from him and not understand that this man has the educational okay. background. He's an economist. So within, I think for me, within, that my one minute yeah, center, I beg you. Within Glendy, meaning 30 seconds, Dr. Bobek, Thank you, Dr. Dr. Bobek. Please please tell the people who you are. Uh, I, you know, I, I just try to, to use a lot of common sense and I try to solve problems as a professional. Um, my background, you know, is, is, is economics. Uh, I started at a university. I earned my bachelor's. I went to Johns Hopkins University and I earned a master's. I did two other masters at Howard and at um, uh, St. Mary's in Baltimore, Howard in DC. And I studied at Oxford University um, in England. And um, I, I went to school to try to learn a few things so I can apply some common sense with some um, um, acquired knowledge um, contextually so I can be able to help people. So what I try to do is everything I speak about, I try to do my homework. So when I, if I don't know anything about it, they'll be quiet. But if I know small thing, I will share with the hope that it can add value to the conversation. Thank, thank you, Dr. Bobla. Let me bring in Josh Lobo. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bobla. Once again, like I said, uh, now we have a true economist here who will judge us. But you know, I sent I want to use my time to make to provide clarity. Yesterday, this conversation was held, and the deputy minister Azid Do and Samuel Jackson were running over my brother Prince Maswell. Uh, so but let me bring something to Sam Jackson. You, know, you always talk about it, you say that you didn't see fiscal space in the budget. Now, your, your argument for fiscal space that allow government to spend, make fiscal decisions as to where we're investing in to diversify, expand the economy. What you've not been honest to do to the Labyrinth people, you've, you've read through the budget, Semi, $123 million is going to pay in debt, debt servicing. Your CDC government expanded the debt by over $1.1 billion. Yet you can't talk about $30 million that were made in any capital investment to expand the economy or create 10,000 jobs. And what I found fascinating is to have a deputy minister, former government official, to sit on this platform. Uh, minister Do, the next time you speak, yes, have former officials should speak. You speak about what you guys inherited. Talk about the policy transformation that was done to transform the economy. Sadly for us, you come here, you say, oh, look at the budget. Look at this. What was done by the CDC to expand the economy, to diversify the economy, to create jobs? Absolutely nothing. You are the Ministry of Youth and Sport. Nothing was done. But Dr. Bobler, you spoke on something on the issue of purchasing power. I do want to agree with my brother Dualu, who talked about inflation. And like you said, I do agree with you that the Ministry of Commerce has now been regulating. It has done very little on prices. Now, Samuel Jackson on this platform is a proponent after the economic dialogue. We sent me recommendation was for the government to print $35 billion. Knowing fully well that inflation is a result of excess amount of money in the money supply chasing fewer goods. Yet today he said that Ali, he don't record anything of such a kind. When the UP government left power, the inflation rate was at 12.4 percent. While it got over 300. Listen, no, John, you listen, please. Do not go direct with an attack on anyone. I'm Make not attacking, point. I'm just providing the the the, the, yeah, the just, I want to listen, listen. listen. We all will have a beautiful conversation with other personal, okay? So we're that, not being personal. It, it just just, yeah. just, just go on. ahead now. We're not being personal. When you speak of fiscal space, it is the ability that gives the government for the government to spend or make investment. So Samuel Jackson advised the previous government. He was part of the economic dialogue. I think it's important that the library... You can, you can make that point, but don't say he's... Yes, you can make that point, but don't say you sit down there. Okay, no, okay. 
Then Thank I'll you. take that back. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. as a result of the recommendation of the economic dialogue, Dr. Bobler, correct me if I'm wrong, or Sammy, uh, Samuel Jackson, their proposal, Maxwell, was to print 35 billion. 35 billion when inflation was already at 27 percent while the country was struggling. So one of the reasons why the people money have lost its value is because of the excess money in the money supply as we speak today. So what this budget demonstrates, Stanton, yes, I do agree when they would dwell when they talk about the need to be aggressive. But again, I think this 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 budget and Dr. Bobler rightfully stated the issue of disbursement. We don't want to be like the former government that allocated 650,000 to BWI, but only disbursed 65,000. We don't want to be like that. We don't want to be a government that will be allocating but does not disperse. So what we want to see, remnants or renegades of the former government when they speak to these national issues, Stanton, is to provide us their budget performance report so that we can be able to look at them and see actually what are the allotments that were made were actually disbursed. Because there's one thing about making allotments, but if you don't disperse it, it means absolutely nothing. And we have the U.S. government report that stated. And I think your point of well, and I think I want to question. Uh, Let me just end on the news before you get. Yeah, Let me right end on the news before trying to talk. We have the U.S. former U.S. ambassador report, Stanton, which clearly stated that of all the allotments that were made to the health sector for equipments, that zero was disbursed. So for us to have remnants and renegades of that corrupt government to be here telling us about budget, I think this is a disservice and dishonesty to our people. And people must desist for it. And I look forward to the conversation. Hey, Judge, Judge Lewis, I like your last point. It is indeed 65,000 <laughs> was seen, but yet and, yet and still they awarded 600 and something thousand. So those are arguments that we gonna make, that you can make, that Liberians want to understand better. I'm begging you. Uh, Prince Maxwell, I really want to bring in Dr. Bobler on the last argument, but be go sure. ahead. Go ahead, Prince. Make your point. There is a disinformation on the on the on the subject of growth. I uh, listened to the eloquent Mr. Jackson spoke of growth, but in the preface, and he made mention of growth relative to the CDC-led government. I want to state unequivocally that Mr. Jackson is providing disinformation to Liberian people. This is my facts to his disinformation. To Liberian people, please take up your computer and go to the African Development Bank group page. Go there and go under Liberia Economic Outlook. It reads recent macroeconomic and fiscal development, GDP growth fell to an estimated 0.4.0 in 2022. If you look at the budget, the budget said Liberia economy expanded to 4.8% in 2022. What Mr. Jackson is now saying is that in 2021, the growth of Liberia fell from 5, from 0 0.5 to 0 0.4. So CDC-led government was not increasing the GDP of Liberia. The GDP of Liberia was declining. Now, the second part to this is that he did not speak of shocks. Mr. Jackson did not speak of exogenous shocks, if I do remember economics right. He did not speak of exogenous shocks. We know fully well that the 0.8% increase in the budget, in our GDP, was mainly from the mining sector. Now, why is it that we remain at that particular 4.8%? We know fully well that we have major Ukraine war in the same period. We, the issue between China and, uh, and, and America in terms of the relations is also creating uh, instability in the global economy. We know that. We know full of well that there's a bit, there's been a major disruption of the global supply chain. We know full of well that OPEC has been having major oil cuts recently, which is affecting oil prices, increasing oil price in the economy in Liberia as well. We know full of well that the, the Russian sanction is also causing a major disruption in the global economy. And I can go on and on. None of these things have been mentioned by the economist and Mr. Sam, Mr. Sam Jackson, which I think is infusing a level of disinformation into that particular little subject he read just now. 
the economy under President Weir did not increase. From 2021, it was five. It dropped to 4.0 in 2022. It only increased by 0.8% because of the mining activities in Liberia. And this is being reported. So, so by, let me ask you, I'm sorry to interrupt you. So did it increase or it didn't increase? It did not increase. It did but not it increase. Only, his, 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 argument, his, argument, his, argument, his argument is that it increased because of fiscal discipline and productive allocation. It did not increase. The argument I can take in is the argument that Dr. Broplet made clear. The increase in our GDP is not as a result of the instrumentality of the WEA administration. It's, the instru it's because of commodity price increase. That's all. Yeah, but let me understand you now, because again, like I said, we are not we are not who you guys are. Did the budget increase on a precedent? No, it so, declined. It declined. it declined. It declined. But then, but then why are you saying it's from, 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 from point five to point not five. a budget, economic growth, uh, economic GDP. growth better. GDP, uh, GDP uh, not budget. Uh, GDP. Uh, take down, brother. Take down. You explain. Take down. Slow. Take down, brother. And that's you see, and uh, thank God I have Dr. Bopla here. Yeah, these guys know the number you as well. Uh tough talking, Josh Lobo, and the rest of the team. It's the reason why I'm asking you, because it's GDP, not the yeah. budget. So the GDP increase. No, it no. decreased. Did the budget increase? On no, I come to you. Don't, don't, I beg you. On the president, yeah. I'm not speaking the budget. Okay. I'm not speaking the budget increase. No, but I, because we are, we are free to ask questions for us to learn. Yeah, but, but, but my brother, my diplomat, don't put the boy in the I'm not speaking the budget increase. I'm giving you facts. You're with us. Friends, 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 I understand. Did the budget increase on a Josh Manawea? Budget or GDP? Which one it is? Did the budget increase on a Josh Manawea? No. Both. The GDP, the GDP increase on a Josh Manawea. No. Based on the statistics okay. I'm looking at, no. Okay, but you said something increased by 8.8%. percent i am saying that? the the budget, what the, the GDP of Liberia in 2021 was 5.0. In 2022, it declined to 4.0. It never went back to 5.0. We came from up, we came so down. What's the, the, what's, the, what's the point eight? Well, what's the point eight? What's the point eight coming from? That's not increase. That's not you, increase. Okay, so there's a million. So I, I, I want to bring in us, uh, Uncle Sam Jackson, Dr. Bopla will come next after Uncle Sam, then we'll go to Acido and do the round table. This budget thing, I, I really don't want to, at the end of the day, I will really tell you why I am. I got some notes from good, 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 good economists out there where they are with this whole thing. Uncle Sam, listen to Prince, I'm confused. <laughs> but Prince, 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 you know what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say that. I'm Please very read it. sorry. And I say that with a lot of love in my heart. I know, I know it very well. Finish. I know what I'm talking about. Just I'm talking about. Prince, 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 let him finish. The I bet national, you. Listen, 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 listen. I don't want to be pedagogical or pedantic on this program to teach people anything, because that means it's kind of rude. The national authority to, who will determine whether there was growth in the Liberian economy is the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning. That's the national authority. The African Development Bank, the IMF and other people, they can do guesstimates. But this is your own budget preface. Why are you running away from your budget preface? I want to read again for my Mary then. Your own budget preface says, Liberia's economy expanded to 4.8. This is your budget preface, oh. This is your own budget preface. That's why it said. Are you denying this? Are you seeing a Italian brushing and Boma Kamara wrong? This is what they said. Are you seeing they're wrong? Tell me. Are they wrong? Yes or no? You don't know, Prince. Don't come here Mr. and make. Are a, you asking a, me a question, Mr. Jackson? To erudition, like you know. Of course, I no, know. Listen to me. Let me 
finish. Let Pray, finish. Pray, let me finish. Let me finish. I bet you finish. I bet you finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I don't want to be pedagogical. This is your own budget preface. Are you seeing what was written in this budget preface? Is incorrect? Yes or no? Answer A. Is the budget preface wrong? Yes or no? Stand the lock over here, man. Let's let, let, Thank you very much, Dr. Bopler. Dr. Bopler, let me bring you in, Dr. Bopler. Uh, I, I believe, are you reading the, the, the budget preface? Are you reading the data book? Like, the argument that Uncle Sam is making is still logical, though. Uh, does Uncle Sam have any, any unique position in that argument, sir? It's not unique, so, Stato. It's what the budget says. It's nothing about this is what the budget I, preface I, I says. I just want that to book. So, let's 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 to 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 you know, you're the only one we're talking here today. No, you want to get other people when chance? Talking, when I'm talking, it's not right. It does the same thing. I mean, so other people have to speak. No, but you I'm saying, talk I'm saying, about it, but people are going to speak. Get a people speak. All right, all right. No, no, let's speak. Let's speak. I'll respond to my own question against you. Guys, yes. 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 go to the go to go to Africa Development Bank page right there. We we are now moving to Dr. Bupe. Dr. Bupe, please answer my question. Does Sam Johnson have a unique argument with the budget preference, sir? Well, I, I don't I don't I don't know that he has a unique argument. He has his argument. But let me say this. Um, you know, to be fair, um, you know, whatever whatever causes growth in the economy, uh, what are the policies directly or indirectly affected, to be fair, that particular administration will take credit for it if something good happens. And if something not so good happens, then they'll take the blame on their watch. But I want to set the record straight. After the 20, um, 2018 installation of President George Weir, please go back and look at the budget, the budget bloated. Okay, it bloated. It got bigger because that government put a lot of people in places where there were no jobs, a form of political payback. Okay, and so the budget bloated. But I think the most germane argument here today, the point we need to pay attention to is not the budget. You got the truth be told, the budget just prescribes something, create fiscal boundaries. It's not the budget that we pay attention to. It is actually growth domestic product. How much are we producing? It's not because I can make a budget and just double the size from 692 million to, uh, you know, one point something billion. Doesn't say anything about what's really going on in our micro or macro economy. But it's, it's the growth trends, right? It's, it's our gross domestic product. How much more are we producing? What is the value of all the goods and services we produce here in Liberia or the last year or the year before? Because it tells us about the economic pie. The bigger the pie, the more each Liberian can get. The smaller the pie, the less we can get. So that's the key. It's not that the budget is 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 what the budget has been able to do. So you look at the growth trends over the past years, and wherever things went well, you credit the government. And when things didn't go too well, you 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 give them a, a, a failing mark. But I want to say, Stanton, I want to say this. So this government has put out their first budget, right? What happens after the budget is what we all need to pay attention to. If the budget redirects uh, resources in a disciplined way on infrastructure or development, we will build a capacity for more production. And once we build a capacity for more production, our trade balance get a little better because we probably can produce more and send it overseas and take less in so that our exports are becoming a little more than our imports. So I think the key here is to watch what happens now. I think, again, like I said at the beginning, it's a good sign that the government is intentional about lowering um, allotments to offices and those kinds of things because we need to shift public resources at the lower level, sanitation, education, health, infrastructure. Those are the things that build capacity. Well, what is in this budget surprising you, Dr. Bopler? What, what, no, 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 forget about the surprises. What in this budget scaring the heck out of you? right now, if we talk about moving to 2025. Are you afraid what? of any portion of this budget? Uh-huh. You so said what portion of the budget surprises me? And, 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 and scare the heck out of you as well. 
I, I would have, uh, okay, apart from cutting um, um, allotments to offices, honestly, I would have hoped that the president would pick his first big fight on behalf of the people and say we're going to lower salaries. You know, allotment is one thing. It's all of the perks and privileges that come with the office. But I would have thought that the president would would, would meet with the, the lawmakers, the leaders, and fight that first big fight. Listen, I think that this president, has the best shot at being a legacy leader. But to be a legacy leader in this moment in Liberia, you have to fight the big fights on behalf of the people so you can be the people's <laughs> president. And I would have hoped that with a lower salary, yes, we're going to be a big fight because a lot of those big salaries were lawmakers, and they're the ones who pass the budget across the aisle <laughs> to the, the branch of government. So I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I am hopeful. That in the next mean, then, then let me add, because we're going to do the round table, we're going to ask you a question. I mean, everybody should ask you a question, then they can shift the question or make a statement. Let me jump in real quick to you. Then we'll start from Jamama. we say got Fatima in the back, Asiba in the back, we'll switch off and on to bring folks in. Dr. Bublet, if salary concerned you, what next in this budget you think is of concern that the government didn't do? Are we talking about, for example, harmonization? Are we still riding with the same harmonization practice from Summit Way? Look, so harmonization happened with also the, the effect of that. I don't think it worked too well in Liberia. And uh, this budget, apart from, again, lowering a lot of standard, I don't think it makes any big statement. I think this group was trying to be moderate enough um, and cautious, because remember, they're just coming, so they don't actually control yet all of the variables. But now they have the opportunity. I think the next budget will be extremely important, will be proscriptive and prescriptive for us in Liberia. This so budget- my question to you, sir. Are we still riding the boat of harmonization in the country? Though we beat on George Manawea government, we dislike harmonization, we put everything on Samuel Twain, but this budget is reflecting the harmonization aspect of 2023, 2022, and going down the line. Is that true, sir? Well, it, it maintained it maintain that. And again, I, I don't know the, the perspective of the policymakers, but it did maintain that. Um, Should we continue maintaining that harmonization aspect within the budget? I think at some point, this government will have to inject a, merit, a more meritorious system. In, in salary, uh, um, 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 you know, determination. But again, this is a first I, I don't know you, I, 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 Listen, I, I'm not asking this question. Folks sending the question to ask you because the thing that with the budget argument is, I don't want to say what it say, and I disagree to say it's Summit 2.0 budget because of harmonization, because they didn't reduce salary, because they maintain a lot of stuff from the past government, just because they wanted to stabilize the economy for now. So let me bring in Glenn and JJ and your mama, a Prince Maxwell. Oh, sorry, I say you gotta come and I say you have not spoken. Then we can just go around the out and uh and seriously, I think it's concerning. We're getting to where we need it to be. And folks, please be patient, you'll get the best out of the program. Then I said, you wanna bring somebody in from the back, you can. Yeah, but they're not coming in the camera. Off. No, stay. I want you to ask one more question and make a statement, then we can rotate you. All right. All right. All right, go ahead, I said though. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, please, uh, Mr. Jackson, don't blame Maxwell. Maxwell is a deep diplomat. He's from the from the diplomatic setting, so don't blame him. Just pardon him. Maxwell, no problem. Yeah, you can say anything. We will consider you. <laughs> so, what are so, you talking about? <laughs> no, I know my papa, Mr. Sam, was going back and forth. I don't want to remind him that you are a diplomat. You know, in a deep diplomatic space, the people don't look at it budgeting all year and there, but. Few things we want to we want to know, like Mr. Jackson rightly put it. Once this government agrees with something that the former government did, it means this government is also doing it. And let me break a new story to, to tell you. This government is proposing a GST tax of eleven percent. That is one percent increment to what we had last year. Means. The prices of commodity because GST tax is a consumption tax will increase. In addition to that, this budget 
is proposing an additional $25 airport tax for all departing passengers. Mr. Lobo, George Lobo, when you come according to the budget, it will go by in. And you're going by America. In addition to the taxes you already paying into your ticket you're buying, you will have to pay additional $25. George Lobo, it doesn't seem like a rescue budget, right? But let's go further a little bit. Maybe you didn't know. Go back to your budget. You will see all of these things. Let's go back again. Let me repeat. The budget is proposing 11% GST tax. That will mean increment in the prices of commodity. Don't forget, we are not talking about inflation yet. If inflation as its own is on the roof, it's scary, my brother. Think about it. And then you will be paying additional $25 airport tax in addition to what you've already paid. But again, I know you were talking about inflation mean the people print more money. I don't want to believe. I'm not sure if there has been any economic thought or anything that says once you print money, it's inflation. The money they were printing is to exchange the old money. So it was not a money to add on the money to make it big, to expand the grade of the money on the market. It was to exchange. So say, for instance, if you have one $10, old money, and you print another $10 to take the other $10, it's the same $10 on the market. So it is not an increment of the money. If they were printing additional money to add on the money we have, then we can make that argument. But again, it is not. Now, to end very quickly on my path, I said this earlier on, but I will cut short and I will say it again. The white man voice that UP get all around this place, who they pay 138000 that my brother came and said that AR, imagine they feel the human being like According to him, they're going to machine for machine to talk to the people, say, oh, the budget is sweet, is sweet. They feel all the human beings because it isn't. Let me tell you, people, they were saying the president budget decreased by two, two million. I want to stick on that president budget part because it is important. And let me say, if you go to the president's hands-on budget increase by one million, you will note that when you take money from your left pocket and put it in your right pocket, that money stays on you. That's what the budget is doing. You take money from your back pocket, you bring it to the front pocket. It doesn't make sense. Go in a budget. There is a contingency budget under the Ministry of Finance where the president can have access to has been increased from about 800,000 to 4 million. So it is like, let's take 2 million for under well, the president. Let me ask you though, ask you though, can you cut that because we want that to both players and Jackson. Yeah, can, call him, can you call it and send it up? Put it up? Have you? I'll bring it as a one a minute. Uh, Benny, I know you want to say something. Dr. Bubla, have you seen that? Where, I mean, where Asido taking th this argument from? That it increased from 800,000 to 4 million? Okay. George Lobo, have you seen where where he taking his argument from, George Lobo? I, 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 I respond to Asido statements. I don't know. Mr. Where. Jackson? Maybe they have it at the CDC headquarters. Okay. Glendy? He who has it, he who has it that is saying it, let him show the proof. That's it. Okay. It can't, don't ask me. Ask whoever well, is saying I, it. Because the budget is big, man. I'm asking Dr. Yeah, let him show the proof. And Sam Jackson, uh, but Uncle Sam not answering, look like he froze on private. No, he's not supposed to be moving. Let him answer it. Uh, they, they prove that in a don't go far, go in a chat with it there. The All right. yeah. <laughs> don't just talk it there, Nana. Nah, you're good there. Okay, so no, nah, 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 if you're talking with that, you're good there, please. Thank you. Okay, Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam, can you wait? This is argument that CDC okay. wants to. Yeah, I, I, I beg you, Uncle Sam, let's do this real quick because I okay, want you so... and like, Uncle Sam, I beg you, Uncle Sam, one minute. Uh, let me <laughs> upload this. I want you and Dr. Bobler to just. Help Liberia understand whether this is unique to the budget. And, and thank God we got George Lowe here likewise. Folks are saying that they want to see it. Asito, can you repeat what you said? Please? I said they took money from the back pocket and put it to the front pocket. Say, Mr. President, let other we reduce your money. Let's take two million there. So for that ministry, let's pull four million here so that the president can also use it. So last year, from 800,000 to complete tickets, it is 4 million plus in this year. And it is in the chat room. Please put it on the board.
Yeah, you don't know that this is coming from CDC chat room. Look at it's a big daddy banner FM. <laughs> 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 what you said, I decided to post it just like that. Let's do this. No, no, seriously, as I beg you, let me make our people understand. This is directly from the CDC chat room. Even so before we okay. right? Okay. Even before we question it. Almost this hey, morning. Hey, 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 but wait, uh, wait, 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 I beg you. Like everybody <laughs> look at this, right? Look, look yeah. at this thing. They say Banner FM. Who own Banner FM? The Abu. The Abu right? Kamara. The Abu so, Kamara own Banner FM and TV. So the whole thing about Banner FM, Federation, the Bojidi, football, and everything, these guys then spraying this thing. This is from their own chat room that where they create all the problems with the AR. But folks, you can see yourself. See, <laughs> 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 that what the chat room do. That look at the numbers. I talk about the numbers. Like. <laughs> all right. So you want us to look at when you have the blue and green line, right? The hundred percent. All right. So let me let me take your CDC chat room things down because I really want to bring in Uncle Sam and Dr. Bublé to explain this. Then we'll find space for for Asiva and uh, our sister Fatima to come and speak. But no, I can go to the back. No, my man. Well, wait. Let's talk about why. Don't run away from your own CDC chat room message. This is concerning that you guys are still working hard. At least Liberians have seen this. This is what you guys do for a living. All right. So there we go. All right, Asif, talk to us now. What's your argument here? You are muted, Isaac. You are muted, Isaac. See, so, I said no argument now. It's right on the stream. Now, if there are people seeing what well, they're you explain what you are explaining for, for people to react to? And for the seven million action. Contingency goes to four million dollar contingency. A mini uncommitted Asa, money. You are not, you are not helping us. Can you point to where you want us to look, my brother? Please. See, oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, you see the green last cycle, the thing you see in the figures over there. It, Why are you first, Asa, oh, I just doing a piece of job here. Oh. What are you <laughs> fussing with me? You make no, an argument. I want people. I want people to hear your argument. People on the radio, they are not looking at this. Can you okay. take your time and explain? That is. UP is taking money from the left pocket, putting it to the right pocket, and then they say, I reduce the money in the left pocket when the same money stay on you. Reducing the president's money and putting it to another line that the president could also access is the president's money. And let's not forget now, we are comparing a budget year this year to a budget year that was election year. So you will expect a lot of cost to increase from election year. We don't want to make that argument yet, though it's a valid argument to make because you have like National Elections Commission. Their budget from last year will not be the same budget as this year because last year was election year. They will have more money than this year. But let's come to the issue of the budget. What I'm saying, if you got money in your left pocket and you take it out from only you put it in your red pocket, it's still on you. Not because you take it from the red pocket and carry it to the red pocket, meaning you reduce it. No, they own you. And this okay. now is uncommitted. And it is the increment from the outcome to the budget of this year from the Ministry of Finance. They want to tell right, you that. Thank you. Ask me this. thank you. So let's go to Dr. Bobla. Dr. Bobla, can you explain this? Can I explain what? What's on the screen? Yes, sir. They ask the door argument, sir. I, I, I don't. I, I honestly no, no, do not follow. So I honestly do not follow, uh, Mr. Is that, a, is that an increase from eight hundred thousand to four million? That uh, point of uh, sure. information, on Stanton. That the public information. Sure. Great, Stanton. So a few things we need to pay attention to, and Minister Doe, I don't want you to continue to do this as a brother. It's a pity, uh, Stanton. When you put it up and look in the upper left hand corner on the page. Look there, it says uh, transfer to the Librarian Electricity Regulatory Commission. Go down, it talks about the different transfer to different unit. Does it anywhere state that the transfer that Azadog is referring to, 
does it indicate transfer to the Ministry of State for Presidential Affairs or to the President's Office? Nah. I mean, what a, what a question you ask me. Yes, so, 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 so hold on now. Thank As we go, we, not, we don't care to play, man. I beg you. Thank you, Lobo. Don't tell that thing down. I look at Boja every day. Lobo, 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 hold on. Lobo, hold on one minute. Can you say <laughs> that again? Because I want people so, to hear so what you It talks yeah. about transfer, right, in different areas. When you look <laughs> at the how it's being itemized, does it anywhere state contingency transfer to Ministry of State, like how it's stated, transfer to Treasury Secretary, transfer to Regional Department and Planning Services, it indicates where those transfers are being made. It can as it does show you where that transfer indicate to the office of the president or the Ministry of State. Then we can begin the conversation from there. Then I will... I, I will so, so contingency transfer current. Yes. Spe so contingency on a what? We have, That's we, have I'm asking you. we have different different agency. We have emergency response unit. It's a contingency for the country. It's a contingency under the Ministry of Finance. That is why you need to look at the top. That's why I don't want you to call it. Let's go to the top of the entire page. Let's see on the top of the page. Please, where they have that banner would have helped us because on the top would have told us exactly which page that budget that, that particular page is coming from. So where they have that banner, they cut they were they know what they did. That is why they cover that top. If you look down to the bottom of the other page, you see where it says Ministry of Finance Development Planning is under the Ministry of Finance. This is not under the ministry. Any budget item that is for the Ministry of State, it will either say Ministry of State and it spares it out Office of the President. It's itemized based on under the Office so, of the so, President. So that's an argument. It's not, it's not with the Ministry of State, but yet it's still, it's kind of, it's, yet it's still, yet it's still, Judge Double. Yet it's still, it's kind of too vague, though, because we don't know that contingency amount, where yeah, it's going, right? Judge, you want me to so, help so, you now? So, so, stand on, stand on. Stand yeah, on. Judge. When we come yeah, to judge. speak to these national issues, right? We can't be guessmating. We can't be assuming. There's a judge reason Lobo, that, let me, let me gonna, stand judge on. Hold on. on. Judge Lobo, stop, stop. I'm asking you a question, my brother. I want you to help us understand, since you don't guess me. What I'm asking you, contingency, transfer, current. What that can you explain that to us? I read we don't know. Can you tell us what I mean? So stand on if it's a contingency current, is there a is there a number allocated to what is a contingency plan first and foremost? Is it under the ministry of finance? My argument was stand on. I was responding to as a do who said it was for the president. And what I tried to show here is that Minister Doe misinformed the public. It had nothing to do with the office of the president. It is not under the Ministry of State. Anything other than that, that's a different conversation. So okay. I'm so so sure you don't know. You just see it's not for the president office. I don't know who went. Listen, it's not for the president office. That's your argument. We are not seeing the executive mansion there. We are not seeing the Ministry of State. We are seeing maybe it's somewhere else. That's a booklet, and that's a good argument. Uh, George, the that no, Bupla, you know, uh, before you go, can I we, yeah, Becky, but can we get that to into this and Sam Jackson, please? That to So, Stanton, thank you. I, I would, I would just say this here, right? That this is, this is a great platform, okay, for us to add our voices, our ideas in constructive ways to help move our country forward. I think this is not a place to come and bring half information, partial information, shady information. That's why I didn't speak to that which was on the board. I couldn't identify the source properly and really didn't speak to the argument that came that came behind it. And I, I think we should not uh, abuse this opportunity to educate, inform, and inspire the Liberian people to work together and move forward. Um, again, as far as the budget is concerned, I would say what I said at the beginning, and that is this budget has a hopeful sign. I want us all to remember that there's so many things that play into making the budget the budget. So these are projections, but revenue generation and execution is a different thing. This government will need some time to get a handle on all the key players and make sure that not only we do revenue generation, but we do the proper allocation and those things so that the economy works well. Um, but I think, we're on the road uh, in a modest and a moderate way. So it's a hopeful start from a budgetary perspective. 
So thank you, Vrag Baja. That's the argument. I, I, listen, let me say this. I said, Vrag, uh, you, you came in late, but welcome, Dr. Bopler. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's 6 15, 10 15 in Liberia. So we're going to do part two of this budget. It will be a free flow. Say what you want to say. Ask who you want to ask questions to. No, we're going to do this. We're going to do this after I said, though. After I said, though, after I said though, Samuel Jackson. After I said, though, Prince Maxwell, Samuel Jackson will bring in Asset Vibe. Then we got to go to the free flow. Then anybody can speak and make their argument. All right? Because this budget, to tell you the truth, I, the information I received today, let me be the first to say this. It's a good start. Not only because that the Bubla is saying it, it is a good, good start. It is not 100%. I don't think it will ever, ever be 100%. Uh, Ava, Ava, can you mute yourself? Something playing in your back, my brother. Yeah, it's not 100%. It will never, ever be 100%. But because of where we find ourselves today as a nation and where we came from, I think this budget will pave for way for a better 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 presentation next year when Boma Kamara come up with a budget after raising enough revenue after putting things in place I think the Liberian people will benefit so my fellow Liberians what you want for your better you want to be happy you cannot be happy today you will be alive you will have food to eat you will take pay on time but today for you to start your Christmas, it cannot be because we have to clean the mess. And I will say this as a supporter of Joseph Yuman Borga, we have to clean the mess that George Manor we are created. Once we clean the mess, then you can come back to Burma Kamara next year. You can come back to GMB next year and say, GMB, you have one year though, but this thing stay there is no change. Then your argument will be fine. Everything you're seeing right now. Look at what our brother wanted us to pour. That put a little politics in it. These guys then in their own chat room, Bana FM 98.5 TV radio room. They in that chat room lying to each other. To tell you the truth. And I thank God for George Lobo, they blacked the electricity portion of that thing in the on the tap. And he said, we'll only give them half truth. But I think the budget, the budget will speak for itself down the line. Dr. Bopla, thank you. Andrew Mama, thank you. No, no, can I say something quick on that before Dr. Bopla no, go? You are coming to me now. No, 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 I'm so in 2022, <laughs> they spent $10,749,114 for an account. <laughs> in 2023, they proposed... No, they proposed no, 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 no. In 2021, in 2021 was 10 million. 2022 no. was 13. No, 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 no. That's not how the, the budget is structured. That first column is 2022. The second column is 2023 budget. The third column is actual 2023, and the last and the fourth column is 2024, and then 2025, 2026. So that 10 million that is spending in 20, if you go back to, to, to 2020 or 2021, you'll probably see 10 million there too. So as a do, just explain to us that account is the account that finance get where the president can just kind just spend any money from, right? And what he said, so yeah, but that's not what it's for. Yes, yeah, that's, that's what, what he said. said. Hey, wait, wait, no, let me use I said the own words on him now. Yo. So that 10 million dollars they got to explain to him how they spend it. They spend it 13, they spend only 800,000. So I won't know why. And if you even scroll up that sheet or on the actual budget page or that same um situation there, you'll see the Ministry of Finance said three million dollars for bank charges in that they spent in 2023. You know. This budget, when you look at it, don't look at only 2024. Look at 2023. What was budgeted 2023 and what they actually spent in 2022. Because it's very revealing and it shows the level of corruption. And if you make some of the comparisons and you see the decrease in some of the numbers that this government is putting forward, you understand how corrupt 
That's CDC government being. And it's Thank very, you. very sad. Thank you. Why you brought Abba in the Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, Abba. Uh, uh, guys, uh, after Acid though, after Acid though, we're going to do rapid fire. We've got to be very engaging and let's discuss any part of this budget. Uh, but I think Acid Vi, you make a good point though, but the year you missed the year. I'm looking at this budget Look, if you have. Can you help me understand the 10, the 10,000 or 10 million? It was 10 million, not 10,000. I'm sorry. Was it 2021 or 2022? 2022. Look at the budget header. The budget has six yeah. columns. The okay. first column is fiscal year 2022 budget actual. The second column is fiscal year 2023 budget. That's what it budget there in 2023. Then the third column is the outturn. I mean, what was actually spent in 2023. Then the last three columns are the estimated budget for 2024, 2025, and the projection for 2025 and then 2026. So, so that's your money argument, they actually spending. So your argument here, and librarians need to hear this, as to do them, semi all of them used to just steal the money from all over. Maybe you don't want to say it. <laughs> So that's the same I'm thing. Let it explain. No, 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 no. I just, I just, my man, my man. That's why I say you don't want to say it because I don't know. Then this argument be as a do. If I was as a do, I would not bring this thing up. One thing <laughs> I was prepared for you to bring up. But, but I told, I told you the, I no, told you guys it long I, time I, ago. Talk to us. I, I said talk to us. <laughs> so again, the the propaganda years of election has passed. The same way your people fed you, the same way your people will yesterday that the president requested 38,000, 38 EPS officers only to come out today and confuse themselves. That's the same way we are. And again, Stanton, I know people are saying things that make a lot of people laugh who are listening all around the place. Someone say, you know, it is not the budget, it is the, the economic thing, but the budget is the economic thing. The, the budget shows the priority of the government. The budget shows how the country will be run. It's not, it's not a, it's not a eat combo at the back thing. The budget is the priority of the government. So if you using the budget, I'm not sure if you're using prayer from God, say, okay, let's put the budget down, let pray to God, no. And again, my brother, Josh Lobo, I don't know how I can bring no, it in. I don't want you to raise that though. Yeah, that's I, what I'm going. I said, bye. I have to bunk you. Oh, you go in there. So go there now. Go there. Go Very well. No, I said, bye. Knows what he's saying is at the budget and the art term and looking at the budget. When you be brought their white man voice to say, why short, why long, why decrease, why increase, they were looking at what the government spent and what they are proposing. With the one voice that I was talking, that they pay one hundred twenty-eight thousand for that one minute. Guys, can we mute? Can everybody just mute, please? We get them feedback. Go ahead. So in this case, in this case, the same way they deal with a white man voice is the same, the same basis that we are saying. And like I was saying to George Lobo, let me say in a simplest term, take it from budget in a way that my joy will understand it. You understand, my brother? The same budget, though, the more we talk about the four million increment. If you in a house, you get three children, you depart, you give all of them ten dollars, you yourself you take ten dollars, then you say they twenty dollars there, they be here for con 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 contingency. You have authority over that contingency. So in a narrow sense of it, you can spend thirty dollars because you are like the pa. I will the person looking. So I don't you know are now you confirming what you guys were doing with the ten million. You confirm it to everyone tonight that exactly the behavior of CDC, that's what you guys did. And you think and that's so, what Mama Kamara is going to do. First of all, let's establish this. You put this so, on the executive mansion. It's false. So, and this so, is not, and no, so, no, 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 no. Can you admit, can you admit it's not on the executive mansion according to the document so, you provided? As I was saying before Santa come, uh, oh, sorry, came in with the propaganda talking, let me con continue. And he can stick to a propaganda words, fine. But let's continue to the reality of government. So as, I was I was again, as I was saying again, it's very, it's very simple. It is right there. This government has been saying that they decrease the president's budget. Why it is truth, it will make sense that the president's budget in an election year who definitely be higher than almost any other year because of electionary activities. 
because of travel and because of a lot of other things. That makes common sense. But I don't want to dwell on it for the fact that that is a fact and it is there. I want to dwell on the the white man voice that was all around Liberia. Uh, it's not always our time, man. Yeah. And again, like I said, you cannot lie on the economy today. The government has almost spent about 90 million. Every price has increased. If indeed teachers who have been brought to our country, you've seen it today after spending it. In 2025, you will be here and see almost all prices in the market increase because of what we're saying. So you can play Thank your policy. This is governance. Thank you. Thank you, Asset. I'll, I'll, so I'll, 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 I'll be with you guys tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jackson, before you leave, before you leave, yeah, let you. me let you know that. Let me ask it though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm no, I'm no, 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 have the tea and the temerity to accept the fact that their own budget preface says that there was economic growth in 2022 and 2023. I will not say anything anymore on the thing here unless they accept. I put it in the chat room that there it's was their own budget preface said there was economic growth. It's a decline. I, they increase. must accept that or I leave and come back another day yeah, when we cool. can have a discussion. You so ready? Yeah, they show today so is different. You they, can tell I just different. put in the chat room. There's a Spencer, decline. Mr. Jackson is a decline. Chat room. Oh, praise, praise. Praise. Let Mr. Jackson speak. So they can see it. Mr. If Jackson, not, I'm going. Mr. Jackson I'm going. you want me to Mr. Jackson, you want me to put this up? You want me to put it up? Okay, so but I thought he read it. Run away from your own budget. Mr. Jackson, yeah, you want to put it for your own budget. Please put it up. Okay. No, so put, it up. You... put it up. Put yeah. it up. Let the brown people see it. Yeah, Mr. Jackson, hold on. Let the brown people let see it. Okay, but wait now. Just come down. Let's go to Dr. Bopler while I upload it, okay? Let the brown people let Dr. please. All right. So, again, I want to I wanna move a little past... Um, Thank you. <laughs> the prescription of the budget to what really, the, in what direction they're giving us here. For example, if you look at real GDP Wait, projection, not putting it off, right? You're not putting it off. Um, I told you really, to wait. It must I'm going to upload me. it. Uncle Sam, we got to wait. We got to upload it. Just be patient. You don't have to talk it. Let's put it off. Oh, Stay man. Man is speaking, Mr. Jackson. Let's put it off. Yeah, you can miss a lot of it. That's your way. Mr. Jackson, Mr. Jackson get delayed with his internet. Your way. Mr. Mr. Samuel Jackson. Put it up. Let the LeBron people see it. Mr. No, Samuel no, Jackson. Put it up. Let LeBron people see it. And I tell you that you get delayed. He's not even here. Let LeBron see it. Mr. Jackson, can you be fair, be honest? But what if he's just disrupting the show? Whether he's delayed or not, he's disrupting the Benny, show. Benny, I beg you, please. Yeah, yeah well, I'm not a big ticket. Yeah, Mr. Jackson, can you hear me? Mr. Jackson, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mr. Jackson? Can you hear you after the jam? Bye. Bye. Yeah, 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 I can hear you. People, my butt. People, the here. Your people, put it up. Then I will be happy. Okay, you put so it up. up. You put it up so that Bumpo can see it. Oh, and the message say we put it up. Bumpo see it. So, who, so who's talking the truth? When I talking the yeah, truth, yeah, or you're talking the see. truth, you put it up. I dare you. Yeah, nothing to say. It, it it's awful, but he not yeah, saying that. Yes, I have nothing to say. There you go. There you go, you put it up now. They say, hey, they say the economy expanded. They say the economy expanded. 
2022 and 2023, Allah, that one I want to prove. Yeah, you can go, you okay, have to go talk now. No, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Thank you. I beg you. I beg you. We gotta go to Dr. Bopla, please. We gotta go to Dr. Bopla. Dr. Bopla, please continue, sir. All right. So thank you again, um, Stan. So if you if you juxtapose that information we just saw with growth, if you put it next to real GDP um, projections, right? The actual numbers. So GDP, real GDP, which is a nominal GDP adjusted for inflation, meaning you consider the prices of goods and services in the country. If you put it next to it, you will notice that um, real GDP declined, right, from 2021, 2022, from 2022 to 2023. So please understand that you can grow, okay, you can grow by producing more things, by getting a few more people to produce rubber and stuff like that. But if your real GDP is shrinking, that means the overall uh, quality of life, purchasing power of the people is actually declining. So if you look at the same projection on that table, it says that 2024, we expect an increase in real GDP. I just want to say that, you know, the, the historical part to me doesn't have so much value. So there's no reason to come and talk so much about yesterday and the last six years. But I think what's important is this government must do everything it can to keep prices lower. Because when you keep prices lower of goods and services, then you will exponentially increase the ability of people to purchase things, you strengthen the dollar, and growth will mean more to the ordinary people in Liberia. And I think that's what we need to look at in this budget. This budget says we could do this. Now let's get to work and do it. So I will ask you the question. We'll go around. Anybody can ask question or make statement. That's a book plan. When will we see the, a better budget? Are you when talking about 2025? We... Are you talking about 2026? I, I'm not talking about when will we see a better budget, something better than what is out today? Well, one, <laughs> let's, be, let's be clear. I don't work for the government. <laughs> so let's start there. Um, two, um, better is relative but a budget that actually reduces salary and reallocate revenues to sectors like education health and job creation with a 15 county strategy will be a budget that will really help liberia grow okay so let, me, let me be specific sir let me be specific we got the others got to come in let's start with the legislature sir we see on the budget pro tem decrease in mm -hmm. our office budget, mm -hmm. right? Speaker, mm -hmm. decrease. Mm -hmm. Vice president, That's decrease. Mm -hmm. don't, you think, don't you think it's an eye opener right there? Don't you think it's, it's interesting to note that these oh, things are happening? No doubt, no doubt it, it is. And, and also, like I said, it's a hopeful sign because right. you also look at the other details in the budget, the reallocating, she has one thing just cut. You know, we just cutting, but we cutting and reallocating to education and health, okay, and creating jobs in those areas and paying them a little better. Then we're on to something. That's why I said this budget is hopeful. The next budget, though, the next budget, after a government had been here for 12 months, no excuses, the next budget, you control now all of the sectors of the economy in terms of your policy makers. The next budget, I expect it to be a little more radical, a little more intentional in terms of redirecting the nation's resources to where it's needed the most. That's at the bottom. Growth is more sustainable when it's from the bottom up and not the top down. So uh, so just go ahead, uh, Anjimama. Uh, Fatima, you come in because you're just joining us. But again, I want librarians home and abroad listen to us. We'll read this, we'll put up Ministry of State reduced from 20 million to 9 million. Is that true? Oh, that, that's a lie. It's in the budget. Office of the President reduced from 4.4 million to 2.2 million. Is that true or that's just a lie? Yes. But no, it's in the budget. Vice President reduced from 4 million to 2 million, though. And we just talked about just a few months back. But with this government, the legislature reduced from 67 million to 38 million. To 38 million from 67, almost half. Almost half. 
The proton budget, Yombly budget, Yombly Abuche was operating on 4 million budget. Now Yombly will be operating on 1.2 million. You're talking about 2.8. If this is not a profit key map, the government is saving from the proton office alone, 2.8 million. Let's talk about the speaker budget. The speaker budget from, uh, how you call the speaker that was there that they just beat? What's his name? Wafa Chima. He was receiving 2.2 million. It came down for Nati Kofa will be receiving 1.6 million. Isn't it not interesting to note that the government is fighting for our people? And these guys don't have to go home with a reduction in the budget. Deputy Speaker reduced from one million to five hundred fifteen thousand. We're gonna put it up. Can we have an argument on this? That this is not reflecting the will of the people. Though we still got a long way to go. My question to you, Dr. Bufflet, please. My last last question. And Fatima will come in. Everything you just heard. Why would someone argue on this budget? That it is not performing in the direction of rescue because people are entitled to the perspective and freedom of speech is cardinal <laughs> to our democracy so you have a right to talk all kind of foolishness that's part of the democratic process i think the budget trends in the right direction uh did it go far enough for me personally no but then again when you don't have a good handle on all of the sectors of the economy, the policymaker, and the performance. Even my budget is just a prescription. It is the performance. You know, you do what we call budget to actual, budget to actual. So we'll go in the first quarter. After the first three months, we'll look at the actual performance of the economy. Second three months, we'll look at the actual performance. And then we say, okay, you know what? We over-projected, we under-projected, we're on target, those kinds of things. I think it points us in the right direction that this government, this president, want to operate with modesty and redirect resources like he should, like he should, yeah. to the more productive sectors of the economy. And that's encouraging. We, you know, we got a long ways to go, but I think we're getting off to a good start. So folks, make your argument. It's an open after Fatima. Anybody can say what I want to say, but yes, the major reduction, if you compare this to last year, Dualu, Joe, where they were right on high. 20 million will go into Ministry of State. Imagine 11 million different. Liberia's need to hear this. This is a fair argument. It is not 100%. We are not there yet. But imagine the first budget from this government. They're telling the executive mansion, we cannot give you 20 million. We must cut. They brought it down to nine million. It's there, my people. If you listen to us on radio, we are reading from this. And I want Sam Jackson, I said, though, the sedition to come and argue. Office of the President, Joe Manuel, we we're getting 4.4 million. With everything, it will cut in half 50%. Joseph Barker getting 2.2 million. You want to argue it? We need no other argument. We need no other argument in this one. It's clear. I, I understand you were talking about the agriculture. I understand you were talking about why we don't do this. Yeah, it's fair. Let's beat on Burma Kamara. Yeah. But can you at least also use your same mother that beat you on him to praise him and the decision they took to negotiate? Vice President reduced from four million to two million. Everything you are seeing is but 50%. The senators and representatives from $67 million to tell it. On the George Manor, we are government, we're going to say, no, you can't touch it. How do you expect young people to operate? Just yesterday, I'm a chair. We're walking away with $4 million. I beg you, you just give me two more seconds here. Just yesterday, he was walking with $4 million in his budget for doing nothing. He used the four million to run his campaign and he was re-elected. Yombly is under 50% of that amount. She must accept it because she's working for the people. Yombly is receiving 1.2 million while Abuche received 4 million. This is not a joke. 
Look at the speaker budget. For that tea and everything you're going to be running through, they cut the budget by 600000 And they told for that tea, we were given only $1.6 million. Deputy Speaker, though he read it, he doesn't need the money, Thomas Fala, but as for the government, he must receive it. Almost 50% his budget. So can somebody tell us, we, whom in the broad Liberia, can you celebrate this budget? Make your argument on, on, on the little stuff. Make the argument, it's fine. But can you celebrate that this is a good start for Liberia and the people with feed and they will have that bread and butter because now Dwight, you said, take that money now and move it and help the people, help the community. So Fatima, I, I think we, we took a good step. I want to encourage all librarians out there. We'll open the phone line after we do this round. I just want to encourage you. When they say, wait, give us time, I think Brahma Kamara did extremely well, he and his team. I think for him to walk into the executive mansion, look in the president's face, look in Sylvester Grisby, and say, we have to cut your budget by 50%. He went to the legislature and said, everything we are saying, we have to cut. Man, you got to you got to say thank you, Lord. Fatima. Um, CEO, I would like to say hello to you and to the rest of the panelists and to all of the viewers around the globe. Um, I was looking at a budget like the economists on the platform, uh, Dr. Randolph Brooklyn. I, I, Rudolph, is it Rudolph or Randolph? I'm sorry, I can't yeah, remember. Rudolph. Right? Um, I would like to say thank you for coming to Spoon Talk. And of course, Mr. Samuel Jackson, I was uh, I, I was satisfied with the budget. I was looking for a much more bolder, you know, budget. But then again, I understood what the president inherited. Um, I, I just wanted to make a, a, um, a few statements and then talk with regards to the budget. Um, in in this budget, I was actually I know that we're looking for in order for the budget to work and perform and everybody to benefit. There has to be, the budget has to explain growth and, of course, expenditures. It also has to explain investments. And um, I looked at it. I saw that from where we, we came from and where we are, I'm a bit satisfied. I just want to, of course, Mr. Isaac, um, I forgot his, I, I don't want to say, but I think he left. He left already. I was going to say to him, honestly, that we come on here to have intellectual disco, where we're educating the Liberian people and talking things that matter to their, their, their bottom line. You know, we're talking about table issues. And most of the time I hear people say, oh, um, you know, the they, they, they white man, the white man, first of all, that's racist. I don't know how we're talking about. He's Caucasian, he's human, he's an AI. Most that's why we in, in on this side use most times you don't talk to actual human beings, you're talking to AI, you're talking to all those people. The budget right now, we got part of agriculture. What the one that I was my dire, dire, dire concern was to make sure that Liberians are able to feed themselves, to make sure that we are growing our own rice because this rice thing has been a major crisis. And I saw an increase in the agriculture budget. I saw education, you know, those were my concerns. And I was I was really, really proud of that. The domestic, um, the growth domestic product, all of us know, in order for our country to grow, it has to grow from the bottom up. I'm speaking to you now, Dr. Brooklet. You know, it has to grow from the bottom up. The Liberianization uh, uh, um, uh, project that we are all talking about, where we are trying to invest in Liberians, in Liberian business owners, if we invest in those things and our people are able to, you know, hire more Liberians, we work together. I think next year we have a more prosperous budget. And, and that's what I was I was trying to, because I've been listening to you and you've been speaking my language. I always speak to my um, my uncle here, Mr. Samuel Jackson. You know, you guys are speaking the same on the same terms. But I think the budget, the way it looks now from a new government, from where we are coming, you know, I would have liked it to be bolder and, and, and better. But... For now, like you said, we're taking baby steps, uh, steps and next year we have something greater. So I thank you for coming on the platform. I thank you for the expressions to, you know, to encourage our Liberian people because this was a rescue mission to give hope. 
But when we came there, the covers were empty, as empty Jemima always said. It was empty, and we need to start from somewhere. And I think this is a good start. So thank you for coming, and thank you for elaborating and helping all of us. Tuaru, welcome back. I so, so, uh, thank you, uh, of, of Fatima. Uh, again, let's guys, it's open now. Say what you want to say. Ask question, make your statement. Everyone mm -hmm. entitled to a minute, 30 seconds. Then from there, we go to the phone line. So stand up. Uh, we start from you. So so real quick on this on this budget, uh, given what you 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 read, a uh, few things I wanted to highlight. Uh, why it is true we wanted the budget to be aggressive, to be bold, to be radical, uh, as Dr. Bopler rightfully stated. We all know that in let the economists correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, usually, fiscal policy takes longer time to yield result because it requires legislative approval. These are not monetary policy where measures are temporary and quick fixes. Uh, but I will say this to you, and like we all said, this budget, first and foremost, we've learned because we've, we just replaced a government that was recording record-breaking revenue but could not pay nurses, that were recording record-breaking revenue but could not pay teachers. We've, we, we've just replaced a government that, re, that, that proposed 800, 900, 700 million dollar budget that will do recast every two months, three months. What we try to show is fiscal responsibility. And we try to show that we'll be fiscally disciplined. This is why you see the cuts were made to the top. And let me say this, I, I haven't gone through the budget stand now. Here's my area of concern. Uh, we are paying 123 million to service debt. Think about it. With everything that we've talked about, 25 million could have gone towards agriculture. Additional 20 million could have gone towards the healthcare sector. Another 20 million could have gone towards repairs of roads, maintenance of other areas. But yet we have to pay to service debt that Samuel Jackson government that he defended borrowed $1.1 billion. Yet they can show $30 million investment anywhere, capital spending to, to, to expand the economy, to create jobs. But to sit there and be talking about the budget was not ambitious enough. I think that is wrong. And I'll say this again. This is a very good start. We ran on the mantles of rescue. We inherited a government that was recording budgets short for, I have to say, it was a norm. What we are trying to do is to show that we've disciplined. And look, like I will agree with Dr. Buckler, because the issue of this budget in the past has always been. And I want Liberians to understand. Allotment don't mean disbursement. And when the issue of fiscal discipline comes to being, that is where the problem lies. If we allocate 10 million to JFK, we must ensure that 10 million is disbursed to JFK. We don't want to be like the previous government that were allocating 600 million to county for county development funds, but we're receiving 45,000. They were thank allocating you. money and they did not pay. So, Stanton, I agree with you. I want to thank. Uh, Minister Kamara and his team, and I want to thank the president because the president could have said, "I just taken over without all the government cars, with all the travels I have to take." But I think it was a bold step. On the issue, Stanton, you raised on harmonization. Here's what I wanted to say on this. Real quick, Judge Lobo, you. Yeah, you, you know, I leave on that. Stanton, civil service has a law. We just can't come to power and dismiss people. So the salary we inherited. This is why we are doing a complete audit of the payroll. We just came from under 50,000 civil servants to 60 some more thousand person. So we have to be cautious as to how we proceed. I agree with Dr. Bobla that it has to be on a merit base, but that is where we need to go. Hopefully, Thank you. hopefully we can invest more in the private sector. So you come back with your closing. Uh, let's let's hear from Sam Jackson, Prince Maxwell, Mr. Dualu, Azebatuwa, and Jamama. And that the problem don't go to the phone line for tonight. Uncle Sam, your minute 30 seconds, sir. Well, well, thank you very much. It is clear that the dishonesty, the false narrative, the lies, and all of those things were killed tonight when the Unity Party government said they were inheriting a distressed economy. I was able to prove from their own, and I keep going back to this preface document that said there was economic growth. And the fact that the budget is increasing in terms of increasing the budget. Uh, Minister Kamara wants to do something called 
MTEF, which is a medium term expenditure framework document, okay, budget, which means three years. He's done his projections for three years. The growth and revenue increase trajectory that we bequeath to the new government continues. It's clear. Growth 2022, growth 2023. And Burma Kamara said that he was going to instantaneously increase the budget to a billion dollars. He said that. We heard it all. And he will not do that beyond 2026, 2024, 2025, and 2026. Here is the problem I have with this budget. All you've done in this budget, you've shifted costs. You shifted cost because any serious analyst looking at a budget, you're looking at the bottom line. The bottom line is revenue minus expenditure. And in the equation of revenue minus expenditure to get fiscal space, you have a very small figure there of $51.89 million. That's the bottom line of the budget. You can go to Mars, you can go to Pluto, you can go anywhere. Fiscal space eh, versus a fiscal cliff. You are sitting on a fiscal cliff because what you're doing is you have very limited investment in public sector, right? Let's look at uh, agriculture. You Real see quick, you agriculture by a million no, 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 I'm not thinking, no, you gotta give me a chance. I'm not, I'm not three minutes yet. You said you increase you you increase agriculture, right? But the the, the cost was only shifted to questionable goods of services. There was no investment. The investment, the public sector investment in agriculture is only seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's it. End of conversation. You can't say you're an agriculture president and you only put seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in agriculture. You, the United Party of Government, had a lot of off-budget support to agriculture. For example, the Labra Agriculture Sector Investment Plan, hundreds of millions of dollars was spent in agriculture for the 12 years. Did you improve rice import? Rice? Did you increase domestic rice production? The per capita consumption of rice has increased consistently. Okay, you did not have a cassava strategy. You don't have an aero strategy. You don't have coffee or cocoa strategy. We're only exporting $3 million worth of cocoa and coffee out of Liberia a year. In your 12 years. In your 12 years. So you cannot come and say that, oh. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Uncle Sam. Prince oh, Maxwell, please. Here, six what? See, uh, see Prince, 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 I just have one second of your time. Okay, can we, can we come no, back? No, no, no. I just wanted to say Lone Star is leading. They have never Lone been Star. before and they're leading 2 0. Please, my people, let me be happy. Even the team that he was president, he we, will, we, will, we will come to that. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm you, speaking to them. Prince Maxwell, please. And then, uh, for me, uh, first and foremost, to, to uh, Mr. Isaac Doe. Isaac, I got my first degree in economics. So I, I'm not a practicing economist. That's all, there's just, just difference. But I understand the language very, very well. Two, I'm not going to give credence to what uh, Mr. Jackson is saying as much as I respect him. He knows how much I respect him. But I'm not going to give credence to his, to his preface argument. I think it's just it's a narrative that they're creating to run with. But that narrative does not hold as it is because when you really dig down, when you dig deeper, what he's actually talking about is GDP recovery, not economic growth. The GDP was just recovering. That's all it is. Nothing more than that. But I think uh, Honorable Boyma Kamara and his team and the cabinet did a good job in terms of the budget. Uh, Mr. Dr. Bropler said we should pay attention to the trend. And for me, because I pay attention to trend all the time. I, I, I assess the trend of the budget being defensive. I thought that this is a very defensive budget in the sense that the budget sought to speak clearly to uh, fiscal credibility. That's the reason why you keep talking about, George Lobo, you keep talking about the issue of debt. We have the budget has to send a clear message to our international partners, to our creditors out there, that we are now back in business and we are ready to take care of our domestic and external debts. 
So on the side of fiscal credibility, the budget speaks to that. On the side of fiscal discipline, we see cuts in budget and proper reallocation. Now, we can all differ. We can all use words, semantics, to move our position around. But we see that there is an, an effort by the government to send a clear message to Liberian people that they are paying attention to fiscal discipline. Lastly, for me, I realize that this government is trying to, through the budget, they are trying to bring about performance-based budget strategy. Because in the performance-based budget, there are a lot of things that you can do, and there are a lot of allocations that you can make. Now, I understand fully well that maybe they do not understand that, that the budget also is serving as a hedge against external shocks. So yes, we have an increase in civil servants payment, an increase in maybe in other areas, but I think those increases will serve as cushion when we start to have issues like increase in prices on the market, uh, the inflation rate in terms of the exchange rate in Liberia and stuff like that. So I think that the budget is actually speaking the language that we right now want to speak for the, the short term. For the medium to long term, I don't know right now, but for the short term, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Duarte. Thank you so much. And it was a pleasure to have you on, Dr. Brooklyn. A lot was learned here into the audience, man. Yo, thank you always. I want to say this, though. I'm not going to do on the budget so much, but I want to say this directly to the president and the executive team. We have to create private sector job. My recommendation would be this. We can design the strategy. Put $10 million, we can start with something as meager as $10 million into the budget every year to focus on the private sector. We can design a strategy that can create 100,000 jobs in the span of six years. It is possible, it's more than doable. Look at some of these plans. Let's put our people to work. You have to set portion of that budget aside. If you're reallocating, I said, let's start with something as low as $10 million. See some of the strategies to create jobs in and across the country. How we can put our people to work. If you truly want to grow this budget, we have to develop the private sector. And I think we should put some strategy towards that. Let's grow the private sector. There's so many ways we can do that. And I think that the executive team should take a look at that. Put some money there. Thank you so much, Stanton. Thank you, Mr. Eduardo. As if I took back. Well, let's kick it back in right now. We're hesitant to put it on mute. I think y'all can hear him in the background. But, um, yeah, just, just taking the uh, chicken soup fire tray. You'll be fine. <laughs> you like me. You like my wife. You really won't cause trouble here. No, but look, the budget is not ambitious. The budget is not bold. But I think the budget is trending in the right direction. You can see if you try to do a deep dive in the budget, you can see where they're trying to go. For example, if you look at um, some of government own expenditures like the tax waiver, like some of us, yeah, wanted to cut down from like 50% already, add 150 billion to the budget. But I look at it, 2023, it was 203 million. 2024, they're dropping it, you know, to 183, 184. So they're reducing some of the giveaways and they're trying to see if they can recover that definitely probably on the tax side. So there's some efforts there that we can't dismiss. Additionally, there's some decreases, but it's not significant. And it's not like this government can just manufacture no magician in this whole country, you know, or in this financial business. It's practical. And we have to be patient. Much as I'm not a patient person, I want things to happen. We have to be patient and see what this government's own budget would be next year. Because by then, by let's say June, July, when they start to form formulate um, 2025 budget, they will have understood six months of this governance at least. Yeah, what they are doing. And, that, and that's the point, yes, yes. Where the boons are buried, where they can make some cuts, where they can make some cuts. You know, so I criticize this budget as much as I would, you know, normally if this was a, in the second year, in the third year, where you're trying to break down everything, you're looking at the priorities and stuff, because you can't, there's no way they can implement some of the things they've been talking about in this time. And that's why when I talk about, I can dismiss people warrant the plane because it's just not realistic and no kind of stuff. It happens here, right? So 
Labyrinth will like it or not. You have to be patient. See whether there's some change in some of the expenditures that they're going through. Yes, we we'll see the decrease with the legislatures. We we'll see the decrease with the with the um the president's office. We gotta look at some of the other decreases on the agriculture sector side. We can talk about low money agriculture, but what I need to understand, I don't understand that well. Whether a lot of these um projects because agriculture has a like 200, maybe even more than 250 million on the books on the table somewhere. How they have spent it, I don't understand, but there is significant money in agriculture and we need to push that sector to a higher level to produce for food security, improve our balance of payment, our balance of trade, all those kind of factors. But are those debts, if they are debt, then agriculture is getting money from the people because at the end of the day, we got to pay that money back. If it's just grants, are we using those grants effectively to make a difference for our people? And from what I'm seeing, based on some discussions with some of the people, the higher ups in agriculture, they do have a vision to really push the agricultural needle. They want to build capacity. They want to understand our own topology in terms of our earth, our soil, where we can plant what, how we can expand it, how we can attract business from out there. So you got to give them some time to operate. Um, the budget is reasonable. It's not aggressive. Again, it's not bold. But Hopefully next year we'll see something different. We'll see a progression. And people talk about, you know, three year the media term uh, uh, framework. Look, expenditure framework. At the end of the day, most times, except they're going to do copy and paste, the next, the current 2025 and 2026 projections should change dramatically over the next year. They will, should not be the same. Look at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. If they do what they want to do, if they actually put business developers, as ambassadors out there that can attract investment. Liberia is federal. Look, right now, something like cassava. Cassava can bring nearly 200 million economy if we are serious. Cassava, right now, all the baby food they're making, they want it to be gluten-free, OK? So if we start to expand our cassava sector, we got a significant amount. If we can even improve how we produce there right now, you know, so I, you got where I'm going. I, I know where you're going, and you know everybody busy, but uh, you know that's why Duardo can enjoy his time. He come early, say his piece. He alone run the show for thirty minutes. But you make him a <laughs> good. You, you make your yeah. Duardo will come early and run the I show for thirty this, minutes. Duardo, I think yeah. I will try and follow your example. I'll try to be more earlier. <laughs> uh, before we go to the phone line, let me do this real quick. Shout out to Lone Star. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, I'm yeah, we're coming to you, Andrew, Mama. We're coming to you, Mama. Shout out to Lone Star. I think the game is still on, but there you have it, though. Uh, Lone Star is leading. We pray that Lone Star win. Uh, I'm hearing folks saying that Lone Star was rescued. I'm hearing folks saying Lone Star was rescued. Very Lone much Star so. Lone Star was rescued from, yeah. from, from a bad governance. Yeah, you don't Lone want Star nobody to But, I, you know, and I'm not going to put this on my big brother, Zoka Wilson. But he tried. He just didn't oh, make Isaac, it. Oh, Isaac, you know, Blama too. He, he he tried, but he didn't make it. <laughs> Who the you know, Isaac Blama? <laughs> oh, the, uh, Isaac. That's not his name. His name is Isaac Dude. Oh, uh, Isaac uh, Dude. I'm sorry, Isaac Dude. Oh, Do you Fatima. want to call him Blama Dude? No, no, no. Isaac, Isaac Dude. Do. Fatima, Fatima, stop, please. Fatima, right. I can't so, I can't so let me put this out. This is a shout out to the Liberian team. Uh, you know, uh, our sister JJ. Genos, yeah. uh, Scott is there, and, you know, they're doing extremely well. And they won, they won something, and, you know, shout out to them. The uh, Benny, Benny is not here. She was going to talk more about this. Uh, this is the female, and, you know, they won something too. Like they silver won medal. On second place. That's very Stand yeah. on. Yes. Stand on. Right now, right now in the Republic of Liberia, we know these people are winning. And they are going to come back to Liberia for ceremony. Those that are in Liberia that should be preparing for these people should start to prepare for them before they get back into the country. They shouldn't get back in the country. They didn't get bus to come from the airport to Morovia. They shouldn't get. For, they shouldn't come back to the country. They don't have places to sit down. Okay, Please so let me send out a shout out first now. Let me send a shout out for then. Then, then we we'll do that one. I beg you, <laughs> you got in trouble. Oh, uh, four, four by one hundred reader team. Look at them. Uh, uh, a beautiful picture, and, you know, just look at the name, Evelyn Morrison, uh, Destiny Smith, uh, Barnett, I think that's the name, Chanel Collins, uh, again, 
I don't know where is Glennie. She know this better than I do. Uh, Mia McCord, Emmanuel Matadi, Joseph Fambulay, uh, Jabez Reeves, and it's John Shema. Uh, well, anybody know uh, Glennie's son name here? Yeah? Jabez Reeves. Jabez. Jabez? Yeah, yeah Reeves. All right, Reeves. Jabez Reeves. All right. So shout out to Jabez and, and all these, right? Yeah, shout out to Jabez. And, and, and just understand, as you can see, they want something today. I think he's the second from the right, right, Ava? Yes, yes. Yeah, Can you stop calling me before I black here? Thank you, man. I'm going to show you doing this. The first person, right. Famule, uh, Joseph Famule, then Jabez, then John Sherman. I don't know him personally, but he's an up-and-coming star. And then uh, Matari, we have seen we have seen Matari and uh, Famule. They're the veterans on the team. They are. <laughs> Uh, whosoever your name is, Chas, I'm going to show you interrupting my calling me. Uh, if you continue to call me, I will black you to after the show. All right. So again, we just want to we just want to say I made a beautiful picture. We 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 just got to take as if I dog to chicken soup factory. Uh, it will never back in the manner in which it's back in now. Just like uh, a dog. Just like a dog. <laughs> okay, I, had to, I had to leave right because the dog didn't. But thank God where I am is good. Uh, so here we are, folks. A beautiful, beautiful day for Liberia. Lone Star winning. And, you mm -hmm. know, track and field with winning. And yeah. say what? The, the folks have been rescued. The stress. No, our, country, our country. Our no, country. Our no, country is on the rescue path. Our country, Liberia. Say anything you want to say. And I can beat on United Party government because I got all right to do so. But our country is on the rescue path. Yes. It, you, you, know, you know what's what amazing about this, Stanton? This is the first uh, Lone Star outing under Joseph Boykai, mm -hmm. and they're already coming they're back. Winning. And they're all winning. All winning. That, that's, that's a fact. 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 a fact. a or don't listen to them. This budget is one of the most prudent bu budget we have had in six years. This budget shows to Liberian people that Joseph Parker came to do the right thing. Can you imagine Liberian people? The president John we had 20 million on the Ministry of State. Joseph Parker cut it down to 9 million. We saving what 11 million. Then the president office 4.4 million. My people, market women, Yana boy, you listen to Eddie Jamamo. We call it down to what the president Joseph Baga. He called it down to 2.2 million. You'll see here, you'll see the difference. Then you come to the VP from 4 million, we carry down to 2 million. Also, representative, they were carrying how much. 67 million market women you listen to me 67 million why you're suffering you can buy your market you're suffering no school fee no nothing for four million vice president of it we carry to what two million so what you can you tell us nothing the host of from 67 million to 38 million that 38 million we're getting now for 67 million we're going to president protein Abache, he will carry four million. We cut that thing down to 1.2 million now. My own daughter out there, she agreed. Because you know what? You only want to see the better men or the market women, the Ghana boss, the Weaver boss. She said, Chief, anything you're calling to her, give to me, I will take it. Speak up. For 2.7 million, they call it down to 1.6. I visited the speaker today. I talked to him, Fanati Kofa. He said, look, Madam Wolo I said, I came to congratulate you. And I'm following your work. Even though I was one of the hardest critics of you. But I've been following your work and you're doing great. He said, they come and put you down and accept it. That's what the president want. I will work with him. I swear to God, I met him today. That's what he told me. So that's what they call leadership. You come down to, okay. Then they talk about growth. If you say you had a growth of four 
point eight. Somebody, yeah, somebody yeah. playing with. I'm sorry. Somebody playing with ink pen, the flipping pen. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Something like that. If you're saying you had a or or increment or growth of four point eight million, what if you want to feel the impact of that? Amen. Back it with me. You all know how you all suffer. The school children, everybody suffering in the country. If we felt that impact today, today that government is going to be in place, and then some of my people, but because the four point eight million increment, it only was increased in the different budgets. They increase their budgets. They increase their budget. There was no way, no way to turn. Then you come, Liberian people, you are listening to so you know, Baka is here to change your lives. You can see it. Oh, well, the food that we eat, that, that, the which is the rice, is given to foreigners. The cartel is given to them 250 million every year to import rice into the country. Liberian businesses, we can pass. No matter how you try, they were trying. No way. They said they can't get rid of Liberians. Only. But I'm looking up to my son. I mean, Modan. I'm watching him. That's my nephew. I want to see. I'm watching him. I know you're a good leader. I'm watching to see how much, like, how many Liberians we bring into uh, importing our stable food until our culture can pick up. Thank and you. The message, the message, the last one. The whole thing that went on my people, Yana boys, school children, everybody around Liberia. The whole thing and the message is President Boka is clear on what reducing corruption. This is why the whole thing now got to see this. They went to the chat room for all kinds of things. President of the 10 million to reduce it. Then why you gotta tell us? Why you gotta tell us? Everything and the papa reduce it, my people. He reduces. The message is, I will cut down. I will reduce corruption because I know it can never finish. But I will reduce it, and the Liberian people come first. Then the last one, I want to admonish, admonish our government. We on the right track. Let's not listen to the noise in the market because whatever we're doing, we're doing it for our people, for the common people. So. Whatever money we're giving the government officials or we're giving people to implement projects, all the loans are coming in, all the grants are coming in. We must set up a team of monetary and evaluation team that will check all the projects, the road projects, the other projects, got to check all whether they like it or not. That's the only way we're going to, we're going to know exactly how we spend our money. That team has to set, be set up monetary and evaluation team that means we'll have some group there my people who will be checking all the people yeah all your small small taxes that will pay when they say they're going to face row are they going to going to Thank you, Andrew, Mama. It's correct so joseph parker is here to change the lives of the poor people of every liberian thank you very much thank you Anjuma. Anjuma, who you got in studio is that one there no nope. uh magic magic uh, can you call them on a nursing? Uh, please, uh, we have to go to the phone line. Uh, if you can get us to the phone line, that would be fine. But can you also start playing with your in pen? Hey, having a uh, sound guy on the show. I know he's sleeping. You can wake him up. <laughs> That's a good plan. Do, 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 do your closing on this. We got to go to the phone line, sir. Yes, yeah, so sir. You know, when you. When you when you're sick, you go and get a prescription. But a prescription is only as good as your desire and your action. You take it, you buy the medication, then you take the medication, then you get well. The budget is a prescription. So now that we have the prescription, we need to take action. One of the things I will encourage this government to do is to make salary and rearage a thing of the past. If this government can run this country for six years and don't all public servants pay them on time because government is the greatest guarantor in society and that obligation to pay people their salary is one we must hold sacrosanct you pay people on time the most significant economic activity in any country is when people get money because when you get money you do two things you spend it or you save it if you spend it, it returns into the economy for circulation. It creates economic activity. You create jobs. Money creates money. 
what you save it, it go for investment purposes. It have that multiplier effect. So pay public servants on time. That's why this good initial sign will get better when this government exercises discipline and don't take people salary money for trips and other things. I'm very hopeful that this president will stick with it because if we get down that road where we're disciplined and we're paying public servants on time and we're staying within the confines of just what we prescribe and don't go overboard in any area, we'll be on a healthy path to economic recovery. And yes, rescue might just be possible, especially from an economic standpoint. So while we go to the phone line, Dr. Gopla, we're asking the question, uh, and I can, you think within 100 days, those promises that were made, we will see, we will see those promises bearing, bearing some fruits within the first 100 days? All right, there. We ain't really heard this yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, we almost 60 days. I mean, look at what we're saying. I'm more, uh, maybe I'll ask you, are you more optimistic now? Listen, um, the budget uh, is a hopeful sign. Again, we got to start. Work. Let's move into the first quarter of this government. After the first quarter, we'll begin to gain. We have something now to work with, and we'll begin to look at what's trending, and we can make adjustments, correction, or we can say, great, let's stay right here. So I think it's a great question, Stan, but I think it will be better if we answer that question after at least the first quarter of this new government's performance. And that will be when? Well, of of is, is three months. So end if we March. inaugurate our government in January, that's February, March, April. So at the end of April, we'll see- That's, that's the 100 days period. That's the 100 days period. <laughs> yes, then, no, guys. But, okay, we're gonna go to the phone line, folks. If you have questions, ask a question, you wanna make a statement, you got 30 seconds, please. We'll open the line. Uh, do we have anyone there, Andrew Mama? No? Magic. Magic, can you go to the phone line and we can hear you so you can just pick up the call? Well, if you guys have anyone on your line want to bring in, that will be fine. Let me take this first call. All uh, right, good evening. Your name and where you calling from? Okay, good evening, sir. I'm King Jimmy Kofa calling from Baltimore, Maryland. Talk to us, Mr. Kofa. Okay. Uh I find the, the discussion on the budget, but uh, it's so wicked, you know, for a man to make two hundred thousand dollars monthly, while somebody making hundred, I mean, hundred fifty dollars, hundred twenty-five dollars monthly. Secondly, the counties, the counties. Now, who making two hundred thousand monthly, sir? Oh, it's somebody making, I mean, two million every, every, I mean, annually. Then, uh, then, then they're like calculated. It's somebody making two million annually. Who the, who, which office making two million annually, sir? Oh, 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 what, what you guys talk about uh, uh, the, the office of the, of the artist speaker? So I'm, I'm it's, a budget, it's not a salary. Okay, that's budget for the office. It's not one person's salary, Mr. Oh, Cooper. not one person. Oh, okay, okay. Any, anyway, I thank you so much. I just got, I just came in from from, from Jack and I listened to you guys. Okay. But uh, listen, listen uh, excuse me, sir, quickly before I drop the line. They also, they should also think about the counties. You know, give one hundred fifty thousand dollars to the county. I mean, what development would, would they do? I mean, for, uh, within the county, a very small, a very small, the hundred fifty thousand dollars. At least the fifteen counties would say one million dollars for each county, fifteen million dollars. Probably it would be all right. So let them let them think Thank about you. it. That's, that's what I'm thinking about it. Thank you, Mr. Kofa. Thank you. Yes, your name and where you calling from? Hello. Hello, ma'am. Your name and where you calling from? That me, that Rebecca. My Rebecca, talk to us. <laughs> you ready now? Yes, you you live. You on the show. You want to talk okay. to this issue? Yeah, I want to just speak my simple English to my family and, and, and the whole country. You can hear me now? Yes, my Rebecca. Yes, we are. Let me tell you, I'm so excited. I just want to tell all the like grand people. The old man is on the red uh, trajectory. Yeah, the old man is doing the right thing. Everybody can get washed and hear and see how people, even the, the, the budget that came down is priceless for the people. Because even when they were in America here, some of them in America, we're not even making that kind of money that they were making. 
So when the old man reduce the, the, the pain for everybody, that will help our people to get food and jobs. Thank you. So that's why I want to tell you, my, my son Stratton, I'm so excited. Thank you, my Rebecca. With the budget that they get reduced. So that when you go in there to go work for the, 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 the government, you want to work in the government, you go in there for, for legacy. You're not going there for uh, to go improve yourself or whatever overnight. Thank you, my Rebecca. If you cannot take that press, then you go. If you cannot take that salary, then you get out, out of our way. Thank you, my Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy. Thank you. Hello, your name and where you calling from? Yeah, good. Good afternoon, good evening, and good, good afternoon, evening. good evening to the people of Liberia. My name is Chengse Wulake Singh, and I called from Minneapolis, Singapore, Minnesota, USA. I I want to take the time to say congratulations to uh, His Excellency uh, Ambassador Buakai, and also to the Foreign Minister. Let me say the entire government for their first statement uh, performing in in, in in the rescue mission. So want us to thank you, and that all our gave this government the chance to the first quarter, and I will see, and we believe that this rescue team is going to make our country so. And bravo to the Liberia Law Start team also. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. All right, let me take another one. Hello, your name, and where you calling from? Yeah, I'm calling from New Jersey. My name is Abraham the Uber. Yes, sir. Talk to us. Yeah. Um. For the budget, I just want to say thank you to the president. I know that uh, as he do, then they're going to fight. They're going to do what all they can because they want to see to it that this president fail. But I know that this president that I know of, he will never fail. And one thing again, I want to say, starting from next year, I'm asking the president, if you minister, if you minister, if you want to work in the government, let them, let them uh, use their pay to buy a car for themselves. Let them use their pay to buy a car for themselves. And then the budget will go it will go up more. So I'm asking the president to see into, into that uh, Thank uh, you. direction too. Thank Th you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, your name and where you calling from? We'll come to you, George Lobo, after this. Your name and where you calling from? Hi, my name is William Jala, and I'm calling from Pennsylvania. Talk to us, Mr. Jala. Um... The, the budget, the current budget that you guys are discussing, uh, is 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 a reflection of austerity measures that most government uh, will adopt when most gov most countries that are going through are uh, faced with economic difficulties. Uh, those are some of the measures that countries that are really serious about improving their economy economy we 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 adapt to, you know. Uh, uh, stabilize their economy. So I think the budget, the current budget, is a reflection of that. So uh, I will urge the veterans to, you know, exercise some restraint or uh, some patience and and see, you know, how um, things will work out going forward instead of, you know, being jittery right now about what the current budget is. Thank you. Uh, my next thing, my next, Thank my you. next concern, my next concern is has to do with. Um, you know, uh, I'm troubled by the fact that Stanton, you continue to allow people like uh, the likes of uh, Sam Jackson and uh, how you call him, Isaac, Isaac Doe, uh, coming on your show, appearing on your show and just spewing a bunch of lies all the time in the name of playing politics. I mean, they need to be serious about, you know, uh, presenting the Thank you. Thank you, Mr. People, Thank you, Mr. Jala. Forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Let's take your call, Josh Lobo. You are muted, Josh Lobo. You are muted. Uh, CEO, our record man, they see these people, they damage our country, they should give our government change. Why we fight for? They are there and see the only show defend. Why they get to defend? They make our people tell you, they are in their own country every day, they beg you. We need to rescue our people. They start a plan. People see me. Why are they there defending? I'm so, I'm so, I'm, I'm so disappointed when I see them on the show. If I were to see you again, no CDC people will be on our show. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Josh Lobo, brother. Go ahead, Prince Maxwell. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, come Come Um. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Thomas Gunning. I'm a um, public finance professional, a professional by 
uh, training in practice. I want to make a quick point on the outlook of the budget, not necessarily the different allocations in the budget. But my point is where we are as we think, I think the budget reflects our capacity in terms of generating domestic revenue. And I think the basic question that people need to reflect on when they compare this budget with the previous two year budget is we need to answer the question what led to the increase of the budget from around 500 million in 2021 2022 to close to 800 million in 2023. And the reasoning behind this is because one of the, spe the special drawing rights resources that we got from the IMF as a result of COVID. And it wasn't only Liberia, it was all members of the IMF that had the authority to be able to get resources through the special drawing rights. What we got from the special drawing rights was around 247.7 ESDR, equivalent in US dollars was around $302 million, which we got in 2021. We also need to reflect that we enter an IMF program in 2019 that gave us around $213 million that was disbursed until December of last year. So much of the increase in our domestic or in our national budget over the past so two years. Please, Lasha, sorry to interrupt the gentleman. Bring him on the show tomorrow. Let's have a great show. We'll give him the time. Thomas, I know got, I'll bring him the show tomorrow. Yeah? Yeah, we, we can give him the time once he's available. Mr. Dwaru? OK, go ahead, Carlo. If you see everything the monitor, I'll have to shut you up. Go ahead, you're live, Carlo. I'm very happy tonight to call on the Spoon Show, first of a kind. I'm calling from Kagada City, Maguire County. I do realize that my vote was not in vain. I am G. Prince Jacob. I do realize my vote was not in vain. I was voting a leader who would bring back a brain hospital under the George Weah administration. The only government referral hospital in Kagada and Maguire County that gave help to three counties. Lower Grand Basso, Bong, and Lower Babalu. Today was brain to Aches on the we are administration. We are pleased that this government is coming back to rescue this kind of a situation. The reason this guy increased the budget during the time, it was because they needed to build the administrative focus clone. They wanted to build Jamaican resource. They wanted to build duplexes for themselves, to enrich themselves. For Baka using a call your coca. And I, the uh, olden days, I know they are using, we brought an all called lubricants. This is why we are called loop experience. Experience the grand unite for Boaca election. We brought an all called lubricant to rewind the engine, the race car that was parked in the garage to get Thank back. you. Thank and you we so much. That it in the so we say thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> The race guy on the track, stand on. <laughs> yeah, thank you, folks. So let's wrap this thing up. I, I want to raise this issue. Uh, Gregory Coleman, the IG, uh, put up some announcement today, which is very interesting. And I think I'm waiting for the document to flag it. Liberians got to pay attention. The announcement that was put up today, we'll go back to the phone line, folks. Please bear with us. I can only read it because it's not the official announcement. Uh, and it said, uh, folks, can you give us a few minutes? We'll go back to the phone line. Uh, ahead of general enforcement, Liberia National Police Council driving public. There's a lot of good things in this. I, I want us to share this today. The Liberia National Police Council is the driving and general public of the following measures for the safety of all persons across the country, all persons, all on authorized vehicle with high beam lights, sirens, flashers, and other emergency devices are asked to be removed. I mean, I want, I want, I want an official release, and I will get it in a few seconds. I want to just, we have to announce this. If you think that you get Christmas left on your car, you are not allowed to have it on your car. Please remove it. They will pull you over. You will have to go to the police station. You have to pay fine. This is not a game. Gregory Coleman is saying to everybody. Or on authorized vehicle with high beam lights. That thing you see, Peter Paul, Johnny Brown, everybody win, 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 win. It's it's bad. You're not authorized. 
I mean, lawlessness, Clinton. It is bad. They're chilling it for the We Bar Association gets serene. Everybody, the We Bar gets serene. Everybody gets serene. All right, and now this is the one that confused me, and I really want you guys to help me on it. All right hand drive vehicle. I know, okay, I'll read it as it is. Um, all right hand drive vehicle owners are asked to take them off the street. What's that? The cars from Australia, South Africa, Kenya. Do the cars from Africa? London. Yes, the cars from oh, London. Oh, okay. But here's the beauty though. This is it, right? They are saying as such vehicles are not allowed to be driven in Liberia. I didn't know that. Yeah. But Senator, there's a problem there. Let me let me say this if you allow me. Why are they allowing them in the country to begin with to the poor? They're collecting taxes on them. So they got to revisit that. Don't allow them in the country. Or good, good, good cash. Yeah. Good cash. That argument is flawed. Period. That Period. argument is flawed, Dwali. You brought your car in. The government was to collect their money. That's not our choice. You should have. No, 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 no. You can't say that. No, no one at a time, guys. Guys, 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 one at a time. Dwali, let's give Lobo the chance. Why you say it's flawed, Lobo? Because, Stanton, once the container arrives at the port, that container is calculated as part of government's revenue. If they arrive, they clear the port, we will tax you for it. Now, whether it can be driven there or not, that's up to you. That's not the government decision. You should have known it before you brought it in the country. So let me ask you a question, Dwalu. You're the container. That's it. Dwalu, do, do, do they expect, do they inspect what is in the container? Do they inspect what is in the container? Yes, they do. I answer the question, but let me say yes. this. Now, what is Dwalu the answer? Not you, because Dwalu yeah. says. Well, let me answer that. Yes, yes, the government, <laughs> look, government exists to regulate the population. The government sort of set the measure of which cars are allowed in the country before they are brought in. So if the government says left hand car are not allowed into the country, when I bring it the government, I don't have to destroy that car, return that car, or you lose that car. That car should not be taking nothing on. It should be entirely destroyed. What we do is the government will accept the car, take the money, and the person will kill the car home and drive it on the road. Now the government responsibility for that. Don't allow the car into the country. <laughs> But Dwalu, you went blank, oh, because you said it's up to the people. Now we ask you, you went blank. Let me bring in uh, uh, that uh, Bobla is in Liberia. Uh, I don't think any of us in Liberia right now, but that uh, Bobla. Dwalu, you ran away, you left the country. So let me bring that uh, Bobla. Auntie Jumama is there as well. Don't do that. Auntie Jumama is there, yes. My own auntie is there. Thank you. That uh, Bobla, do you enter Auntie Jumama, man? The argument they are, they are making, you think actually you can stop the cars at the port and said don't even get out because it's not allowed in the country look we we don't we don't produce cars here we import them and to import a vehicle it has to be inspected okay and approved before it gets here so if you don't want right and a steering wheel in the country then don't let it in if you let it in that means the people have a right to drive and by the way we're not the only country where left and right hand drive together. You know, you can you can drive your right hand, your left hand vehicle. Of course, I think the IG has a, a, a reason for that, but you can't just arbitrarily say it's not allowed here. You can't do that. The people imported that stuff legally, then they have a right to drive it. So I think we need to we need to hear from uh, Greg. We need to hear from him. Maybe he got, as he said, that the popular he got his own explanation. Let me just. Read this. All non-gas station gasoline sellers can boss. This is going to you. This is from Gregor Coleman. This is from the Labour National Police. All non-gas station gasoline sellers can boss along the main street within Monrovia and across the country are asked to be removed. This one will be high. That one will not hold. So, I so, agree with you, bro. We will hold this time around. Okay. So, oh, yeah. so Stat Stanton. Yes, sir. If I could. So <clears throat> I think I think the IG means well, but I have a real problem with the approach. I think it's what we do often here. We see the problem, we come with this surge of determination to solve it. You can't just tell people what. You gotta tell them why. Remember, those people who are on the street on the side of the road, what are they doing? They're self-employed, they're creating opportunities for themselves to try to feed their families. So you gotta have solutions beyond just move from here. You just tell them move from here. Say, yes, what we do. You go over there, you go over there, you go over here, or go work for a gas station. 
Dude just said move from yeah, they're selling. You know what I mean? They're doing something legal. You got to you got to show them. The alternative, you can't be here, but you can go over there, go behind it, go down the road in the corner. But here's what I really want um, um, uh, Greg Coleman to speak to. I want him to speak to this this uh, exacerbated culture of um, uh, um, uh, escort service. I see our police being reduced to our national escort service. I live in Gaia Town, and I drive on that main thoroughfare every day. I've seen two young Liberians get killed at the Boystown Junction. One stabbed the other with a broken bottle. The, 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 the people ran behind the one who stabbed the other, and they killed him right there. They killed two young people right there. It was over 30 minutes, not one police officer. I saw two young people throwing stones in Mama's town, and the people standing around until one hit the other in the head, bust his head, and then they put in a keke. Not one police officer. But all day we see the national police escorting people, cars that don't even have license plate. The AG need to speak to that because that's a non-productive culture that we're permeating right here. Public safety is national security. So please let our police get back into community policing. Put them in the county. And those who feel like they must have an escort, let them buy their own car and pay for their own escort. Don't use my tax dollars for every time they can hire Sue, Lou, and Mapu to be every minute of the day, you know. Uh, we, 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 have, we again, Dr. Bobla, you raised a good point. Uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to speak to Gregory, uh, see how Gregory can come on the show and talk to us. Uh, go, ahead, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead, let me take this call. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll say you got something to say. All we got to say. So go ahead, say it. Then. I got something to say. Yeah, I want to say so, something. The first thing I'm upset that they brought a problem man on the show here. Yeah? I don't like them, man. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me let me stop, y'all. This is my. <laughs> this Thank is you, my brother. Time. The show was hard when I. Came I love you anyway. We <laughs> were talking crazy stuff, so I just. I get rude and I didn't greet my brother yet, but look, this is a wonderful gentleman. I'm happy he's on the show. He's a patriot who really believes in um, developing leadership, developing young people, and doing the right thing. So it's a wonderful thing for um, Stanton to have you on the show today. Rudolph, welcome to the show. And we need more of this with different professionals to just show that brain look. There are wide diversity of competent, qualified, intelligent, good talking Liberians, good hearted Liberians. But because we have made this space so vitriolic, so like, like you just got anger against somebody for no reason. So the many of these Liberians who have elevated themselves, achieved stuff, they hesitate to engage. So generally, if people could just be like friendlier, nicer, receptive, whether that constructive criticism or sometimes they be perceived as negative from people who have been there, done that, it will make all of us better. But people are on a short fuse and they're quick to erupt and get vexed and insult for no reason. So this platform has the opportunity to change mindsets and we should try to do that. So Doc, welcome to the show. Say to your mama. Yeah. Can I just say yeah. one yeah. word? Okay, Can I just mama, I will let you talk. Oh. Uh, uh, Honorable uh, Dr. Brooklyn, I just uh, was told that you went to Rick's Institute. Oh, look I at did. it. I, I graduated from Rick's. Uh, the family reunion. Well, that was actually my album. I'm a dragon girl. Just <laughs> Normally, do the went there just to add to that. <laughs> Normally, yeah, went there. Too. I'm just talking about like the platform selection. You could tell eloquence when you hear one. But anyway, that's just another day, another story for another day. But yeah, I was just hinting in my inbox like, he's a dragon. Don't you know that? That's why he's giving all these shots, firing shots, and getting shots back. But anyway. <laughs> Just to make that known. But I, I also wanted to say this, you know, Liberia, this is one thing, you know, when we're talking, um, people think that we're here because we just want to talk. Liberia is the common denominator and a, you know, common factor in all of us. We love this country dearly and we want to see her thrive. We want to ensure that Liberia gets to where she needs to go. And in order to do that, it, take a, it takes a collective effort. And so all of us, 
Uh, uh, I just wanted to say congratulations on your preferment. I was super excited because you know, you know, um, uh, how you ran with this thing, how you put your heart and soul into it. I think it's well deserved. Uh, and I wanted to say, you know, we come here to celebrate Liberia, every little triumph. That's what we want. I'm with my brother Duardo, who is talking about the private sector, also embrace it, make sure that we pump money into a liberalization, making sure that our people are working. Our kids, how can you live in Liberia and see a Lebanese man thrive? You can never go to Lebanon and see a Liberian man thriving better than the, 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 the Lebanese man. It will not happen. In most countries, the, the, we the town owner, town owner should open doors so people should give you seat. So I'm just saying that's something that we take great, great pride in. And we are prideful people. We want our country to be better. We want to go back home. We want to contribute to our country. And how can we do that? With good governance. We can only do that with good governance. We can only do that when we are giving opportunities. And it should be, it should be our say. It should be our say. Yes, we want to be able to do things for our country. So I, 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 I'm super excited as to the trend of, of what's going on in Liberia. It's a new day. We have a president who is willing to listen, who's willing to have an open mind, and we will hold him accountable. He said it, accountability. And so we will hold him accountable. And so we just need to be a little bit more patient. We inherited a very, very, very structurally damaged country. I don't care how the other side will want you to have it. This is not McDonald's or Burger King. You can't have it your way. The fact is that this country is damaged from the ground up, and we're going to work hard to, uh, to ensure that we get her back on track. So it's a session. I'm on time to come in and talk. But I want to say this. I got a problem with Rick's Institute. They're doing my village wrong. My village got a beat for the people from Risk. With you and y'all another day. Sergio, I'm go ahead. So before Sergio, I'm go ahead. Let me just read. I would, I would just get so, the you don't want me to talk. You don't want me to talk today, eh? You don't want me to talk today. You don't want me to talk. I haven't talked. I've been for like five minutes. I'm talking. Same after Auntie Mama, you would talk. But let me finish with this announcement from the Liberal National Police. Dr. Bopla, they heard what you said when you talk about how can the car come in, pay taxes, and you want to tell the people, say, get it up. But Dr. Bopla, you know we had a government CDC. They, they they never cared less. Prior to CDC, it wasn't happening. CDC allowed the car to leave the port, and that's the problem we are in. So therefore, this is they, they heard you. You they heard you and they called me. And so this is the message to you: they are not working with LRA and the free port that are, anybody importing a car, right hand car. Would that be allowed to leave the port? Thank you. But the one that outside already now, the solution is please, you gotta take it off because it's not the law, it's not the traffic law. CDC brought against the resident, and you know that, and they say, you know what, take the taxes, take the money, let the people drive the car. Because they were law, they are not law abiding citizens. So once you when you said that, Dr. Bopler, they called me and they want me to say this to everyone. They are now working with LRA. And the free port that if you bring a right hand car, it will not leave the port. Thank you. Okay. So I hope so, that. And, yeah, and, go and, ahead. That, and that's good, that's good clarification. But yes, yes, my challenge though. I'll challenge the IG and all the authorities to do more. First of all, tell us why right hand and left hand car can drive here. The right hand and left hand car driving in America, the right and left hand car driving in Kenya. The right and left hand car driving in the uh, the Virgin Island. So why they can't drive here? But look at the bigger challenges we have here. We have cars that ride the street with no license plate, okay, at all. Now we those are all here before the war. We never saw that. We see that now. For those who think it's nothing, it's a huge thing because it adversely affects the economy. Let me tell you how. If an investor come to a country Thank where you. cars are plying the street without license plate. Okay, it presents a gangster at a, a, a atmosphere like, oh, so these people you can hit somebody, you don't got no line play, keep going. For the person who invests here, you already start thinking this is a risky environment. And remember, no, sorry, again, sorry to interrupt you. The point I'm trying to make is there are bigger issues 
on the road to me, their right, left. So please, let's get that, to the big well, ones. Dr. Dr. Brooklyn, go to the small ones. Dr. Brooklyn, we didn't finish. They have five different bullet points, but we just stopped to three. All right, allow me to finish, and your question that and your concern will be addressed. Number four, disease from using the opposite lane or driving. This is tough. Now, yes, the final, yes, the yes, the final one, yes, the final one. They will have major inspection to what you are saying. Inspection, looking for registration, insurance, update the document for all vehicle, tricycle, keke, and motorcycle owners. Right. You are quite correct. They are looking for plates, everything. So with this new engagement, where you have people to strategic area, right? I think we will not 100% get there for now, but it will limit. Because if I know you at ERWS Junction, my car, there's no plate, I'm not coming to ERWS Junction. As high as it would be, I will find myself in the neighborhood. Of course, Gregory Coburn and Labrador National Police say, we will be after you. So on these things, number five, inspection, registration, insurance, update on their documents, plates for all vehicle, tricycle, which is keke, and motorcycle owners. I hope that answered your question. But I have invited when I saw this. Yeah, when I saw those things in Liberia, you can get them. I called I called uh, a Gregor Coleman, and uh, he will make himself available probably next week to go over these things. It's kind of hard, but it's security concerning though. Let me say this, you see so many horses burning. We don't know what's happening. And these guys, and they are not many, but they're working overnight. So all of your concern when you speak on Spoon, I'm so surprised that they just heard what you said, Dr. Brooklyn, and it came up with an answer. So I think they are listening, and uh, let's try to do the people's work and, and, and push the government to do that which is right. And I think the government is trying. Bravo to Gregory Coleman, to tell you the truth. I never met him. I don't know him, but I think he's doing a pretty good job. He's in a tight spot, but I think he will deliver if we continue to push them. Oh, the American right. for what? You just only that man? Who? Gregory. I don't, but I never met Gregory. That AB are always talking about. What are you talking about, oh. man? Are you okay? I thought the last time I met on the show, you said I uh, your brother and you know, tell you, uh, maybe I maybe I made a mistake. Huh? No, Gregor Kuma, I never met Gregor Kuma. Okay. Yeah, I, I I talked to him on the phone, but I uh, AB, that's my rare man. AB, that's my that's my boy. So uh so here we go. Uh let's drop this thing up. I uh, know you guys gotta leave studio. It's like uh maybe 12 o'clock. Hold on one minute. Almost midnight. Uh, can you Dado, can you take it? Let me take this call. Yeah, so I think it's Mr. Jackson. No, Oh, says your mama. Thank Mr. Jackson. I'm sorry. Okay. One minute. I'd like to comment on, on the police director. Look, Gregory Coleman is a trained police officer. And you know, when you want development, development comes with a little bit of pain. If we want to be like... I, I, your mama, I beg you, can I interrupt you? Uh, Again, sorry to do that. Uh, let, let's bring in Gregory Coleman. Uh, let's bring in the IG for the Labrador National Police. Can you can, can you can you turn you down your your radio or you listen to something? Can you turn it down, please? The volume. Hello. Yes, you are good now. Talk to us. Welcome to Spoon Talk. You are live, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, I've, I've, I've got a series of calls about what was being discussed. I haven't followed uh, very closely, but I'm availing myself to answer to whatever concerns there are regarding the uh, public safety measures that we're taking. Thank you very much. We, we really appreciate this crucial time for you to even come on. Thank you. We we'll just jump right to it. You put out a release. Uh, we've read it to the people. A lot, a lot of good things. Uh, and uh, folks have questions, so let's just go right to them, let them ask the question, and you can explain, please. Uh, Dr. Bopla, let's start with you. You have some serious issue and concern. Again, thank you, Sandra. Again, I appreciate the, the IG, and I think he's taking the right, the right steps. I would encourage him to make a, a collaborative effort and do more work on talking with stakeholders. Oftentimes, we see a need, and we rush to the enforcement part. 
But remember, we're dealing with people. So if people don't understand, if people don't know options, if people don't feel like uh, they have a, a, a way to comply, then it's just a back and forth, back and forth. For example, with registering your cars, in Ghana, I couldn't register my car. I mean, I couldn't drive my car or even take it out of the place. We're all registering it so we can do prevention instead of cure. Instead of putting our police who need to do community policing and help keep our community safer, checking cars every day. Let's make sure before your car comes from the port, you register it. You have your registration, then you bring your car from the port. And then that way you don't have to worry about this thing. But I commend the IG. I think he's on the right track. I think he needs to to have you know a consultative conversation with with stakeholders, with the public, and all those things. And over time, we will see the change um, that 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 we hope to see. Um, and one of my big ones is shifting our resources and putting our men and women in in the national police in the communities and not um, uh, 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 um, putting them in escort services. I think that's a disservice. To the to the population in these counties in our communities, we need more police presence. All right, uh, you got any question with the session on that comment? Because we're running. You have you have you were asking me some let questions. Me, let me. Go go ahead go ahead, RG. Let RG address his comment. Then we'll come to you guys. Go ahead, RG. Doctor Butler. Your your comment. Uh, we welcome your comment. Uh, we're still in office right now, trying to uh, finish up some some needed documentation for police support. So I have the entire team here in the office, senior leadership, middle management. We we're all uh, still working uh, tonight. And like most indigenous uh, societies around the world, we here at the Liberia National Police, we've developed uh, various mechanisms for peace, justice, and security and emphasizing the community participation, consensus building, and uh, 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 other approaches. And like you said, we, 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 are, we are very, very concerned about the people we serve, and we want their buy-in and support so that it makes enforcement simpler. However, when, when, we, when we have to take some immediate action, it's not because we're insensitive, it's because we're looking for, we, we are trying to deal with a situation that we're still trying to understand. It's uh, all of the private situation. We're just in the third month in the year, and we're almost at 80% of the total fires that we've had uh, last year. So it is concerning. So we're taking we're taking some immediate actions while we, we continue to investigate why all these fires are, 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 are popping up here and there. So the, uh, we, we, were, we were taking the, the consultative approach with the, 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 black, the gas seller, but I mean, there has to be an immediate intervention that limit access to that in, uh, a major igniting uh, 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 element, and that's why the uh, the action with the uh, with Jerry King seller uh, is, is coming up immediately. Like you said, there are other things that are more important. We are looking at this thing from the standpoint of the culture of safety. It's not just about enforcing to in specific areas. This country, the, the, the root cause of most of the issues is the lack of that, that, that culture of safety. So if you if you deal with one group, you're not addressing the problem. And that's why we're today, we're not singling out only motorcycles and pimping riders. We, 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 we're, we're, we're looking at it from, from the standpoint that uh, this is a liable issue. So we, 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 we are not insensitive to the plight of the people. We're incorporating all of the different thoughts and mechanisms around it. But uh, there has to be something that will, you have to take some immediate actions at a certain point in time. And this gasoline issue is one of those immediate actions that we just have to take while we investigate more as to why we're having all of these. So we're, not, we're not accusing anybody Correct. But, uh, until we get a full control on it and have full knowledge of why these things are popping up. We just want to take some preventive actions. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to Eduardo. Do you have a question, Eduardo? Let's do one. Yeah, you know, I, I, in, the I, I, I have a in the morning, these guys are yeah. out. I know. I have a quick question. I, I, and I know the IG is aware of it. Most of the major traffic breaker, lawbreakers are government officials in Liberia. Is the IG willing to truly arrest these people? Not just so in the middle of female. Mr. Aji, are you aware that the major lawbreakers in Liberia are representative senators, the ministers, they're getting the opposite lane? Are you willing to really arrest them, put handcuffs on them, and seize their vehicles and take them to the impound lot? 
So let's 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 look at let us look at it uh, based on what you said. If we look at it by the number, you will uh, the, that that is wrong. If you look at it by the number, but yes, we do have a lot of violation by government officials. But if you look at it by the numbers alone, that statement is hundred percent not correct. And anyone who violates the law, if you have a traffic offense, we do not have to put handcuffs on your hand. We will give you, we will take the appropriate traffic measures. Like today, I, I, I was in the traffic personally uh, uh, issuing tickets. I had one of my senior police officers who were violating, and he was pulled over. He was issued a ticket beyond the ticket. He was also issued a warning letter. So, I mean, we, we, we're, not, we're not stopping just at, at, at motorcyclists or taxi drivers. We're going, we're going all across. Once you violate the law, we don't have an option to choose between who we can enforce uh, uh, against or, 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 or not. We, we have a blanket enforcement. So even if you're riding a public vehicle and you violate it, we will give you, we'll give you a ticket. Eduardo, oh, you your question. Vehicle because we do not have a driving license. We will require it as well. And we've done it, we've, we've done it uh, over the last two weeks, at, at least almost every day. I think it's Lobo. Sorry, Lobo. Uh, uh, welcome, RG. So here's my question. Uh, having been in the traffic in Liberia, I noticed something. Every single minister, deputy minister, assistant minister, even controller, now ply the street with comfort. And like Dr. Brobler said, this is causing serious problem because once other people see a comfort, even behind the ambulance, everybody follows the comfort. What mechanism are going to be put in place so that it, it can be a deterrent, people can be held accountable? And please, Aji, we need to know the cars that should be given the right for their comfort, converting, because everybody now, that's why everybody get on the other side, because when they come in, it causes serious problem. What do you intend to do to deal with that issue of everybody in comfort? So it boils down to the issue of the culture of safety. If you, if you, if you just don't have the discipline of safety, whether you are a minister, you are a deputy minister or controller, you will just not follow safety regulations. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's been needed that you're complaining about. So, I mean, we, we are we are addressing it. We've written all the different agencies. I mean, those who are entitled to, to, to uh, uh, license siren are only uh, emergency vehicles, police vehicles, military police vehicles, ambulances, the EPS. So these things are being uh, 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 clearly spelled out to who, 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 who's allowed to use them. Every now and then we pull uh, some of the so-called convoys. Sometimes it's just one vehicle moving and joined by other uh, other people that just follow in. You see the long convoy where you think it's some government official uh, uh, convoy. But it's actually the one the person one vehicle being followed by everybody else. So the bottom line, the bottom line here is that culture of safety. If, 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 the, if, the, if the one person who has some government title starts to enforce, someone who has got no no government title will definitely follow. So it's not about their position or where, or where they sit. It's just about the culture of safety. Whether they're on a motorcycle, as a motorcycle rider, you have all of the vehicles in line going to work. The motorcycle, the motorcyclist believe that he must cross the yellow line, the solid yellow line, and ride in the opposing lane. People who are vehicle users as well, whether government officials or not, they decide to do exactly the same thing. So it's it's a it's a whole it's a whole of culture uh, 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 of community approach that we're taking in this uh, safety safety campaign. We're calling out uh, for help help uh, from other partners here to to uh, begin our messaging out there on just teaching people about safety. We 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 too uh, uh, as authority we've made our own mistakes. Because basically, the way how we've acted, we, we basically say it's okay that you can walk to the medical and dental council, pay two hundred and fifty dollars, and get a license to operate as a doctor. Because that's what we do with the road. You know, we don't even we don't even ask whether you can you can really see whether you know the signs of the road or whether you even driven a vehicle before. As soon as you pay the thirty five dollar, we give you a license, say you're authorized to use the road. So the, the, the problem the problem comes from from a lot of different sources. It's going to take time to address it, but, but over a period of time, we will continue to to, to, to to enforce, and it will get better. You're in a country where we, we all say the law excuses no man, but most of the people who are enforcing the law the, the law on they've never seen the law. As a matter of fact, those who can even read do not even know where to access the law. 
So it's it, it, there are multiple layers that we have to consider here, and it's not going to be an overnight thing. But gradually, the more we hurt people's pockets, the more we continue to educate them, the better it will become. So I know everybody wants to see it all resolved today, but we're saying that we are on it. It requires commitment from right. the public as well to, be able to deal with this issue. Correct, Abba. Real quick, Abba. So we talked a little bit this thing here, but I don't know where your contact is. But in some societies, the ratio is like 2.0 to 1,000. Um, How about you breaking up? Your internet breaking up, Ava. You can't hear me? No, you're skipping. You're skipping, Ava. Am I skipping? You better now. Try again. OK. What I was saying is, in some communities, some countries, you have 1.6 to 1,000 people. You have 2.4 to 1,000 people. Um, what metric are you going to use to try to facilitate community policing and be able to fully be fully staffed around the country? I know it is, it's challenging, but I think it's something that really needs to happen to protect people. Um, and the second point is, in terms of morale, you know, just the officers own morale and how people perceive them and respect them. I've seen people jack up police officers and fight them right in the street. Look, I mean, it's just disappointing that we don't respect these guys, but they also need to elevate their morale and those people who try to treat them, especially officials and other people be dealt with severely for us to be able to build that level of respect. So I look forward to your response. Thank you, Alpha. Adri? So, uh, thank you ever so much. I appreciate you. You're one of those who have reached out to, to us to offer help, and we wholeheartedly uh, uh, appreciate and welcome the uh, the help that you are giving to the Liberian National Police. I would like to use this time to say thank you, thank you, thank you. The police per person ratio in Liberia is alarming. When um, Unmill did the, the projection, it was the population was around uh, 3.5 uh, million, and we're looking at 8,000 police officers. Today, we're, we're way above that, and we have not even reached that benchmark. And because of the lack of resources, the deployment uh, it, it is extremely skewed. In, in some areas, the police per person ratio goes as high as one to 3,500 persons. And that is why we, we, are, we, we, we are now considering uh, to continue to, to push this community policing to a whole different level. We, 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 we are blending it with a, with a whole different concept. In 2017, we blended it with conflict sensitivity and do no harm, and the do no harm co concept. Now we're trying to add flexibility to it so that we can build very, very strong uh, uh, relationship with the community that can absorb because there will be errors, we will be at, at times we will, we, will, we will make mistakes, and we need a community to be there for us. We we are right now working on budget, looking for ways to have to get money for officers to, to, to do in service training, because there are officers who have never gone to the academy for the last fifteen years, no refresher courses. So these officers, we need to train them. So we we'll put it for the loss of muscle memory. You can expect more mistakes. Some of them will be honest mistakes, but I mean, the, the public will, most times will not even accept an honest mistake from somebody who should be trained to do what they're paid to do. Uh, so we, we, we're we looking at building strong synergies with the, with, with the local communities and gaining their trust and legitimacy. Thank that, you. That's, uh, that's our, our point, and we're, we're now moving this whole community policing thing from just being uh, an event or just a departmental thing to, or to a whole of department philosophy. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And that's a great point, RJ. Yeah. Let me go to Sam Jackson. Let, let everybody come in. He got to go out. Let, let everybody. I will come back to you if you have time, but I'm going to squeeze in everybody, please. Uncle Sam and Andrew Mama, then Fatima. Yeah, Gregory Coleman, congratulations. I don't have any question for you. I, uh, I'm i a strong supporter of public safety in Liberia, and I wish you well, and, uh, and you have a very uh, challenging job to do in a very uh, a culture that is not used to uh, 
effective law enforcement and rule of law. So I, I pray to God that you do well. God bless you. That's all I have to say to you. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Sam. I'm thank your mama. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Go ahead, Andrew. Mama. I, um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you for um, your new portfolio. And I just have two questions for you. <laughs> Make it uh, one, Andrew. Mama. We got to go now. Everybody asking one question. Not because he's your son. Not very he's your son. All of them. Let's say all four together. Two sharp questions. Okay. Okay. All put together. Do you have a place to send these sour, sour gas seller when you remove them off the street? And the motorcyclists, I have realized that they have taken all the boulevard. This morning, are trying to go in town. They took all the whole boulevard like. You are having a convo. I mean, the whole boulevard, it couldn't even stop. So I'm asking whether you're going to mark on the side of the road, like in Carisburg, where they have a place marked for them to ride. Are you going to do that, or are they going to continue to ride in the middle of the road like convo? Uh, so, Andrew, Mama, thank you. And uh, <clears throat> as far as a place to relocate, uh, our gas sellers, we will encourage them to try to come together, bring their resources together, and, and, and open 35 gas stations. Because it's not about where they sell, it's about how they sell. Because we're selling under unsafe conditions. If I move you from one location to another, it still doesn't change the fact that the safety protocol is still being breached. So I'm encouraging them to uh, take advantage of programs that are available for uh, 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 for traders at the Ministry of Commerce, the Star P program uh, that uh, uh, that's at the uh, Ministry of Commerce to to see how they can improve their businesses and be able to sell in safer conditions. So that's that's for for uh, the gas sellers. As far as the motorcyclists, I mean, issue, we, we, like I said earlier, we, we are being extremely sensitive about it because this is a livelihood issue. You got, uh, the, the problem we're facing in King George today is because these people's livelihood was altered with all a sustainable alternative. And that's why all of the different issues keep coming up. So if you're dealing with the motorcycles as well, you have to take into consideration that, I mean, it's not it's not 50,000 motorcycles a day. You almost got 100 plus thousand. Yep. The good thing is, like I said earlier, we got more than 100 plus thousand. Because like I said earlier, we, we're using consensus building models. We held multiple uh, 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 stakeholder meetings with them, and we finally reached a consensus. We gave them area, no goal areas. Uh, and hours of operations, conditions of operations, we went back and forth, and we all have come to an agreement. They are quite supportive. They have accepted what we've come to. So at least at, uh, within by Friday, an MOU will be signed between the motorcyclists, Keke riders, civil society, and the police, limiting our intervention. Because if we start to just enforce and run behind them, we will be committing all of police resources just to police them. But if we if, if if we get their buy in, it will be it, it will be less hectic, and we will be able to do it in in a more peaceful manner that nobody gets hurt. If if, if we start to enforce running behind you guys, mistake uh, mistake happens, someone get killed. The next thing, we will not look at the cause; we'll be looking at the effect that we're trying to enforce, and now we have an a, a yep. issue to, to deal. So, the, uh, if within the next few days, the, the, the areas of operations will be announced. But I think uh, I'm, I'm not, I can't speak to 800%, but I know from ELW Junction straight to Freeport will be no go zone for motorcyclists. They've agreed to it. They will have access to whole road. They will have access to the, to the SKD Boulevard area, feeder roads, and other areas. They will be able to connect from the whole road, pass all the way, come as far as the car wash. The group from Baboma will be able to use the entire back road all the way up to Jalatan. Keke will be allowed to cross from Jalatan into to go down into Buse Quarter to access the market on the other side. So there's been a lot of thought uh, put into it. Uh, Brush Street and Kirish will be no-go zones for them. 
uh, the rest of, of the of, of the town, you will have the uh, KK will have access to move around. But uh, I, I think they've all agreed, and we will see we we'll see uh, some improvement when we start the process. But the announcement will be put the, the, the announcement will be put out on Friday officially, and then the uh, MOU will be signed, and then we'll pick up from there. Wow! So Broad Street, Broad Street will be no go Zoom. Wow, that's interesting. Fatima asked the last question now. That's very interesting, though. Uh, good evening, IG. Um, my question to you is: I, 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 I'm a really, really strong supporter of, of women and girls. And over the last, I've seen two women beaten mercilessly, and while police officers stand and watch. I mean, commun I, 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 you know, I know that the police is very engaged with community. Community policing is something that is very, it, it works hand in hand. So um, my question to you now is, what will you do as our IG to improve the relationship between the community and the police with regards to the police standing by and watching citizens beating their own citizens to death and almost to death. Um, and the second thing, my, it's all in one question, but the second question is, I see that I just want the laws to be fair. When people leave the United, when people come to the United States with their driver's licenses, the police here pull you over, they will ask you, how long you been here for? How long you gonna be here? And you know, if you tell them you've been here for six, over six months, they'll be like, oh, you gotta get a ticket because you were supposed to only use your driver's license for 90 days. Uh, I think the same law should apply to Liberia if, People come from America and stay over time. They should get a. They should either get some kind of uh, documentation or, or or what what is going to be in place with regards to them driving in Liberia with foreign licenses. Those are my two questions, and I thank you very much for your service to Mama Liberia. Thank you very much, thank Fatima. You. Thank you. No officer should stand and watch any citizen being brutalized. That violates why government pays the, the officer. So Fatima, if you have any if you have any videos indicating officers being present while people are being brutalized, please share, please share, share them with us so that we can look into it. But uh, I will send it to you. Violence, yes, I will send it to you. Uh, everything to do with lack lack of trust in not just the police, but within the entire justice and rule of law sector. People believe that they are, they, they, they are not being served well within the sector, so they know that they know that if they, if they even go to court or they go to the police, it's, nothing's going to happen. So they start to take laws in, in their hands. It's going to take it's going to take time for people to, to uh, uh, understand that things and times have changed. And that's why we, we are investigating multiple videos that are uh, of more violence around the country, including that of the old lady yeah. who was alleged uh, a call of which we have, uh, uh, they, they've been calling those who went live, they, been, they, they took screenshots of people who were on the scene, and there's a man on offer for those who were involved in, in that, and other more related videos that have come up. So we, 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 are, we, we are on it. We will continue to update the the, the, uh, the public, but let me just uh, uh, throw light on uh, one or two other issues here that are of uh, concern. I know I did promise that we we'll, we'll give some updates as we progress. Uh, people have been concerned about these cold cases that we've been looking into. You know, when it comes to the issue of death, requires a lot of scientific investigation and expert testimony of people who, who, who were either uh, on the scene or have a uh, connection to the, the victim or or the crime itself. So we we have few persons coming out as it relates to, to murder cases, so we're investigating those. But we've been able to successfully conclude the uh, the case of the uh, the arms that were imported in, 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 into Liberia. We've gone to the bottom of it. Uh, we have uh, people charged, including the importer, who will be charged in absentia. We have police officers who will be charged in that particular, uh, uh, in, from that particular investigation. They are charged, not that they will be charged, they will be charged, they will be forwarded to court. They were interdicted to the professional standards and turned over to the PSD for criminal investigation. 
the good thing about it, it was we we it, this intervention was was extremely timely because even the the the, 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 the importer of the weapons had hired a lawyer to sue government for raiding his home. And when this guy home was raided, almost everything he owned was taken away from there and could not be accounted for. And there was eyewitness report indicating that police officers were involved. So those officers have been charged and they will be filed into court uh, if, 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 if they didn't go today. They will be out in court tomorrow. The, the investigation with the uh, with the LEC issue has been concluded. We've charged five persons, two with aggravated assault, and three with manslaughter. Out of the three, it includes one police officer uh, charged with manslaughter and two members from the LEC team uh, as well. And two extra members from the LEC team with uh, uh, aggregated. That's just uh, an update on some of the cases that I promised that I would have given some update about uh, that we've been working on. The rest of them, I think we, we're still at a point where we, we need more information. And then the, the, uh, the incident in, in uh, uh, P Mount in Kinjo. That investigation is in two folds. The uh, criminal investigation is one component and the officer involved shooting is another component the uh the officer involved shooting has been done by the uh, by the the uh, professionals as division they've concluded their investigation we we are not going to release the report right now i believe that because it's a police it's police involved and it's police investigation that, that it is subjected to further review by an international uh, by an international board uh, an independent party so we're, we're going to be forwarding the report within the next few days for the civilian complaint over oversight board uh, that, that is comprised of the Labrador Bar Association, the Federation of Labrador Youth, the Association of, of for Law Enforcement Professionals, the Independent Human Rights Commission, a member of the uh, Ministry of Justice, a member of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, and maybe one or two other uh, uh, representatives on that board that I may have left up. But I mean, I just wanted to be subjected to further review to get input of independent uh, people before we, we officially release it to the general public. I sympathize with the family. I've been in, 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 in the uh, community, I've been in connection with the uh, with, with member of uh, the families. We are, we are trying to restore peace and quiet there and uh, mourn along with the family as we have the moon. So, IG, thank you very much for even taking our calls, man. That's very, very great of you. We appreciate you. But let me just ask this one last question before you leave us. Let's go back to the the arms and ammunition. Uh, the gentleman in question, anyway, what I'm going to do, if you can, uh, I will invite you officially whenever you can uh, between now and next week. Uh, are you going back to the old government report? The gentleman from Texas, is that him you're talking about, his sister that was related to James Alisa Diva? All right, I'm trying to upload those documents, but I will not do it because we don't have time. But I have all the documents. Are you going back? Are those the people you're saying were arrested or only those that were living at the house? No, no, we, we, we've, uh, the, the police has done a firm investigation and is being able to tie this network down to uh, uh, all uh, at all levels. So those who, who it is not just those who are in the house, there, there are more people who are being charged in connection with this. This was not a one-time deal. This was an ongoing importation uh, 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 and sale of, of, of arms. So uh, this net, uh, at least finally, we're, we're dismantling the network and we're I, I, and, I, and we understand. I'm sorry, I did to interrupt you. I'm so sorry. Can we say that any member of the past government official were included in this operation? Are they under some indictment right now? Well, we have we, 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 we did not connect any officials of, of government, but uh, we, 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 we have employees of government that are a charge in this particular uh, uh, investigation and they're not charged because they were uh, importers the charge were charged because these were people who tend to do a particular piece of job on behalf of government 
working with the Labrador National Police that went and unethically uh, carried out actions that, that uh, today we are suffering from because when it comes to the issue of lack of trust and legitimacy in police, these are the things that spoke to where we find ourselves today. These are our friends. These are people who we've, we've operated with for years and years. So it's not like they're members of past government that's been targeted. These are people who have, have served within police for many, many years. But I mean, I don't have a choice as to who I can persecute and not right. persecute when it comes to kind of issues because I'm on the record. So these are not, we're not looking at government to see who the, the government officials is not about them being officials of government. It's, it's just that they are uh, involved in, an, in a criminal act and we're, we're responding as we should as law enforcement authority. So let's just get it straight because the public. One promise, one, 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 one promise of the stand up. Yes, sir. I, I sit here as the head of the National Police. I, I, I take all the responsibility for, for, for the good things that I do not know about. And the bad things as well. I hold, I hold it to the Latvian people to remain accountable, even for things that I mean, who uh, would seem like oh, it's tarnishing the reputation of the institution. But I think this is what it brings about building trust. I mean, if we if we start to cover up, I mean, it's 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 uh, that code of silence. That code of silence has to be broken. So if we start to cover up these little things, I mean, it's it, it, it's. It deepens the uh, the distrust in police. So we will be transparent. We will be accountable to the people, and we will continue to to act in accordance with the rule of law. Man, I want to say thank you, man. Listen, I know I'm I'm going to share. I'm going to share. Drama license issue. The IG forgot that. You didn't answer Fatima drama lesson question. Fatima, I mean, I don't I don't want to be definite. Mm -hmm. I know that when we even go to the U.S. and other places and present our driver's license, they allow us to drive with, with it. I cannot speak exactly to what the law says about that. So why don't you let me uh, research the law about it, and then I can get back to you. But I know yeah. people who drive with public license here, and they, they need the officers afford them due courtesy. Our okay. laws are so old that you might not even find that provision that speaks to the courtesy uh, uh, in, 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 in the law, but we do give the courtesy for those who are driving here with foreign license. Thank you. That's fair, sir. Thank so you so actually, much. Uh, I'm going to share what I have. I know you carry on the investigation. Just to wrap up real quick, the ammunition issue, you, you spoke about it. And the other case that you forwarded uh, the death of the gentleman that passed due to the LEC involvement, correct? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I did now go into court and those documents will be made public. Am I correct? Yes, they are, they are going to court. Thank you very much, IG Gregor Coleman. As always, we appreciate your time, sir. All right. All right. So, I mean, wow. Let's conclude, guys. This is big. That's a booklet to see that it brought back this gun issue. They carry on their own investigation. Now people are going to court to see that they have concluded with their investigation on the death of the young man due to LDC guys that went into the community. Power, power tech. Those guys are going to court to talk about the lady that was accused of being a witch and they beat her and she died. Those people are going to court. Isn't this something amazing for the new Liberia? Well, look, that's where we find ourselves. And that's why I say community, you know, community policing is going to be more important moving forward. I, I do commend the IG, though, for coming on. He showed good leadership, you know. Obviously, people are watching, people are listening. And he responded, you know, by coming on and trying to answer <coughs> some questions. That's yep. good. But the work that is ahead of him is a lot. And and, and we sometimes in Liberia, we want to change so quickly. We don't want to do the hard work. The hard work for him would be to have constant conversation and training, not just with the police force, but with the rest of the government. Our country is one of the few countries in the world where when you break the rule, you are somebody. And when you follow the rule, you are nobody. And so you got to kind of kind of wean us off that culture. I was riding in a car, this last government, with a big police pressing. 
and we got to the junction there at Winners Chapel area, and the police was just trying to stop so they can move some cars this way. And I was shocked that the big policeman is like, you better move from my way. One big police officer talking to a small police officer who's simply doing their job. You move my way if I run you over. So I said, well, Mr. Big Police person, that, that your that your force here who ain't so respected people. No, but you know, there's so and so and so. So IG Coma has a lot of work ahead of him, but he needs to do the work and it's not done by himself. It has to be collaborative. You need to talk to different branches of government and uh, enlist their support and keep educating the police. The police need their esteemed raised in this country. The police need to be respected because as soon as we cross the border, we'll respect the other people in the police. When it says stop here, we'll have stop there. So when we come home, we need to do the same thing for our police officers. Let's work ahead. But I hope that he stays committed to the work. He's a professional person, but he has to get on the field and do the work. Sitting in the office in this government is not going to do it. Leaders must inspect what they expect. So don't just sit up in your big office and be a big shot. It's time for hands on. But, 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 but let, me, let me come in because we got to wrap this thing. Uh, Nelson should be coming on shortly. The issue on your mama, look at the time. It's 12.25. He stayed in the office. And you can hear the walking, talking, the radio going off. And he said, we're still working. He's not a lazy dude. They had a big national security meeting today. He was there. After listening, going through that meeting, we cannot discuss some things in that from that meeting because it's very, very unique classified. But you understand that he's holding his guys responsible. Nobody going home. We have to do be here and do the people work. He said we are coming up with a release again on Friday. I mean, I'm not trying to go after Patrick Sudo, man. Uh, but this is a government that working from the get-go, from the start. These are folks that know that the, the people are looking onto them, that if they mess up, that's it for them. So they must deliver. And the reason why I asked about the gun issue, I have all the investigation report from the CDC government, how to try to cover this gun thing. The guy from Texas picture, the lady that is related to Jim Sessa, Diva, her picture, the arms and ammunition that related to this thing when they went to Banjo, the raid that was done. I have all this report and people that we know their names, police officer. So our speech that when he said that people from the LeBron National Police were part of this thing, he is saying the truth. And I will share this report with you guys in our chat room. And somewhere he says classified, I don't know which one, but we'll discuss it again and we'll show the show these guys then on our show. Gregory Coma is doing a hell of a job without fear. And, and I think we all should encourage that man. I, I really do, Andrew Mama. This is what we fought for, man. I know we got a long way to go, but I must give it to him tonight, though. Yeah. And you know, I have, I, that's the end of the show. I'm done. Uh, if you guys got, want to do closing, you'll go ahead. But Mr. Uh, Dr. Bopla, I said, thank you. You're always welcome. Just come to the studio. You will make you part of the part of the conversation when you are available. But we appreciate you greatly tonight. Thank you a lot for joining us. Thank you, CEO, and thank you to all no, come the in. esteemed cool. panelists. Bye, appreciate you. You work. I have you the guy. I have the man, Afri, on the line. Afri Johnson, he wanted to weigh in on some of the stuff and the sensitivity. And that would be our on. last call. That would be our last call for tonight. The folks got to go home. So bring in Isaac, bring in Afri Johnson real quick. Afri, go ahead. Afri. He's there, he's there, be. It's your call. You on now. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 how you doing, people? Just for just for introduction, I'm Alfred Johnson. I'm currently a 10-year veteran, a 10-year officer with the Prince George County Police Department in the United States. I'm a sergeant. I hold the rank of sergeant. I I usually sometimes go like and speak on law enforcement issues. The most recent was on uh, on the King Joy investigation. I my education is in criminal justice. I'm currently a PhD student, Homeland Security Administration. 
So I did listen to the IG speak. Um, um, I did listen to the IG speak, and it's, I did meet him uh, when I went to Liberia in last month. Actually, I just left Liberia in February. We did have a conversation, and just for full disclosure, our group is one of the group that is uh, the third party that's going to review the investigation of the King George incident to better provide our professional understanding of it. Uh, one thing I would like to discuss: I read the uh, the the when the, the the general enforcement announcement that was just issued by the Liberian National Police, and I must say that the the approach of the IG is very welcoming because at some point we have a responsibility to enforce laws in Liberia. We cannot have a country of law that's that we have a responsibility to do that what i want to stress also but what i want to stress is the fact that in enforcing the law we have to be very careful not to have a knee-jerk approach that we eventually stay not resorting anything do i mean I, I will give this example i'm a pg county officer and i'm not speaking on behalf of my department i'm just speaking as a professional let me just make that disclosure so one of the things we do take for example if we respond to protest, if we get a protest that we're responding to, and we realize that in this protest there will be, we will there will be mass arrest. There will be mass arrest based on the behavior of protesters and all these things. There is a strong possibility of mass arrest. What we do is the Department of Corrections is not is not is not is not able to take people right away like that. So before we do this mass arrest, we will call the Department of Corrections and tell them, hey. We have this protest and there is a serious chance of mass arrest. So what we want you guys to do is to create space for these new prisoners because usually you don't take this influx of people at the same time in 15, 20. So the Department of Correction then will prepare themselves for that. Why am I saying this? The, the entire enforcement effort has to be done, done with the intention of people being penalized for this. So the first thing I think the IG should do if they're not done is to be able to create awareness for this, uh, maybe a month or two of full-fledged awareness. And in the process of creating awareness, the Ministry of Transport should be fully involved in this process. Because you have to understand that national police is a law enforcement body. Why the you don't make the law, show? they enforce law. So the Ministry of Transport... The so, so, Alfred, 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 yeah. is lit in Liberia yeah. right now. So, okay. we suggest that you come on the show um yeah. set a time you, you can come on the show and we can really discuss this because what you're seeing is critical on um, public education and co collaborating and cooperating with other agencies that will be affected in such a dis policy decision by the police is very critical so hopefully you can join us just let me know what date and time i will tell the team and the ceo and then you will come on yeah let's do that uh, Alfred. if you can yell please that would be better we bring you on yeah. Yeah, he said definitely. Okay. Okay. So, right. so I wish you in Alva. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, as always, a beautiful show will be here again tomorrow. I, I hope you can join us, Dr. Bopla. Uncle Sam Jackson, thank you very much. Uh we'll tap into the um tap into the budget again. Anyway, you say you want to cross, we will discuss it, but can, we have a can, lot can of I issues. Ask, can I ask him a quick question? Sam, you're focusing on the preface of this budget. I mean, the poor got to go home. They have to twice. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> let, her, let her go home. I, yeah, let her go home. Andrew, my I want to wake Sam up. I want to wake Sam up. See, that wake up. Thank you. Hey, hey you man. 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 I'm, 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 I'm drinking my Hennessy. See, I got time for you. No, no, no. But I'll ask you a question. I'll ask you. Yo, no, can I give a quick shout out, please? Sorry. Can I please give a quick shout out? Shout out to my uncle, Andrew Kier. His birthday is today. Shout out my auntie Ruth's sweet husband. Thank you. And to all Muslims we, we and welcome to Ramadan Mubarak. I fast, finally started fasting again. We yes. want to we want to say uh, our sympathy to Abdullah Ketema, a friend and a brother who lost his uncle for Grand Cape Man. We yeah. wish you well, Abdullah. We yeah, wish your family sorry, well. Man. Again, we want to say we stand with you uh, publicly, have our sympathy, and uh, we wish your family well through this difficult time especially the time of ramadan so yeah, we want i just to want to basically greet dr Brockle. i mean i've never met you before you uh, you, sound, you sound like an extremely eloquent brilliant young man although we have some differences and i hope to uh, interact with you you went to school at oxford i went to lse as part of the uh, russell group you know that i mean 
They don't give out degrees that candies in the UK. And the fact that you went to Oxford, it's a, it's a, I mean, it is impressive. I want to thank you so much, even though we disagree as far, some fundamental stuff, but I'm, I'm impressed with you. And uh, when I come to Liberia, I don't know what you drink, coffee or... Sam, Sam, I'm a beginner. Don't be, don't be talking all kinds of things, my beginner, Sam. Or, or beer or Hennessy. Once you come, come, once you come. With... I'll be in Liberia in June and, and, and we can go to Calabash or we can go to Cigar Bar. No, they men are revving. They men are revving, Sam. They men are revving. Okay, but then we can go to Mirror Shop. We can go to Mirror Shop. We can go to Mirror Shop <laughs> and, and, and have lunch. I want to say happy birthday to my son Rodney Wolokali, Rodney Seku Wolokali, who uh birthday was on the 18th of uh, March. And I want to tell you that I love him so much. It's the only son that I have. Rodney, happy birthday from his school family. And, and I would say, and I would oh, say one to my I would cool. say one to my daughter today. It's a birthday, the 20th of March. You know, my daughter and my dad born in the same month. We had a blast. We had a brunch today. We enjoyed it. You know, we cut a kick. She turned 23. And thank God she will be this year getting out with a master, walking to a new dimension, trying to do this data thing. I just can't wait. She went through. And I want to say a very, very bright young lady. She said, Daddy, it's my birthday. I came to spend the day with you guys. I have to go back on campus. Because, you know, Impressive. We imagine they will be done. She will be done this summer by God's great get her master and then go and specialize in medicine. I want to say it's a great day for us. We have fun. I think she got the wisdom from her mother, not from me. I want to have, definitely, have, definitely. Definitely. I want to, I want to have a good I want to have a good night's sleep. So she got it from her mother. Congratulations. Her well, so I want to give a shout out to the listeners and the commenters. They really yeah. keep us on track. Thank and you. one of them now asking that we should respect them and not drink alcohol on the show. On the show. So hopefully going forward, we'll not have people sipping and showing the alcohol cup. At least water. Is not alcohol. Allow? You know, somebody told me that yesterday that a go player, they say Uncle Sam was drinking. They say Uncle Sam was drinking on the show. And I said no, he wasn't. They said Stanton. That said. brown, that brown color thing is not it's not juice. <laughs> Is this still that thing that, that I haven't seen? I if said, well, I'm I don't know. If I'm in my living room, if I'm in my living room, if I'm in my living room. No, no, no. You're putting St. Jackson in another one. I'm in my living room. No, no, no. But you, you on a show. You on a but show. But you get to that on a show. Not, listen to me. If I'm in my living room, if this is the, if there's a rule you guys think, I will, I, will, I will agree with it. But if I'm in my living room, Thank you. and we're chilling to the end of the show, I can take my shot, but if it's against the rule, I will not do it. It's against the rule. I like, against the rule. I like what you say, but, 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 is, but the second thing is, hi, everybody. Give me that type of book, like, please. Try to save that type of book, like, good night. Good night. You always mentioning that I'm with my baby. My woman is not a baby. My woman is a professional lawyer. Don't call her baby. Stand up, stand up. Stand up, no, I'm busy, guys. It's busy. I beg you. <laughs> Step down, Mr. Kosi. I wanted to say something at the end. Wait, wait, wait. Let me can I reply to my uncle? Yeah. Go for it. He told me, he told me the woman was a baby. I didn't say that. He said it. It's all on his Facebook. No, I page. never call my wife a baby. Uh, my, my wife is a professional said, woman. She's a, a professional lawyer. lawyer. Uh, she's a professional. She's a, she's a professional lawyer that he met in South Africa. We want to say. Praise God for you. Yeah, Stephen, baby, come. Come and tell the Stephen. Stephen, you see the what? You see the camera. She like You know, she she doesn't like the camera. The woman says she got two law degrees. Two law degrees. She admitted to the camera. Oh man, look, that will go in heaven. Yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? Go out there. It's better for your partner to love you more than for how much you love you got for your partner. So that will go in heaven. Listen to her. Listen to her. But let's see if you got on camera. Bring her on camera. No, she can't turn on camera because she's inappropriate. Let her come. Let her turn. Mr. Stanton? Yes, ma'am. Please respect yourself. Yes, ma'am. I am not a body. Yes, ma'am. I am a professional woman with two law degrees admitted to the highest court. Thank you. Africa. Thank you, baby. Thank, Thank you. you, baby. Let me know. Please don't respect. 
Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. She's so thank beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so what much. Thank, thank you, Grandma Uncle Sam. And what's her name again? Oh Sam Johnson, what's her name? What's her name, yeah, Sam Johnson? My wife's yeah, name is Utombi Taisi Innocence. Okay. She said, well, I'm in Taya. Okay, her name is Zulu Queen. Her name is Zulu Queen. So is it appropriate for us to call her Zulu Queen? Yes, it's okay. You can call her Zulu Queen. So we can call her Zulu time, Queen. One time I gave her name. 10,000 people were Googling again and sending her inbox messages. They're crazy oh, boy. people. So we have to, yeah. Say, scare for big of mass too. Say, oh, scare oh, yeah. 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 I'm going to 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 i am she well educated professional woman and we respect her and we say thank you to her for keeping you straight uncle sam so our regards to her so can i make a party comment real quick I know go, I ahead, go ahead go ahead make okay. a party comment so, so uh Stento, i want to thank you and i want to thank NTG mama my yeah. sister fatima uh ava Oh, and Dr. Bobler who left. Why you came back? Why you came back to America? Uh, <laughs> and I mean, finish my statement before before we get there. I know where you won't go with that conversation. Uh, let me just, I won't get distracted. However, again, I want to thank our listening audience for being here today. Great participation. Uh, but I want to say this to just as a word of caution to my CDC friends. I understand you guys did not prepare for this. It took you guys by surprise. We anticipate that you guys will campaign for the next six years. What we will ask and what we expect of you guys is that at least you guys should hold our feet to the fire. And how you guys should do it, even though we can't control it, we expect that when you guys are pointing out the things we did not do or the wrongs we are doing, we'll also appreciate you guys telling us how good you guys left it, the transformation you guys made that we are indeed are taken back but let me say this we know we'll not be here all the days on spoon some of us especially a guy like me i'm not a spokesman for the government i do not work for the ministry of information i am not the press secretary to the president however we are state frontline general what's your position no let, let me finish <laughs> i know you let it gossip i'll get to that however <laughs> however we remain loyal commandos of the green revolution samuel jackson that at any point in time at any given day we are sitting on the sideline and can be ready to come on to respond i think you saw you saw the difference today man you get no job man you, you get no job samuel jackson don't disrupt you me no job please. yes you job no job. job we have they the mean you a job. to respond they mean you and to a job. you guys and put you they guys mean in you a job. yeah they, they mean, mean me with job. samuel jackson I have more you access to job. the president than you ever had to your cousin. But that's, I care about it. I mean, I have independent more access to the president to than you had to your cousin. You had to come on Facebook to be right, 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 we will we see you guys tomorrow, George Lebo. We'll see you, Uncle Sam. Good to have you. Enjoy your wine. Enjoy the wine. Uh as if I took my man, good to have you always, man. Yeah, my man. Thank you. You're oh, welcome. The guy, the guy whose story I share with you. Where can he come on? That other guy who had the injury and lost memory oh, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, we got to bring him on. Um, maybe Saturday. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we're doing something strange on Friday. We got some Liberians doing the movie stuff. We'll be bringing them on on Friday. Nice. That's an underserved yeah. industry yeah. that will boom. In yeah, they do some movie stuff. Mommy, mommy bringing them on. They, I watched the clip. I'm going to put it in the I will ask mommy to put it in the chat room. It's beautiful. It's like, oh, uh, you see the, 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 the real housewives, like 
while Fatima and I can be watching, my wife and Angie Mama and I sit the whole day. Sometimes they call her the doctor wife, boy. And you know that. And that yeah, so one. they get different wrong. Yeah. So uh this is Liberian group of Liberian young women. They I mean very clean movie. Uh, very, very clean. If I have the time, I will just show. You know what? Go ahead, send your shout out. Let me just show a 30 second piece of it real quick. Send your shout out. Okay, let's say hello. She said we haven't checked on her for a while. Who? No, but seriously. I want to get a woman shout you told out. me to be doing counseling too. Uh, the one that was. Yeah, we are checking on her. Dr. Richardson always check on her on behalf of us. Uh, so Dr. Richardson. Let me do a shout out. I just want to do a shout out to the talent of Liberia. Right, yeah. we have very talented people, and we don't appreciate it. We need yeah. to exploit it. Like typically, our athletes. Yes, many Musa are just built... one of, uh, Don't forget that one. Yes, the young lady yes, yeah, she came win, second in the one hundred meters. We, the, our women, came second with the silver. Our men came with the bronze, right? Mm -hmm. And this is just a short time of them getting together as a team. But for people who don't understand the four by 100 relay, it's a split second thing that is very important in handing off that baton to the next person for them to continue in stride. So when those teams can get together, practice more, have that committed time, and we can put money into sports development, it will look, it will be very, very special, you know? And then when it comes to the intellectual side, here in the U.S., that's what we're really trying with the professional team, Stanton. I'm meeting so many, so many intelligent, professional, upwardly mobile young people. It just gives me that desire that if we only open up the door and build a real integration effort between the diaspora and Liberia, we can move our country forward. So shout out to all those people who are doing great things, especially the people on the ground who are holding it down because it takes people to hold it down. For the other people behind them to have that hope that things will get better. So let's keep zero. it. Never will for long. Oh, the one thing I wanted to ask Gregory yes, Center, just to so remember I, the next time. Can okay, we I, make I, I, the emergency call number simple, like a 911 or a 411 that everybody can know and can be easy for them to give people 10, 12 DJ number to call in case of emergency? A lot of time when people are nervous. They only resort to what they know and they will not remember those kind of numbers. So hopefully that 911 emergency system can change. Okay, see you. I like to uh, see you. I like to make a quick announcement. I will give a message to to give you, CEO. There's yes, a group man. of nurses that come to Liberia every year to give free services. They are in Liberia now. When I went to visit my sister in the hospital at GFK, they saw me and they said. It is Angel Mama. I see her from Spoon TV, and they took pictures. It was so happy. They say, I should tell you that they want to come on the show to let you know what they have been doing for Liberia over the years. They have been coming and volunteering their services free every year. They have been doing it for three years. They are in country, and they say they want to come on the show to tell you what they've been doing for Liberia the year. Angel Mama, go ahead. Talk to Dr. I'm mean, going to talk to Dr. Richardson, and uh, please speak to my TT. Uh, you can arrange them. We're just here to moderate. Uh, whatever is best, we'll share with our Liberian people. Our greetings to them, and we appreciate them. Uh, as if I, you left, I wanted to show you the children's video. You call for it, and you and you run it. Uh, let's play this. This is the group that coming on Spawn Talk on Friday. This is peace. This is just a clip of the of the movie. Let's just. If a lot. She went all out. They call her Kim Kardashian of Venezuela. Anybody pay your bills? Nobody. Hell no. Yeah. We come. We, we show. Right we run this. this shit right here. That's what's up. Yeah. You guys make that dope. Yeah. If I can hold it down, y'all can hold it down. Did she, she, did she get some money? I don't know about like this. My Lulu is a hustler. Yeah. Yeah. Red, red, Lulu. Yeah. But you know why? Because she's a traveling nurse. You know? These are the bitches that come and get on our nerves. It doesn't matter, but she still get it. I'm hustling for my money, though, girl. Okay, so we want to bring them on. They're getting somewhere, though. Mommy, you know, bringing them. We're going to listen to them on Friday. We're going to play some of the clip to tell you the truth. It's very interesting. I've seen some of the episodes, and, you know, they're going to tell you. They, they, listen. Let me play the other few seconds, though. 
I really don't have drama. If I don't like you, I cut you off. And I, I cut you that. off. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. If I don't like somebody, I just, I just cut them off. Exactly. exactly. I don't even go the back and forward thing. I don't know how to do it. I just cut you off. I got my people that I click with. You know, if I don't click with you like that. If know. I don't like you, you will know. <laughs> Okay, so Aunt Jemima, when you hear them, we will see some of the videos. And uh, this is from Mame, our brother. Uh, he, you know, there's great interest in this because you think they are trying compared to the basketball wives and uh, the, the, the daughter wives, how you call them, the real housewife of New York or Atlanta. You know, they're trying to imitate and do their own. So uh, if necessary, all goes well, maybe you will find this on Sponge page. And uh, you'll find this and you will enjoy your time. The series are good. The episodes are good. Seriously. You will enjoy it. Fatima, why are you looking like that, man? What's the CEO? Okay, CEO. We're, we're here to support Liberian women. We're here to make sure that whatever they we'll are. Let come, we'll let it come on. I hope not listen to them. Enjoying it, but I mean, let, let it rest. No, I don't. Enjoy. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, CEO. Yes, I just told you about the nurses that in Liberia that overseeing the, um, offering offering the the services the services for free to Liberia. They've been doing it for three years and they like to come on the show. What, what? Yeah, but can you can you talk to Titi? Okay, talk All to right. Titi and your arrange it. I mean, uh, okay. the, they need to come on. We we're okay. gonna wait for them. Just talk okay. to Titi. That would be nice. Okay, yeah. I will talk to her. All right, thank hey, you. Really yeah. So, again, want to say thanks to every one of you for joining us. A great show, Gregor Kuma for you. Let really Nelson come on. Hey, you know, I, I, I really, I, I really like the boldness of Greg, and you know, <laughs> a great thing. I want to say thanks. But what happened today? The uh, CDC acid do run away. It was too hard for him, though. <laughs> It was too hard for him. CDC acid do run away. Your mama caught him off from the belly straight. <laughs> This is your mom and stop it right you know what you know why he ran though he ran because he brought a chat room and, and um, I, maybe he expected me to you know to crop it to 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 cut it and make it look okay. good but yeah but i decided to show you like that nelson yeah. you just coming but i decided to show this thing i said though i said though was shocked he said hey they got a bad guy but yes. i'm not i'm not doing your favorite minutes to do he brought no. a team to come and beam up. Boop, we, yeah. we, we catch it. Well, what, what about this? Why Koga went to receive blessing from Prince Johnson? Koga really want to be senator of Nima County. Oh. Uh, Representative Koga. Prince uh, Johnson is praying over him. Prince Johnson uh, said he cannot support, and we'll have the conversation tomorrow. Prince Johnson said he cannot, never, ever support. I'm supporting him. Representative Koga. Oh. But hold on now. You're not from Nima. Prince Johnson said he can never ever support <laughs> Yan Twain, right? So therefore, if Koga can apologize to him, he will give Koga his blessing, and Koga will be the next senator from Nima County. So Koga heard it, heard it on the clip, and went and apologized. <laughs> I reached out to Koga today, and what he told me, I will let him come on the show and say it himself. It's something serious in Nima County, Aunt Mama. Yes, it is. We we'll discuss it more. It's something really, really serious in the county. It's a big listen. What Koga told me and what Prince Johnson said on that clay is no extent on business. It's a big division. And like somebody want to hijack Prince Johnson, other statement, leadership, godfather of Neymar. Tattoo. And if Yang Tuan wins, Prince Johnson can never call himself a godfather in Nimba. Because he's totally against Yang Tuan. If Prince Johnson says, I am not supporting you, and Yang Tuan wins, Prince Johnson can never ever be the godfather in Nimba. The new godfather will be Jeremiah. Cohen. To tell you guys the truth, what I have in my possession. To tell you the truth, you'll come tomorrow and see. The division in Nima is huge. The division, not only looking at this picture, the division in Nima is so big 
that Prince Johnson must put everything down for Koga to win. If Koga doesn't win, Prince Johnson can never call himself Godfather. Never ever. There's a total split, except the call for reunion. And Kohu, Andrew Mama, you know what I'm saying. There's a total split between, look at the member issue. VP Jeremiah Kuhn won member to be the superintendent. Prince Johnson said no. Look at the senatorial issue. VP Jeremiah Kuhn won Yantuan to be the one running in our seat to win. Prince Johnson said no. Must we continue? The greatest county that gave victory to Madame Salif, to George Weah, now to Joseph Ima Buaka, a board will have a detrimental flow that can never ever be repaired. Because the fear that folks in there supporting the war and economic crime code and Prince Johnson have disagreed. But therefore, he got to pivot. He got to go on the other side. Jeremiah Kuhn said, anything Joseph Baca won, I support. If that includes the war and economic crime code, I am for it. Prince Johnson said, then forget it. Let John Osamara, let's show you some things. There's a battle in the cloud in, 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 in Nima County, a serious battle. And this thing you're saying, you're laughing, Koga is on a mission. If he can go on his knee and let Prince Johnson put his head on his bald head, the fall of Nimba, if the Nimba people can pray, has just begun. <laughs> we'll see you guys. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow. That's a go. Bye bye. Hey, cousin. Bye. bye. See you. Shout yeah. out. Shout out to you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for reaching out, checking on me while I was sick. I appreciate you. As always, you're a member of the Spoon Network. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Mama, I said, do not yet, so please go now. I said, I'm coming back. I'm not going nowhere. The other day, you had peace in time. Yeah. You had peace when the other day, you cast it for me. I was in the palace here. You fucked in your mouth. She go with the law. This is your job. She can't run away. But she can be here when I take up on the street. No, I said, no, I said, you got a job that I said you go with the law. No, I was tired, CEO. I, I know. I mean, I was up and down with my sister business. Then the other thing, I was, in fact, I was almost nodding on the show. But when wow. I asked my three questions and I made my, my what do you call it, my closing statement, I said, I can't even run away. I went straight home, took a shower, and went to sleep. So he started asking to see if they're my nephew here. Yeah. You feel in trouble. Look how you can say, but me, I ain't even go here. <laughs> I was listening to you. <laughs> you know they showed up on the show. But I said, hiding in the back. I ain't even going nowhere. You, you you look at the back the background. I, I looking at that. Like, <laughs> I said that. I know. I said. I see yeah, you somebody, somebody I see. Hiding. I see. <laughs> I said that. There. I just want to play this because they got video. Nelson, I seen the video. They got video to the Prince Johnson and Koga engagement. I want you to play a little bit uh, for us to go. If you just want to just do it how you usually do it, straight straight do it. That would be fine. I want people to see something because the more show will be interesting. I'm asking Koga to come on the show. He's running to be senator for Nima County. Uh, we'll reach out to Yan Twain. Uh, I mean, there's a battle. There's so it's going to be a blood fight. Uh, Prince Johnson one side, Jeremiah Kwan. Pass. How early can Prince Johnson and Jeremiah Kwan split? Seriously? Because of war and economic crime court? Because of the position of the president? Well, see, oh, let me say something. Oh. Yes, Nima County. And Lofa County, those two counties, they believe in cultural values. They can shake the boat, shake the boat, but at the end, they can never split. They will come to one conclusion. Something they will fix it somewhere. Somebody has to win within that cultural value, but it will never split. Lofa County, Nima County, mm -mm. <laughs> don't give up on them. All of them. Oh, really? Me, oh me, give up. I get, I get nothing to give up. I give up nobody. Nima can't, Nima can't, Lofa can't. Can't split. 
They both believe wow. in cultural values. They can't split. That's okay. good, though, but we, we wish them well. And the only issue we are saying here every day, to see a fight, you know, it's kind of too shocking right now. It's surprising. But we wish them well. We, we wish them well. They're Seriously. Fighting, huh? But at the end of the day, they will find a solution. But they can never split. Two so we bear yet. We bear for five hours in two minutes. It will be five hours, and we got to go. Uh, the network, I want to say the biggest network. Thank God for you all that follow the spoon every day, share the program. Again, we have uh, a lot, a lot of comment. Thanks to uh, Dr. Popler. Thanks to Greg Kuma. Thanks to uh, Dr. Richardson. I started the show, Dualu. Uh, Mr. Axel Doe, Mr. Sam Jackson, and again, thanks to Alba Tuba, Andrew Mama, Glenn Genius, her son ran with the Librarian team. Congrats to them. Thanks to uh, Josh Lobo and everyone else. You know, we are getting there. We're in there yet. Prince Maxwell and everyone else. We want to say mommy, thanks to everyone. Mommy. mommy. I can't even know. see my son this time. I can't see mommy. I don't know what happened to him. Mommy is doing a project. He was on the show two days ago. Oh. When Dylan was on, he was on. He's doing a oh, yeah, 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 yeah. a war bank, a war bank project. Mommy loves to come on the show. You know, and I also, you know, we're gonna be inviting folks. We want to say thank you till we meet again. Nelson, forget it, man. You gotta do your show. It's nine o'clock. We'll play that video no more. Okay, Have a bye. good night, Andrew. Bye. 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 I said, though, he ain't in the background. What about you? No. Are you jabbing me? <laughs> no, nobody there. <laughs> you don't see your skin coming here. He's looking at me. You <laughs> didn't see you left. No, nobody there. You left where? Yeah, nobody there. For real? It's you and I. Only us. Oh, yeah. only you and I. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going. I should have gone and come my own. No, he will not come. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your answer, though. <laughs> Well, again, uh, folks, we want to say thank you for being here with us tonight. Um, thanks for making your contribution on the show. Spoon Talk is here because of you. Thanks to all of you who always called in. We appreciate the thousands of you across Liberia in Radio Lane who make up time to join us um, across the country on the different frequencies. Thanks to all of the radio stations. Um, uh, we are always live, as you know, across the Spoon Network, Spoon FM, 107.5, Fabric, 101.1, and Super 95.5. But I want to say special thanks to uh, our partner radio stations uh, for always relaying the program. Thanks to Punch FM, 106.7. Thanks to Gibi FM, 90.9 in Kakata, my Gibi County. We appreciate the folks there in Central Liberia, Bone County, Premier FM. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for relaying the program. Thanks to the guys uh, there in um, Bowman County, Trust FM. We appreciate the team. Thanks to uh, Trend Radio in Grand Crew County as well for always relaying the program. You are the reason why we're reaching thousands of people across the country, and we appreciate you for being a part of this journey. So we'll come your way. Uh, Spoon Talk will be here tomorrow, another fascinating edition of the show coming up. Until then... My name is Nelson Kole. I want to say thanks to all of you across the world for joining Liberia's premier talk show, The Spoon Talk. They will come away again. Liberia is all we have, so let's remember to keep the peace alive. Coming up shortly is the late night show. Have a good night and bye-bye for now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A special one. From the CEO, stand tongue with the spoon. And your boy, Friday the South, man. Charging!